All right, my friends. Hello. How are you doing on this wonderful, wonderful day? Today, we are going to, it's going to be a little bit of a shorter stream than normal. Only 24 hours. What is going to be happening is, as you can see right here, 0%, 0%, 0%, 0%. We got nothing done on this account, and the goal is to get all of those numbers to 100%. That is the only thing we care about. I, if it doesn't count for these, we're not doing it. If it does count for them, we have to do it, and that includes the Lost Vikings, unfortunately. So, we are going to jump right on into it. Let's go. Um, it's going to be... <laughs> I have put a lot of work into this run. It is really, 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 really hard. Um... Yes, that is working, that is working. So time starts when I get control of my units and time ends when everything is 100% on the screen. <laughs> you know, I don't want to lose a couple seconds with this first loading screen, right? You know, we only have 1,440 minutes to work with. So, three, two, one, let's go. All right, first mission is really easy. What we have to do is we have to uh, kill every enemy on the map. Jim has to get five kills, and we have to finish all the objectives, which includes the bonus objectives. It's honestly very, very simple. Just making sure that everything is working on my side. I think I have all my hotkeys and stuff set up, so that is good. Uh, the easiest way to do it is let Jim do a little bit of tanking in the front. And hopefully he got, like, a kill there. He got one kill. That's not great. The hardest thing is just we have to make sure that Jim gets his five kills. Because if he doesn't, then we'll have to sit around. But usually he does enough damage that it's fine. Like, he's more bursty than everyone else with his 12 damage gun. So, up to two kills. Everything else is pretty easy. At this place, we are going to pull the enemies back a little bit. There's going to be the drop pods that come on down. So we're going to knock that guy. Then blast what we can out of these. And that's going to make these drop pods a lot better. And really, for easy missions like this, it's all about saving time. All we want to do is make sure that we are being real crisp. Whoa! Whoa! What was that slowdown? That was like first achievement of the day and the game was just like, oh, I gotta load the achievements menu. Well, we got five kills on Jim. <laughs> and apparently the computer was having a very hard time dealing with that. There are, as, there are 486 achievements that we have to do and I really hope that we don't have to deal with that every single time. Thank you for all the incredible support, people. I really appreciate it. There's a lot of very generous donators in chat. Um. I'm not going to be able to be thankful and interacting with chat a lot because this is a very focus intensive run for 24 hours straight. And if I miss one thing, then I miss an achievement and then I die and then I cry myself to sleep after 24 hours, that sort of thing. But I really appreciate everyone being so kind already. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to blast these, pull back, get all the civilians to help us out, target the fire back because he does a lot of damage. Firebomb all the people, and we will move on to mission number two. So hopefully, if everything works perfectly, the uh, all the mission achievements for the entire run should be in the bottom left of the screen, and they should update. You'll notice I didn't say the word automatically. <laughs> That's what the moderators are for. <laughs> so I'm going to say thank you, moderators, for doing that perfect. We got all three of them. Easy peasy. So, what I have to do now is I have to click on the TV. This is really important. We have to watch the TV ten times. You don't actually have to watch the TV. You just have to click on it. And then we should be ready to blast through mission number two. We are one ninetieth of the way done already, guys. Incredible. All right, so this mission is pretty simple. Whoa, why, why is my liftoff button unbound? Okay, that's really not good. Uh, Terran. Let's, uh, set that to R. There we go. We'll need a lot more Marines before we take on uh, first hotkey issue of the day. It, uh, worked perfectly forever, but the hotkey gremlin is, in fact, alive and well. And he will continue to be the thorn in our side throughout this entire run. All of my practice, the hotkeys worked perfectly. Because this is a completely new account. And then for some reason, as soon as we start the actual stream, it breaks. 
Alright. Uh. Oh, I forgot to load the bot. I'm an idiot. Oh, no. I forgot to... Uh... Okay, well, while we're doing this, I'm going to load the achievement bot. I completely forgot. Oh, no. Uh, Data.json. Start making marines. <laughs> it's okay. At the beginning here, all we have to do is defend against an attack anyway. We just want to have a good position, and then I can get all this up and running. Can't believe I forgot. Um, do do do. Yeah, that all looks correct, and that means that I can just run the bot, and I hope it works. All right. Um, I've turned on the bot moderator. Can you try shifting it to the next mission? Whoever it is, I, <laughs> we're doing tech support live here. But it's a really cool thing, and I want it to work. Well, let's see. Is it reading chat? It is absolutely reading chat. Oh, yeah. We're on the outlaws. Perfect. Thank you. Ace. Seventh Ace is the guy that made this. He is a legend when it comes to all this stuff. He also did a lot of the, like, uh, Twitch Trolls Grant when we had Twitch interactivity with all that kind of stuff. He did a lot of the coding on that side. Absolute monster when it comes to getting all this stuff up and running. So hopefully we just don't have to deal with it again. It might crash at some point, and then I'll have to reload it. And perfect timing, too. This was all this was all a ploy so that we could defend this first attack, and now we have to go. So this mission, once again, is a very easy one. All we have to do is head on forward, grab all the mineral pickups on the map. That is an important part, because that's one of the achievements. And then... Rescue the rebels, and we're actually not going to get gas for a long time. We're just going to macro up a bunch, make a lot of marines, and then we'll pull SCVs at 75 and be ready to blast this base. The early bits are just easy until we get to next mission, and next mission is actually horrifying. <laughs> it's legitimately top 10 hardest missions in this run, and it's hilarious because Zero Hour is usually a mean mission. Oh, kind of getting owned here. I didn't expect that second wave of guys to pop out. Okay, now we grab that and that. Oh, you as well. So this should give us the achievement for having all of the health pickups, or the money pickups. Perfect. Now, we don't want to lose any me Oh, what if we just move our medic that was healing our medic away? That's a good way to lose it. Yeah, so now we just build up for a bit. We're going to be banking a little bit of cash, and we can start getting SCVs as well. Doesn't really matter. Just keep producing. Yeah, just checking my notes here. Everything seems to be in order. I'm not missing anything. And probably in about one minute, we are going to go dive this base with everything we have. Take it down. I think the other achievement is like, it says on the screen, but it's like beat this mission in 12 minutes or something. It's an incredibly long, generous amount of time. The Wings of Liberty achievements in general are uh, more of optimizing when you go to the mission. Like, how early can you afford to go to a mission instead of being brute, insane difficulty? Heart of the Swarm and Legacy of the Void are when the achievements get, like, so hard that they just kick you in the kidneys and then you cry. But yes, every mission is going to be on Brutal. Well, that is not entirely true. There's... For this campaign, we have to do every mission on Brutal, including both sides of multi-choice missions. And then for Heart of the Swarm, we have to do every mission on Brutal. Legacy of the Void is weird because there is achievements for Brutal for the main campaign. However, the prologue only requires normal, the epilogue only requires hard, and the Nova Covert Ops only requires hard. It's, um... Kind of a mess, but for all the main campaigns, we're going to be playing on Brutal the entire time. Okay. Let's move this way. Keep splitting our guys a little bit. That was a good fight. We didn't lose anybody. It's really those Hellions, this bunker, and then there's going to be a siege tank in a little bit. And those are the three that can absolutely just ruin our day. Because we don't have any income, right? We pulled all of our guys, and that means that any damage we take, we take. This tank is really the last bastion of what they have. 
and we're mostly fine. It wasn't beautiful. Uh, Starcraft 1, or not Starcraft 1. Oh, Starcraft Wings Liberty Tanks are insane. They do, what, like 60 damage per shot? It's, uh... <laughs> there's not much you can do about it besides just accept the fact that you're going to have a bad day. And try to take, uh, try to take it down quickly. Okay, we're going to take down the barracks next. And then we're going to be moving on to Zero Hour, but not until we talk to the television again. So, one of the... One of the things that can really get you in this run is there's a lot of go talk to random objects achievements. And by a lot, I mean there's not actually that many of them, but there's enough of them that it's really easy to make a mistake. And some of them are only available like once. For example, there is going to be an achievement where you have to talk to Matt Horner before the mission cutthroat. And you just, if you miss it, you miss it and you'll never get the achievement. So, I have all that stuff written down, of course. You have to do it after... It's a, it's a very silly one. Okay, so this is TV number two. Perfect. I'm sorry, we'll never actually get to watch the TV. I know everyone wants to see Donnie Vermillion. Favorite character. Alrighty, Rooney. So, zero hour. This mission is really easy and really boring in the base game. And it is a nightmare here, because we have to destroy four enemy hatcheries on the map, on Brutal, and at the same time, we cannot lose a single building. And it... <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, it's... So we're going to be on the map adventuring, and at the same time, if anything dies, we die in real life. It's going to be great. And of course there's drop pods and stuff, which makes life really fun. And there's like swarms of mutas that'll target down single missile turrets. It's... It's awful. So... Uh, we're gonna try our best. What we're gonna do is have all of our guys over here. I believe the first attack hits this side only. Unfortunately, I've played enough Nightmare difficulty Wings Liberty that I actually kind of forget where the attacks are at times, because I'm used to Nightmare where they come in a lot of different angles. But, uh... Yeah, we're gonna have to... Going. We're gonna have to defend a lot. And that is, it is nice because it makes this mission exciting. It is go. not nice Lock because things can fall apart and I don't want things to fall apart on zero hour. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> this is the mission where on normal difficulty, if you just fill your bunkers and put an SCV here and an SCV here on auto repair, you win. You literally don't need to do anything. All right, so first SCV is just going to patrol between these two places. We are going to go rescue the friends on the map really quickly. They're going to become available very soon, and they have gas. So we don't actually need gas mining, but we do need gas from them. So we're going to grab this, go over here, and now we can afford a couple reactors. And now we're actually going to go up here and take this gas... And I am supply blocked. Oh, I'm a noob. Ben, you gonna give me um, yeah, we're gonna take this gas and hopefully don't lose anything here. That's fine. And that's gonna afford us our infantry armor upgrade. And that's really all we need is two reactors, infantry attack, infantry armor. Because medics do not repair buildings, and we have to keep buildings alive. So medics are kind of useless here. Hi. Casual chase scene. It's truly epic without Stim, isn't it? You go at exactly negative five miles an hour. Cool, we have a really good setup right here. Now, this is the first time that things can get really bad. So, I'm going to throw down a save, because if the mutas just decide to target down the missile turret, life sucks. Okay, I'm keeping an eye on the minimap. They are heading up here, so let's try to get the Marines in the front. Alright, we pull back. This is good. Just keep building depots with Depot Dave. Depot Dave is going to be a very integral part of our strategy throughout Wings Liberty. And hopefully he never dies. <laughs> because then we can never build depots again. Okay, just trying to keep an eye on where the attacks are coming from. I want to have this area. There's going to be one open slot, bunker here, bunker here. This is a full wall. 
then eventually we're going to have to go and kill the hatcheries. And after we do that uh, dastardly deed to all the hatcheries, we will... We will fully wall the area and turtle super duper hard. And from now on, we're basically building SCVs and depots. Those are our primary things. And then whenever we can afford Marines, we will do that as well. But it's actually more important to have SCVs and depots because of the repair power. And I'm actually glad that we're doing this mission fairly early into the run. Like, be if it were later, there's a lot of baneling sniping we're going to have to do later on. And fortunately, fortunately, that is easier when you're just awake instead of falling asleep at the <laughs> at the 18 hour mark or whatever legacy of the void we will not be sniping banelings very well all right buddy let's head on over here we're gonna grab these guys and then after this we are going to get a bunker here and a bunker over here oh hi oh uh tried to grab that medic, I actually messed up right there. So this is a, a like meta thing that is going to cause me a little bit of issues. I'm not talking about Mark Zuckerberg. Um, right now, I had to switch my monitor last night. And if any of you have ever switched monitors, you know that there is a learning curve for redoing it. I'm going back to an older monitor because I had a 4K setup. Uh, for some reason, I cannot get 4K streaming to work on YouTube. I can get recording to work, but not streaming. So... I had to switch everything back last night, and as a result, my mouse accuracy is going to be a little bit worse than I would like. Which is going to be fun for you guys, because you're going to watch me just move command my army into a Banelinger or two, I bet. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to upgrade to a full 4K setup after this. I, I had hoped that I could just skimp out with the hardware that I had plus a 4K monitor. Answer was no. <laughs> Here they come on to this side. Now, what is going to happen soon is the third set of friends are going to become available for rescue. And they are the ones that we... Oh, no, they killed a man. Oh, I guess we're not doing this devils, are we? Uh, once the people become rescuable over here, that is when we go on an adventure. And we have to start killing hatcheries. And we're going to be doing our first, like, little trick of the run in order to do that it's not going to be it's not going to be an honorable hatcher for hatchery killing because uh we're not here to be honorable we're here to get achievements let's just keep an eye out i think that i'm not entirely sure when these guys show up they always are later than i think they'll be oh did i make a discord announcement for the start of the stream that is a pretty good idea i uh I intended to, and then I got very distracted by other things. Let me, let me do that real quick. Let me not lose really quick. We're fine. We caught the mutus. Perfect. Okay, Discord announcement. <laughs> Thank you. Whatever, I'm adding everyone. I've never added everyone before. The 24-hour stream is live. Keep at it, boys. The ride's on its way. What is the link to this stream? Uh-oh. Oh, no. This is a lot of things that I have to do now. <laughs> this is not... I'm so jank. Um... I think this is the link. I hope it is. Yeah, I'm gonna ping over 6,000 people. Send now. Perfect. Really hope that that's the link. Can someone confirm to me that that is the link? Uh, and that the Discord link works? <laughs> really should have figured this stuff out before the run started. Okay. It worked. Perfect. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate this. <laughs> I'm not a streamer. I'm a YouTuber. I'm not good at this thing. So we're going to pop over here. We're going to rescue the friends. Unfortunately, one medic instead of two kind of stinks. If we had both of the medics, it'd be really nice. All right. So here comes our little trick. Because two medics can heal each other, and the AI loves targeting down the medics. That's why you want two of them. One medic is just going to die. 
That's a lot of mutas. But I think we're fine. Spines die first. Take all this down. A Hydra or two is not a problem. Now we're just going to take down all these defenders. We're going to target down this hatchery. Now what we're going to do is back up. Take down some of these defenders. Now take this hatchery down. And that is going to be two out of the four that we have to kill. And now what we're going to do is disengage. So usually the way that this is set up is that there is a base with three hatcheries, there is a base with three hatcheries, and there is a base with two hatcheries. So you have to kill two different bases. This base is by far and away the easiest one to deal with. However, if we just let the drones live, then we can... That's uh, hatchery number three right there. Now we just have to let the drones rebuild the hatchery one more time, and that'll be four. So it's a little bit of a cheeky way to deal with this. There we go. This should be number four. Perfect. Let's get out of here. Yeah, this is... We're going to be very cheesy throughout this run. Simply from a number stand... Oh, no. I did not snipe that vainly. Ooh, we lost a lot right here. This is actually pretty bad. That took longer than I thought it would, and as a result, I was not ready for that attack. We gotta get some bunkers over here, though. Ooh, yeah, I'm... Uh, I instantly am feeling pretty bad about this. I think that we're gonna be able to make it, but it's not nearly as clean as I was hoping it would be. So these bunkers exist for drop pods. They only need a couple guys in them each. We're going to do two and two. And then you guys get back to mining. You will be on patrol to keep these nice and safe as we continue to build repair guys. So this part may take a couple of attempts simply because we lost stuff. I'm going to try to target down the bailings as best as I can. I have all of the bunkers hotkeyed. We have repair guys here, repair guys here. But as I said before, if we lose a single building, this achievement is dead. And we'll have to give it another go. It is around the three minute mark. 3.40 is when the big attack comes. The first big attack that I need to be afraid of. I wrote it down because it was that terrifying. I believe it hits both sides, but the big scary bit is over here. So we're going to try to snipe the banelings. Okay, what unit am I going to rush in this campaign? I mean, if you have ever seen a Wings of Liberty run, you'll know what the best unit in this campaign is. I'll give you a hint, it's because there's a lot of Zerg enemies. There is one guy that stands above everybody. Okay, one Bane, two Bane. Oh my gosh, stop moving. There we go, we're fine. I'm going to give this a save because we dealt with the scary attack. Yeah, that is one that if everything... Fire vat. Yeah, we're rushing fire vats, guys. That's why I, I strategized this for months so we could go fire bat rush. And actually, we're going to be delaying the evacuation to like the second half of Wings of Liberty because it's got a really annoying achievement. It's uh the same as this, where if you lose a building, then you don't get the achievement. So we're literally going to siege tanks before we go to the evacuation for the fire bat. It sounds really dumb. And that's because it is really dumb, but it's okay. We got hit by Bane there. So what we have to do now is be very cognizant of these attack waves, kill the Banelings when we can, and target fire Hydras before Roaches. I'm also getting to the point where I am going to stop producing non-SCVs. Reason being is I need a little bit of a nest egg. I need the money. There's that first drop. So a drop here and a drop, or a bunker here and a bunker here should just defend all my buildings. Yeah, just like that. Oh, wrong hockey. Oh, that wasn't pretty. Yeah, Hydras are the key. And usually it follows a pretty consistent pattern of Bane on the left, Bane on the right, Bane on the left, Bane on the right. And we're just kind of going to bounce back and forth throughout the entire thing. Finding the Banes, taking the Banes down, and then moving our camera on over to the next area. And relying on the SCV auto repair to keep me alive. 
There should be a flock of mutas at some point, and that may target down a missile turret. I have to be careful. I'm not seeing anything. Oh, there he is. There's some mutas. Commander, this is Matt Horner. Just hold on. Cavalry's on the way. 54 seconds. Take your time, Matt. No Make rush. this nice and clean. Target down those hydras. Here's a bane. Not bad. All right, everything is now off of production, so I can just have repair money. Oh, those mutas could have targeted down that missile turret if they wanted to. I'm really glad they didn't. Oh gosh, they're going right on that hand railing, and it's really hard to target them. 15 seconds. Okay, this was really clean. I'm super happy with the way that this ended up. Because it could have gone really poorly. All right. Yeah, that was one that I was actually expecting that I was going to have to do a reload on, but we got everything. All righty. So now we can talk to everybody and get the stim pack upgrade so we can start clearing a little bit faster. Hello, Tychus Finlay. Uh, nope, not you. Uh, Stepman, we cannot talk to. Mr. Swan himself. And then Stimpak, my favorite person to talk to. Alright, so now we're going to smash and grab and What's smashing and grabbing staff? the Marauder, my favorite there it is, Jimmy. little dude. And mainly we're doing this mission first because it is very, very easy. Which campaign do I think is easiest to 100%? Absolutely, positively, without a shadow of a doubt, it is Heart of the Swarm. Because Heart of the Swarm has Sarah Kerrigan, and Sarah Kerrigan is the destroyer of universes. Like, as soon as you get good at controlling Kerrigan, she can basically solo everything in that campaign, so... She can do most of the objectives on her own. Okay. Yeah, we don't have access to the TV yet because we haven't unlocked the Cantina on the Hyperion. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab eight medics really quickly. And I know that sounds silly, but we need the energy regeneration. The objectives on this one are to not... We have to beat it in a time limit. We obviously have to do all the bonus objectives. So every time an objective ends up over here, no matter if it gives research or if it doesn't, we have to do it. Because that is how Wings of Liberty achievements work. So for example, the Loki is a bonus objective in a mission and it literally gives you nothing for killing, but you still have to do it. And we gotta get all the bonuses every time. Even if we have maximum research, we still have to get all the bonuses. That sort of stuff. So we're gonna do that, and then we have to lose nothing to the Stone Zealots, which isn't too bad because we're gonna have eight medics really quickly that have a lot of energy. So it won't be a problem. And then we're gonna go Pure Marauder. And the other is like a time-limited time gate thing. I don't even know what the timer is. It says on the screen, but... It's a really long time. This is one of those ones that we want to kind of balance the speed and the safety. Because we can definitely save some time here. And the more time that we save in the early stages on the easier missions, the more time I can mess up in Legacy of the Void. <laughs> because that is... Legacy of the Void is where everything is going to go wrong. <laughs> that campaign has, like... Some really powerful attack waves, and when you have to be juggling while on a unicycle and dealing with the attack waves, things can go bad. Okay. Here comes the first attack wave. We stim. Just make sure that none of these medics get properly targeted down by the enemy. That is the important bit. And then we only need, like, a couple more workers, and we should be good, because this is seven mineral fields. So we want to go 14 workers. I get this question a lot, which is, why do you not go up to 21? And in Wings of Liberty, I don't remember how they do it in Heart of the Swarm or Legacy of the Void, but in Wings of Liberty, they tell you three people per patch. But the actual answer is that you want two people per patch. The final guy only gives about a 10% increase in income. And most of the time, that means that you would have much better dividends if you built combat units and used them to get money by, like, shooting things and getting more bases and that kind of stuff. Because it takes a long time for that final guy to pay for himself. How many medics is this? Six? We need a couple more. 
We do need firepower at some point. Oh, you know what? I should have put this engineering bay over here and then positioned my guys a little bit more cleverly. If I were a more cleverly person, that's what I would have done. So instead, I think what we're going to do is put this guy right here. And then we'll have a tech lab and we'll have a little spot of one. And that'll, that'll funnel the Zerg through and allow me to fight them despite the fact that I currently am more medic than combat unit, which it just looks really stupid, but I I promise it is actually the way that you want to do this mission if, if you're on a time constraint. The doctor is in. It's Get ramping. As long as we don't die exactly right here. Need some triage? Some? Yeah, perfect. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Almost dead. We didn't lose anybody, though. Not unhappy with that. All right, we don't need this. Now, notes say that we want to wait until the nine minute mark and then we're going to defend an attack from there and it'll be big pushy time. However, no, no, no. Do my notes say don't get greedy? Yeah, my notes say don't get greedy and I'm 99% sure that I wrote that down because I defend this attack and then I try to go out here and kill these. And then something terrible happened. Don't remember what happened, but I'm going to trust my notes. <laughs> I have learned how I write to myself oh, over gone. time. And if I say don't get greedy, it means that I'm an idiot. And have messed things up. No. We'll, we'll get greedy later on. There's definitely going to have to be times that we get a little greedy, a little risky, a little crazy. But right now, right now we're going to avoid it to the best of our abilities. Okay. So they should hit us in two minutes. Remember that time is dilated in Wings of Liberty because every one second in real time is 1.4 seconds on the clock because Blizzard entertainment. I, I don't really have a justification for it because Blizzard. <laughs> they didn't figure out how time worked for like five years. So we are going to have to wait for a little bit, but it's not going to be that long. So after this mission, what do we have to do? We're going to have the Hammer Securities Mercenaries. We'll talk to the TV and we will grab the oh, Medic wow. Stabilizer Med Packs upgrade. All right, those are very easy things to do. Yeah, you're exactly correct. It's because it's on faster speed, but like clocks, they, they, they could have made clocks work correctly no matter what speed you were playing on. Time is not that difficult. Alright, they should be on the way. Come on, hit me. I wish I had a sensor tower so we could see them. And this is a pretty good army. This is going to be enough to finish things off. We just want to make sure we don't get baned. We don't have much anti-air, but that is by design. And we're going to start moving out and clearing. So, the only really other air unit that we have to fight, I think, is, like, one Void Ray. I don't even remember if that exists. We just want to keep everything nice and healthy. Alright, for this area, the trick is that you grab these two guys here, these two guys here, and take all this down as you wait a little bit. It's not exciting, but it does work. You guys are going to get ready. Oh! Oh, we took a little bit too long on the side. Okay. These two guys target this. Everyone else comes over here. SCV's ready to go. There we go. Do not lose to a sentry, please. <laughs> the lowest DPS unit in the universe. Now, to get that bonus objective over there, we're just going to lift our command center and send them on a nice little expedition. Because why send units over there when we can fly? So there is one Void Ray. Marines will take it down because Void Rays are kind of terrible. And by kind of, I mean completely and utterly terrible. We will be making them later, and they'll be great. <laughs> Okay, and then we're going to load this guy up and bring him over here. To 
grab that bonus objective. We're losing all of our SCVs, but it's fine. Provided some ample tanking, and we are in. Now, we actually have to be a little bit careful here so that we do not finish the mission too quickly before we have this command center get over and grab that bonus. So, for this fight, you guys come over here. Do I have any Marines left? Yes, Marines go over here. That is three out of four, and then... Don't mind this. It's fine. It should give us four out of four really soon, and then we can start the final fight. There we go. So we have one Marauder in the front for every one of these, and it should just be able to be healed by the medics, and we'll take it down without a unit loss. Because that is the achievement we gotta do here. Easy peasy. As I said, not an issue. <laughs> okay, Hammer Securities, talk to the TV, and get the Stabilizer Med Packs. Perfect. Okay. Hammer Security. Kate Lockwell. And, nope, that's the bridge. I'm gonna make this mistake every single time in Wings of Liberty. Reason being is that the interface things are swapped there compared to the other campaigns. So the start mission is always here, and the upgrade thing is here for the other ones. Okay, we are going to Redstone. Redstone is going to be the first one where I could make a terrible mistake. <laughs> we'll see. It's not that bad usually. However, if you're doing a bunch of things and you do make a mistake, then you lose everything. So, uh, let's not do that. So what do we have to do here? We have to rescue all of Tasha's boys, which is very easy. And then we have to use the lava to kill the Brutalisk. And that is the one that is a little bit suspect. It should be okay. And this first lava comes up at the one minute mark, so we are going to be a little bit risky and greedy and just keep mining for a while get as much money as we can in this early stage there we go that seems good grab another barracks grab some marines and get ready to finish things off oh, man i could have gotten a whole nother trip there why wasn't i even greedier with my scvs Okay. Is there an achievement to do the campaign without purchasing mercs? No, there is an achievement to do the campaign with purchasing, like, everything, though, that costs way more money than you actually have access to. That'll be a fun part of this campaign. Because you have to spend, like, $5 million worth of your $2 million that they give you. But I have a plan. Don't worry. Okay. We got these going. We're gonna want to get tech reactor on this one, or tech lab. I wish we could get the tech reactor. It would actually be good in the early stages of the campaign. I don't have any medics. What I should have done is gotten a tech lab on this one. I just, I don't know why I didn't. I got a reactor instead. I, I talked up so much the benefit of getting those early medics, and then I proceeded to not do that. And I don't have medic facilities yet, which allows you to build them out of a reactor. But it's okay. We're gonna come over here. We're going to grab our attack upgrade. Depot Dave is going to be added again. And we're going to get the first set of Tasha's Ombres. Who are a command center right up here. Some of my boys disappeared in this um, area. Oh, R, not L. And you guys are going to come on over and... You guys are going to pop out of the sky, or the ground, the anti-sky. Grab a little bit of this cash, and Just everybody comes on over here. On forces, the longer it's gonna take so to ideally, this is a pretty quick we'll mission, and we don't spend a lot of time just idling about, doing nothing. Because it is one that, if things go wrong, can end up taking a really long time, you know? Because you have to get that big mineral count. But if you can make things go really well at the early stage, you don't have to spend that much money, so then you can, you know, have more money. And money is the key. It's a uh, it's compounding mission. Mineral field depleted. 
So this first mercenary war pig drop is when we have to be afraid of the lava. This is the timing that I figured out is this guy is lava time. So we probably don't want to have him rallied into the lava when we summon him. And we're going to use that time. We're going to defend right here because this is the chokes to the enemy bases. Blast through everything. And then once it is about time, we are going to kill this base down here so they can only attack from this direction. All right, here we go. You guys lift. You lift. Everyone be careful. Let's go. War pigs. Don't remember the hockey. Doesn't matter. Reapers are incredible at taking down those structures. Every single layer on this map also has some money associated with it. Uh, it drops, it usually has a cluster of money around it, and then inside of itself it also has some cash. So it is economically advantageous to kill these. Alright. Land you. Over here. Land you. And over here. This is going great. I haven't really made a big mistake yet, which is, you know, always the thing you're supposed to say when things are going well, so you can set up that dramatic tension for when I eventually just get destroyed, which definitely will not happen. All right, so what we're now going to do is dive into this southern base and take it out. This base is actually pretty spooky because there are a lot of burrowed banelings around, and I have no idea where they are. So I'm probably just going to lose a bunch of my infantry to them, because they'll wait until I'm right on top of them, and then they'll unburrow. And then, you know, crying commences. As you do. I know they're, like, over here for the most part. They're near the Baneling Nest. It's actually a really cool piece of visual indication that is really easy to miss, because someone was trying to be a little bit too clever. <laughs> But I really respect the attempt. Alright, we're up to $4,000, which is really good. This place is running out of cash, Ruha. Alright, let's send this guy around. There's one! There's three! Hey, I think we may have disarmed him. Well, there's one. Alright, I'll take it. That is all the Reapers for that achievement. Now we're going to grab these Reapers and bring them on over here. They're mining well. You guys want to head on over here. And as was before, I'm basically just done with production for right now. And we're going to have to do a little bit of a save weird thing for the Brutalisk because I am not confident in my ability to do it the first time, but if I save, I'm pretty sure that I can get it. Alright. We actually have plenty of time here, so let's start mining. I thought that by the time this got over here, I need to be careful to not win. That would be that would be so embarrassing because I haven't actually killed the Brutalisk with the lava yet. Oh, I should have kept that creep alive because the Brutalisk would move faster. All right, here we go. So, you guys up, you guys over. You up, you guys over. Just move you down for a sec. You're safe, you're safe, save. Now we're going to kite this guy into the lava. We're going to do him over here. And then what we're actually going to do is just let him attack me. There we go. And he should die. Perfect. First try. Let's go get some more money. This base has some cash. The final base has some cash. I'm not really sure that I want to fight that final base, but we'll do what we have to do. Uh, a couple guys over here. Oh, here's some money. And all we have to do is get up to that 8,000 now because we got every achievement, I believe. Yeah, uh, F's in the chat for the Reapers, guys. They did sacrifice themselves for the greater good. And I am very proud of them. Except this guy. He didn't help. <laughs> we needed him to pick up money. Alright, we have uh, we have enough stuff. I'm just going to run through and grab the money. <laughs> Thank you for the F's guy. Wow, that's a lot of F's. <laughs> Beautiful. Man, this is going well. Okay, we got to talk to Tosh. Then we have to talk to the TV once again. Do you guys talk to the TV? Very important stuff. 
All right. TV, where's Tosh? I guess I'm talking to Tychus. Uh, are you on the bridge? Usually he's up in the top area, but he might be on the bridge right now. There's our boy. Now we have to get combat shields and Zerg bunker hit points. Combat shields and Zerg bunker. Oh, I guess I don't get bunker capacity. I wonder why not. Was I supposed to before? Nope. All right, I'm going to trust my notes. Uh, this is fortified bunker. Really good upgrade. So now we are heading to one of the harder missions. Welcome to the jungle. Anyone who has ever played this mission is like, yep, <laughs> this mission sucks. <laughs> and you don't want to go here early, so we're going here early. Uh, I have multiple paragraphs worth of written notes for this one. So <laughs> hopefully things go well. Let's, uh... Lift, land. We're gonna get some medics going early on. We wanna get seven guys on minerals. My little, like, cheat code. I don't know if this is, like, a good number. But I like to get seven guys on minerals and then put a couple guys on gas. And then go back on to minerals. And that seems to get you enough gas that you can get some stuff early on, but it doesn't cripple your economy. So the achievements on this one are very simple, but also very hard. The Taldorim cannot steal a single altar, and I cannot lose a single SCV. And as a result, because the Protoss is just everywhere on this mission, we have to be incredibly careful, but also be incredibly fast, right? Because we have to be bopping them. We have to win this mission before the opponent gets 3-3, because we're not supposed to be here yet which means that the opponent scales way farther out of control than we are equipped to deal with. And we have to not lose SCVs while being fast and while bopping down all of their seal attempts. It's just a lot of stuff. So I have every single sealing thing written down and hopefully, hopefully that'll be enough. We're gonna get three barracks. Did I not get stabilizer med pack or medic facilities? What did I get? Did I get the wrong upgrade? Or did I just... Am I an idiot? Uh... I hope so. I hope I... Did I just not click on med medic facilities? Yeah, I think I just didn't click on medic facilities. I was supposed to get it. I was wondering why I had this little excess of cash, and it's because I didn't get the thing that lets me react around medics, which means... My money situation is going to be a bit weird. I guess I'll go two... Oh, we're going to have to play it on the fly right here. Yeah, two tech labs, one reactor. Marauder medic. That'll be fine. That'll be okay. I hope. We're going to get plus one attack. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's not a mistake I want to make. Medics are so important in the early stage. And we have the medic healing upgrade at least. That one is going to make sure we don't die. Just every macro cycle, we're going to be down one marine, but I'm not sure that I can afford three racks anyway. So it might be okay. But what I'm going to need you guys to do is that as we get to the end of this mission, chat needs to be flooded with reminders for me to get medic facilities. Because it's not in my notes. It's something that I should have done. So this is going to be is going to be a little bit of a team effort here as you guys remind me to get the important upgrade once the mission is over not yet. Warning. The so thank you. I'm just Terezine. voicing this out loud so we don't make any mistakes. And we don't make any more mistakes. Uh, okay. Let's take this down. Just try not to lose anything in this early stage. We can theoretically snipe the probes if we need to. But I'm hoping that we can just focus on the combat units first, basically, always. Because it's cleaner that way. And now we have to move out onto the map and start our adventure. War pigs would be really nice. We want to get the mercenaries whenever we can in the early stage, because they're so much more powerful than anything else. And I know I've been talking about medics a lot, but, like, they scale with medics, because they're hard to kill. And when they don't die... They get healed to full over and over and over again. We're going to hold up money for hammer securities next. 
They also take a lot less damage from stim comparatively, like percentage-wise, so they're very important. Marines are, like, really good, but they're not that good. Okay, so the enemy is going to seal over here next. Let me check my notes. They're going to stop the seal left, stop the seal left, then clear the middle, and then defend against an attack coming in the middle. So this is the sealing attempt. Perfect. That is three scouts. Those usually go over to this turret, I believe. But whatever. I mean, that was fine. I lost one Goliath, unfortunately, but everything else is okay. Keep the big, bulky mechanical units in the back because they're a lot more vulnerable than guy with gun. Of course. StarCraft logic. So we are not going to take this base. Even though we're clearing it out, we're only clearing it for mobility's sake. And that is because it is not in a good position. There are Templar that come with Psystorm, and they really like just walking over to this mineral line and dropping a Psystorm on it, and we are not allowed to lose a single worker on this mission, otherwise we lose the achievement. So we can't let that happen. Got a pretty good macro engine going, saturation is good. Yep, I had the notes on defending this attack in the middle. Now we're gonna head on over to the right-hand side. Stopping the seal there, then we go to the left, then we defend an attack in the middle. Uh, we're definitely gonna get an armor upgrade. Armor would be really good. I don't think we need to stim right now, just try to save up a little bit of energy. There is some interesting math where sometimes stimming is actually a way to gain energy for your medics because you end the fight faster so you take less damage. I know it sounds weird, but stim is a damage reduction mechanic. Alright, notes say that we go left next. And then after this, we're going to go in the center. I'm so glad I have this written down. This mission would be so impossible at this point if I didn't have every attack written down for... I don't think there's any other mission where I have literally everything, that every place that I need to go written down. But it's worth it. Okay, we do not have a second set of mercenaries yet. This army is looking quite good. Besides the fact that one of the Goliath bros died. That's a... Very sad, but, you know, he sacrificed himself to a scout. <laughs> Which is a little bit embarrassing for him. But when when we tell his family what happened to him, we'll say that it was a Colossus or something, not a scout. Right? It's the it's the kind thing to do. Okay, there should be a ceiling attempt on this side soon. If there's not, then I'm going to be very confused and all my notes are going to be wrong. And then it says defend attack in mid and then yeah we clear the right and we get the bonus on the right oh no my note after that just says stop seal I don't know where that is hey here we go honestly I think that things have just been progressing so well that I got here way faster than I thought I would so I was sitting there awkwardly fashionably early Alright, so this is a little bit of a spooky area. This is the only warp in Colossus in StarCraft 2. Everyone knows that, though. I don't know why I bothered to tell you. Got him. And then Defend Center must have been in reference to this attack. Oh, hello! How you doing, sir? Then we move on to the right side. And we'll grab the bonus. Now, my notes say 12 minutes is when we start sealing, and it is about the 12 minute mark. You guys over here. Let's grab this bonus. And this part can be a bit annoying. Because there's going to be a bunch of stuff that attacks in like little waves over here. I think we're going to go up and take down Prism first, and then we can take down this, and then, like, some Void Rays are gonna come. And honestly, I'm just afraid... What are you doing, sir? <laughs> yeah. That. Uh, we gotta stop that seal attempt. I'm gonna throw down a save, because once again, a single SCV dies, and we are out. 
However, I'm pretty sure that we're okay. They never send an attack wave against the first person. Oh, dude, I'm smart. I just realized that my entire build order now sets me up to go get the bonus on this side. Wow, what a clever design from Giant Grant Games. I forgot that I did this. <laughs> so these notes that I've accrued have been over the span of like a year and some change. And uh, that means that like a little bit of time over and over over the span of a year. And that means that I forget that I do sometimes. All right, so the first canister is over here. You, no, sir. You were going to run down here. You're not going to run over to the side. Now what we're going to do is rapidly take the remainder. So there's going to be a defense wave. We're going to defend. And then as soon as this wave is dead, we start the next one. Because we have to get out of here quick. It's looking good. Here comes another wave. From two places at oh, bold attack, sir. Didn't take too much damage from that storm. Is this a ceiling attempt? I'm not entirely sure. Job. That's the first canister field. Don't really care. And they're coming over the right-hand side now. Perfect. There we go. That's the ceiling wave. Set our rally over here. Now we're going to pull everybody down, and we're going to grab one, two, three, four people. And we're going to grab all four of these at the same time. And it's, uh, it's going to be a big fight. But it is better than the opponent getting their upgrades, because right now the Protoss has 2-2-1 two, two, upgrades, which is still doable with a 1-1 one, one combat force. But as soon as they start getting three on their attack and armor, they basically just don't take damage from our stuff. So we have to we have to get it done right now. Careful. They're sending their ships to take out your SCVs. Shoot them down quick or we finish. I'm just making sure that no one comes over to the side. You're doing great. Keep it up. I've been producing. I haven't been building depots because I kinda thought that I was gonna be losing stuff, but things are just going really, really well. These fights are nice. And I think that's everything. So yeah, we got uh, we got all the stuff. Perfect. Medic facilities, yes. Thank you guys. Medic facilities, perfect. That's over half the canisters you wanted. And then we have to, yeah. So this is five, six, and seven. There better not be a dead SCV somewhere. The thing is, it can be really hard to tell if you lost one. I am 97% sure that no SCVs died in the making of this film. Perfect. Medic facilities, medic facilities. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. Uh, okay, I gotta do the TV first, and then we go to the armory. Medic facilities, concussive shell. Here we go. And then we need bunker capacity. Really good upgrade. And we have to go to the laboratory and get attack speed, and then I have to talk to Tosh. Maybe. I think that might be a backup top talk to Tosh from in case I missed it. Where are you, sir? Oh, he just moves around everywhere. There we go. And let's head to the bridge. We're going to either the easiest or the hardest mission in the history of mankind. Today it's going to be very simple. It's the Great Train Robbery. <laughs> For anyone who is out of the loop on this one, this is a very easy mission in the base campaign because the Diamondback is amazing. But basically any time that you add some sort of a challenge to it, it becomes one of the hardest missions because there's like no money. You guys over here. Come on over. One diamond back, and what we're just splitting off our guys Sir, and grabbing all the money we can on the map the the to get a nice little start. Man, I didn't think they and made we can get a diamond back. So my strategy on this mission is pretty complicated, actually. I'm not entirely sure how to explain it. But basically, I'm going to make diamond backs and then kill everything. And that'll that'll get me all the achievements. <laughs> I don't even remember. Well, we have to find all the Diamondbacks. We have to uh, kill one of the kill teams with Diamondbacks. 
And that's it. That's and of fine. course, get the Zerg research. Can't, wait. Can't quite clear that area out yet, but what we can do is just start our expansion over here. Blast our way through these guys. The Diamondbacks, their ability to fire and move is so powerful, and we're actually going to make some pretty good use of them in this campaign, not just on this mission. Which is one of the things I actually like about this run quite a bit. Because usually, the Diamondback is one of the coolest units, but it's not that good. Because the Siege Tank costs about the same amount, and costs less supply, and fills a very similar role. But today, we're actually going to get some good use out of it. Alright. Just make sure we get all the money, and we're actually going to have a little bit, maybe our first little reprieve during this run. Because it has kind of been go, 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 go since the beginning. Of course, we're not that far in. We are 1 24th of the way done with the run. Oh, gosh. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> when I say that out loud, it kind of dawns on me. Yeah, we're an hour into the 24 hours. Okay. I'll see you guys after your bedtime. When you wake up in the morning. Uh, it's fine. We're going to do great. I promise. I'm not going to promise you, but I'll promise myself that uh, I at least won't fall asleep. And that is my measure of success. Okay. Let's get this uh, factory down. Excellent armory. And we're going to grab the rest of the money. We obviously won't find many natural mineral fields Let's here. Let's do this. So uh, the not the rest of the money, the rest of the, the Diamondbacks, which are kind of like money because diamonds are expensive. There, I didn't misspeak, I promise. <laughs> I'm just... I'm 7D chessing it. Prometheus Company. Big old Firebat. I love how the Firebat runs away when you shoot him. I don't know if that's like a thing that always happens, but right there, he was just like, all right, I'm the Firebat. I go in the, oh my gosh, are those Diamondbacks? I'm out of here, bro. I appreciate his uh, realistic response. And then put a Firebat over here. Take down the Marauder first. Grab the money. Grab the friend. Check it out, Jimmy. Dominion started sending escorts to protect the train. And we grab these hack upgrade. Looks like we found all the Confederate Diamondbacks, sir. This should really. And at this point, we've the won the mission. There's not really anything else to say. Uh, I'm gonna deal with this train, and then I'm going to take a drink, maybe eat a couple blueberries, because I am prepared for the long run, and that means that hydration station is. Well, I mean, it's a train mission, so Hydration Station is where we should be. These Marines are garbage. Oh, I love the Diamondback. It just feels great to use. It's such a fun unit. We're gonna have to build a little repair hut for them. Alright, coffee time. What am I eating? That is a great question. So... As an experienced 24-hour streamer who does, like, challenge runs that are really time-sensitive during these, I have, uh, I have studied the art of the 24-hour stream, and I have come to the conclusion that the ultimate food for a 24-hour stream is paella. Reason being is that it has vegetables, it has meat, and then the rice itself kind of, like, sticks to everything, so it's very easy to eat while you're playing. And it's also just dense, so you don't have to spend a lot of time eating it. And also, it's flippin' delicious. So, yeah, it's, uh, with, uh, chicken and chorizo. Because chorizo is also amazing. Okay. You're making everybody hungry. <laughs> Let's see. Southern train, no problem. And then I have a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of coffee made, like a huge amount. And then at the very end, I have my emergency monster energy drink that I'll chug at like the 22 hour mark to help me through. It's all planned out. I probably won't follow the plans that well. Okay, we blast through this guy. Man, this mission is easy. It's so funny, the whiplash in Wings of Liberty. Because you can go wherever you want to, in whatever order, right? We do, 
We do the uh, Welcome to the Jungle, which is just a monster mission that's really tough. And then we go to, like, Baby's first mission with the train robbery right after. Be careful. It uh, does not hurt us that the object or the achievements on this mission are also just free, right? We have to kill the kill team, but besides that, it's just play the mission normally. We don't have to be fancy or special. Once again, I want to say thank you to all of the uh, support that people have been giving. Uh, a lot of donations I've seen. I am not able to, like, sit down and just thank people because this is a very focus-intensive run. But I do see it, and I do appreciate it. Okay. You. And we just chill for a bit. So I'm going to be banking a little bit of money here when it comes to these Diamondbacks. They produce very slowly at 50 seconds apiece. And three factories is not enough, but these are eventually going to run out of cash. So we don't want to build any more. It's just a waste. A train is coming through the western so we'll bank up for a little bit. It's the ebb and flow of money on this mission. Oh, you know what? I need some Goliaths, because Seeker Missile is probably going to be a thing very soon. Let me guess. There it is. <laughs> My favorite. Does anyone here like playing against Seeker Missile? Any any masochists in the chat? Not playing with it, mind you, but playing against it. Here we go. Alright, it's on this guy. Stim, get him out of here. Are we going to be able to save him? I wish we could shoot the missile down. Hey, we got out. Perfect. Yeah, get out of here, you loser. You missed with your missile. Somebody's got to put the miss in missile, and today it's you. Alright. Let's do this. What are we doing? Um... Let's uh, sit here idly and wait for the opponent to attack me at some point because there's nothing else to do on this mission. Blueberries! These organic blueberries? No, thank goodness. Wouldn't want to spend extra money on... Oh, I guess we're under attack. We're fine. <laughs> it's blueberry time. Honestly, well, not bad micro for one hand blueberry. <laughs> one hand off the mouse. <laughs> what needs killing? Pretty happy about that. Uh, a train is approaching through a tunnel hmm. in the northwest. Blue is a pretty good flavor. What's I'm just gonna throw that out there. GMOs are faced. <laughs> All right, we're going to get huntered and seekered and missiled again, and this time we'll, we're going to get hit by it because I feel bad for the opponent, and I just, you know, I want them to feel like they have a chance or anything. I don't want them to be depressed, so when we get hit by it, just remember it's completely intentional, I promise. And it's not because it's just impossible to see who it's in. Yeah, okay, it was going up that way. The line is very thin. Ooh, fine. At the ready. Remember to get medic facilities? Thank you. Go ahead. I can't wait until we get to, like, Legacy of the Void epilogue and you guys can be like, medic facilities, Grant, medic facilities. <laughs> and you know what? It'll somehow help. Sir, I'm detecting Dominion kill teams patrolling the oh yeah, we gotta kill this kill team. Of Bully the bullies. Which is the name of this achievement, but if you are like me, then Bully the Bully makes you think of Super Mario 64 in the Lava Mission. That's one of the stages there, and I always think about the guys that you gotta knock into the lava. This is gonna hurt a little bit because it's like pure Marauder, but we have to kill it for the achievement. There we go, Bully the Bully's done, and now we're just going to ignore this one because why would we fight it? A train is coming through the western tunnel. So this is the final train that has like... Oh wait, no, this is the easy one. You'll need to use diamondbacks to catch them. Yeah, it turns out when you go pure diamondback, this part's pretty simple. Go on. So they're gonna send, like, eight hellions. 
and those Hellions are going to do negative damage each. And we just kind of walk this way. Perfect. What a train. And... Yep, just keep producing. Have we ever tried Diamond Forward? What needs killing? I love it. They used to be called the Cobra. If anyone watches Giant Crank Games Archives channel, which is my daily upload channel, you'll know that the, uh... We watched the announcement, like, alpha gameplay footage of Wings of Liberty a couple weeks ago, and the Diamondback back then was known as the Cobra. And the way that they showed it off is they had a Thor that was the size of the Odin blasting things, and these guys came on over and they just ran circles around him while he really slowly rotated and couldn't keep up. It was very cool. And then they didn't keep anything like that in the game. Mineral field depleted. Go ahead, go on. The uh, is there... Raven. No, it's fine. I think I'm done producing. I mean, I, I can grab some... whatever these guys are. Not really anything else to do. Yeah, whatever. What's on your mind? Huh? I'm waiting. And then... A train is approaching through a tunnel. We have a lot of idle SCVs. <laughs> Once again, it's just the nature of this mission. You end up with so much just not doing anything. We have an entire two mineral fields. And yet, with 15 SCVs that are idle, I decided that one guy should mine it. <laughs> That's strategy. Alright, one more. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this guy to pass whichever way he decides to pass. What's on your mind? What's going on? And then we're going to go charge. What's the plan? Go ahead. Bad news. Because why not? It'll end the mission a couple minutes faster than we think it will. What's on your mind? These guys, I don't know exactly where they go. So I'm going to be very careful. There's no... If this was Heart of the Swarm, Heart of the Swarm would totally tell you their patrol path. Because they baby you super hard in that campaign. But Wings of Liberty, they'll just, like, turn on a dime and come murder you. <laughs> because they do not respect you as a person and they want you to suffer in this campaign sometimes. What's the plan? Of course. Alright. On the move. Here we go. Blast them. Uh, take down that tank. Come on over here. Uh, we cannot kill that guy on the high ground. My favorite. We're just face tanking once again to make them feel better about themselves. And then we just camp blast train. Just like co-op. Does anyone else think that in co-op when your allies are just like camping spawn points it's really boring? It's not my favorite part of co-op. I can I can say that pretty definitively. Well, that was easy. Next, we are going to talk to Matt. Yes, this is the achievement. This is the dumb, dumb achievement. So in between this mission and Cutthroat, you have to talk to Matt to get an achievement. And if you don't, you can never get it. So, Matt, you're a TV. Bridge. Matt facilities. It, it's a very easy achievement. We just have to learn about him getting a wife. In a poker game. Here we go. So, uh, this mission is actually pretty neat in the way that it works. So we have to not build any SCVs until we recruit Mira. Which I like. I like quite a bit. Alright, boys. And the unit, in my opinion, that is really, really, really good if you are on a very low economy and you have to scoot around pillaging from the enemy, is the Diamondback. So, we're gonna do that. We're gonna make them again. Uh, this is gonna be the last time that we actually get to make the unit. I haven't even bound my command center. I intentionally keep it unbound here because I will accidentally, automatically build SCVs if I have the hotkey working. I'm sure everyone has been there before. Okay, we grab you. Oh gosh, I keep trying to build them. 
an armory. These two guys over here. We're going to have three on gas and two on minerals. Which may sound stupid, but it works. And if it's stupid, but it works, it's not stupid. Get a reactor. And we're going to have Diamondback Vulture production going. Diamondback Vulture is like the king of hit and run strategies. It works really nicely. Now we have to get this bunker going because these guys have to be retired. And Mira's going to give us a couple friends. I never got to give it to him. Last time you so the other him. achievement that we have to get here is 30 spider mine kills, which is not hard because spider mines are monster units. We, can use them to lay mines around we will be fine. Let's uh, grab a couple more guys before we move out against Orlin. We are going to be very poor for a long time because we can't build SCVs and we're mining gas. It's... Not, uh, not a combo I would recommend. What needs killing? Like, we have no guys on minerals currently. I like it. It's not good economic balance. Yeah. Alright, let's what? pull these guys, and we have to start attacking Orland's harvesting, otherwise he's going to completely eclipse us in terms of money. What's on your mind? Blast him. Excellent. And head on Victory over here. It is a little bit weird to micro this composition because half of the units can attack while moving and the other half absolutely cannot. But it generally works out. By the way, I use Rapid Fire for Spider Mine Lang and it is the greatest thing ever. It's when you set Confirm AI Ability Target on the same button as the hotkey for the ability. So you can just hold it down and it will just continuously cast it. And for things like Spider Mines, makes it so easy to distribute those mines everywhere really quickly. As long as you're not picky about where they go, but landmines... You don't gotta be picky about landmines. They don't mine if they're in a little bit of a weird position. Alright, here we go. So, repair. And we gotta get that attack upgrade for the Diamondbacks. So the Diamondbacks here actually do a little bit of double duty because they are both very good at roaming around the map. However, they have massive anti-armor damage, right? Like, just incredibly good anti-armor damage, which means that when we're busting Orland's base, they will once again be very useful. They're going to be our main source of firepower, which is why we are going for them, despite them being slower, more expensive, and all that than just going pure Vulture. Because the Vulture is a very good unit during the first phase. Oh, we gotta get Spider Mines on these guys. Remember, 30 Spider Mine kills. There we go. The Vulture is not actually that useful in the final attack. We're mostly just building them right now to get that 30 Spider Mine kill achievement. And then I'm kind of gonna dump them by the wayside. They're, they're cheap. They're really cheap, which is, you know, a skill. Uh, Orland has a decent bit of change right now. I'm not super happy about how much he has. I feel like I could definitely be going faster here. I'm just a little bit thrown for a loop because I can't make my... I can't make my SCVs and I just keep pressing the wrong buttons as a result. I have so many inbuilt habits when it comes to macro. And as soon as you don't have a command center or something, it all just gets weird. We're doing great. My pleasure. Go on. Of course. I mean, as I said, we're a little bit slow, but we're doing great. I'm, <laughs> I'm choosing optimism. After this base is dead, Orland's income is really bad. He only has like three or four SCVs in his main base, and even though we have two mining, that means we'll we'll beat him eventually. So what I'm really just sitting here waiting for is that spider mine achievement now. I'm... I don't like how I don't have it. I know that he keeps attacking with lots of stuff over time, so it won't be the end of... There we go. There we go. Now I can kind of pick up the pace. You guys go over here, keep building diamondbacks. Let's get some guys on this side. 
And once everything is secure, we're going to have guys patrolling on these. Because they do generate scrap very slowly over time. Scrap minerals. Scrap is a different game. The vultures are going to die. I don't really care. We just have to get to 6,000 minerals and continually make diamond backs on our way to get there. So in order to beat Orland's base, we're looking for about 150 supply worth of stuff. Of course, when we rescue Mira's Marauders, which is what we're saving up the money for, there it'll be a little bit of a supply boost. But it's not going to be all the way there. That's what the Diamondbacks are for. You guys come on up. You guys go on down. Turn that smile into a frown. Or, wait. Well, it rhymed, but it wasn't very happy. Unfortunately, I've kind of run out of money on the map at this point. So I've been told that the easiest way to do this is just have a really lengthy patrol path for these guys, and usually it works for the respawning. The respawn is, like, really weird, where if you are nearby, it will not respawn for- Hey, wait, don't do that. I also don't have any anti-air for this wraith. If you have uh, any units nearby, it won't respawn, so if you have them just, like, patrol a really long way out, then it generally works. Let's grab this money. Yeah, now we're just kind of scrounging for the last bits of cash so we can pay off Mira. I think we're going to end up at, like, 120 supplies, so we're going to need a little bit more. But I spent more than I wanted to in this initial phase, because I was feeling a little bit stressed. When I really shouldn't have. Like, Orlin is not doing well on money. <laughs> the man, we should rename him Porlin, because he just cannot afford anything. Oh, do we go? Do we go? Get him. Hey, he lived! Perfect. 111 supply, not great. All right, we got the Solitaire Achievement, which is the one to finish off without building any workers, which means now we can build workers. So we're going to be able to catapult our supply up really quick. We also have a lot of infrastructure to work with, which is nice. So let's unload and salvage, unload, salvage. Just need a little bit of extra money. And because Orlin is just a really big boy who likes his armored units, we're making Marauders and we're making Diamondbacks. Just anything that does bonus damage against armored. We have our mech upgrades, so we're good on that side. I'm just trying to think about what I'm missing. We're going to pull the SCVs, obviously, because any good player pulls SCVs whenever they can. We're going full bit by bit. Unfortunately, pulling the drones and pulling probes is just not nearly as good, so when we get into Heart of the Swarm and Legacy of the Void, this brilliant strategy that was made by the pinnacle of RTS Masterminds will no longer work. So we're going to try to do it as much as we can here. We are almost there. 150 supply. Though, eh, fine. We're gonna unload, salvage it up, What's going on? bring these guys on over, Mr. Vulture, you need to come help as well, everyone that's been on patrol, you can kind of end your duties, just make sure everybody's in the same spot. This looks pretty good. Obviously, I say it looks good, but that means it is time to save in case things go to- hi! Oh, what an interesting time for an attack while everybody is kind of split up. That's. That's fun. How are ya? <laughs> At least it wasn't a seeker missile. Alright. I mean... The attack didn't really do anything. It was very awkward for me, but... I'm used to being awkward. Here's a little bit more money. These guys rally. Do I have all the SCVs? Doesn't feel like all the SCVs. Here they are. Right, let's give it another save and give it a go. So once we get in here, things are going to have to start real fast. 
We're going to stutter step our way in, which once again is a little bit awkward because we are working partially with Diamondbacks. We don't need to do that. Target down the Siege Breaker. There's a cloaked ghost here that we can't do anything about. We just have to make sure that we don't get hit by that nuke. Charge on in, target down the Siege Tank. Blast these things, and then we're going to ignore the remaining defenders and take down Orland's Command Center. Easy peasy. Not even close. That was clean. So we're going to grab the TV once again and get micro-filtering. Yeah, I never think that that's going to go as well as it does, but the Siege Breakers are actually insane. Even though they're not sieged up, they still do ridiculous damage and are super durable, and they kind of provide the backbone of the entire army. So now we are going to Ghost of a Chance, which is a wonderful, wonderful mission, because it gets the most powerful unit in Wings of Liberty. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, once we finish this one... Oh, I didn't talk to the TV! It's okay. It is okay. There, I think there's like 20 TV broadcasts, and all we have to do is watch 10 of them. So, uh, don't let me make that mistake again, but there is a lot of leeway here. <laughs> but thank you, thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna priest him here. I don't want to lose anything, I'm probably gonna lose one marine, because bunkers. Ah, oh, that was actually really close. We almost kept them all alive. Doesn't matter too much. So the objectives on this one are to get kills with uh, mind-controlled units. That is one of them, very easy. The other is to kill every single person on all of the stages. And that one is actually a little bit spooky for a couple reasons. One, this is a mission that takes part in three very distinct phases. And if you miss something in phase one or phase two, there's no going back to fix your mistake. And then two, a thing that I uh, I learned the hard way is that if you if you're doing this and you have a mind controlled unit at the end of a phase, it will not count as killed. Even though it's on your side, it will count as an enemy that is still alive. So we have to be very very careful as we are ending these to not let things like that happen. Just be very thorough with everything that we are doing. Because this is, it's easy to mess up. We do not have to kill missile turrets, by the way. Missile turrets are fine. We're going to kill these because they can detect, and that is a rude thing to do. But, uh, like, this turret up here we do not have to kill. It's all units have to die. Which is why we're going to grab things like the siege tank. And let him get as many kills as he can for the... For the achievement. Say again. And then we will kill him off for his service. Uh, yeah, we're going to move you a little bit forward, sir. Your service is not done. Uh, I'm going to be very careful with this raven. I do not want it flying onto unpathable terrain. That is a way that we lose. As I said, very, very sketched out about this achievement. There's another specter right up here that you can see. Oh, I almost missed you. How you doing down there? Oh, man, I am so scared. Uh, I'm actually going to make hard saves. Save uh, ghost one. So that if I do mess something up, I can come back and try to figure out what happened. It's just a safety save. So for right here, we're grabbing the Jackson's Revenge Battlecruiser. But then Jackson actually needs to die, as I said, so that we don't accidentally have him pop out as an enemy. And that should be everything in this thing. What is the orange on the top right? That is a missile turret. Do not worry. I have a pretty good understanding of this mission overall, so I'm like 97% sure that we got this one without a problem. Right, we're gonna run up here. I'm telling you, I saw some Grab a friend. We should just cover the place in auto turrets. Yeah, we should just cover the place in auto turrets. What a good idea, sir. Target that and then kill the gate control. So we gotta make sure nobody like runs over here when Cloak Nova is hitting them. Let's make some noise. That area is clear. 
And we can blast you. And then we're going to grab a Marauder. And see if we can get a... Oh, we did not get a single kill. Well, you know, it's not that many kills we have to get with cloaked units. It's fine. We're going to get a siege tank later. Siege tanks are, in fact, a balanced unit, so it, it'll be okay. I just got to be a little bit careful with it. Because I am low on the kill count. There is always a backup Ultralisk in Part 3, if things are going really poorly for the kills. You gotta have your pocket Ultralisk. He's a good guy. Anyone we'll come up with a good name for Mr. Ultralisk? Because he is kinda out of place on this mission. It feels like he could use a... He could use a title. He's not just some generic Ultralisk guy. Okay, take this down. Then we're gonna come over here cloaked. On the move. I'll make it happen. <laughs> Albert the Ultralisk. Oh, that's not a siege tank. Oh, this is fine. We're gonna grab the Banshee, go over here, and try to take down this Spectre. Not sure if it's gonna work. I don't know why I grabbed this. Ulysses the Ultralisk. I like that, it's alliterative. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> Let's uh, let's just pretend that I am focusing really hard and not reading chat on this mission. Oh, we do not want this to happen. Oh goodness! Oh goodness! All right, Nova Covert Ops has taken a lot of damage. I just forgot about this Raven. Okay, I want to jump up here. This area is fine. It's okay, I have another strat to beat that Spectre. It's called Use the Overpowered Ability. Da -da -da. Goodbye. Spectres remaining here should turn to two momentarily. There we go. These can come on over this way. There's like a little Spectre dude over here. Oh, hi! <laughs> I don't think he's in the mood to chat. Oh, okay. He's just being nice. We gotta wait for the nuke. We should be able to blast through this with the Reapers. And we can snipey snipe this nerd. Wow. Okay, Marauders are strong. Yeah, we can get more friends here. Hammer. You gotta get more kills, dude. <laughs> this mind control kill achievement is getting harder by the moment. I'm not sure why. Why is this the first one throwing me for a loop? Okay. Uh, we're gonna send this guy to his death. He's not very good at his job. Grab the nuke. Keep me covered while I hack into this nuke silo. Should just And then we're gonna come over here and we're not actually gonna nuke them. We're gonna do we do a little bit of a sneaky sneak. Go ahead. From that last Instead we're just gonna mind control this Thor. Because he should be able to kill some stuff. No, don't shoot the Raven, dude! Oh my there we go. The very classily named achievement. Dominate tricks. Because we're being tricky with our mind control. It's uh that's why it's named that. It's just, it's such a tricky strategy. Alright, we do have to make sure everything is dead. I'm going to once again give this a full save. And that is that. No specters remaining. Why is everyone saying specter? What? It's literally said Here zero specters remaining. Give us a target. Okay. Say again. <laughs> People are going crazy. Oh no, the illiteracy. It's here. It definitely said specters remaining zero. Okay. This part's a little bit awkward. I'm reading you. 
I'm not a big fan of it. Let's get There's in. a lot of stuff we have to kill here in a weird area. So we're just going to be pretty careful as we move through. Oh, ow. Detection. Let's so we'll use these. Just hit right here. Maybe I want to grab that Goliath. I'm not sure. Grab a point defense drone, I think. So we have the achievement for kills. Oh gosh, this is going terribly. <laughs> let's, just, let's just pretend that none of this happened. That was awful. <laughs> we don't really need those units, but I prefer to have them. It makes life a little bit easier. Okay, take that down. Now what we're going to do is auto turret, auto turret. Whoa. Auto turrets do some decent damage. I'm going to go over here and nuke this guy, because he's annoying. And then we can grab a nuke. Keep me covered while I hack into this nuke silo. Should just take me a f There. There we go. Now, is there a guy over here? Yeah. I'll make it happen. Executing. Nova is not high on HP, which is a little bit concerning. Strictly business. Is it? Is it okay? Yeah, I mean... I'll give it a quick save in case I die. Say again. But once we get past the guys over Got here, it. I don't think it's a big issue. No, yeah. Let's mind control you. Oh, it pulls everybody. I'm oh, goodness. Let's mind control you. Worst comes to worst, we just mind control the entire Spectre facility one at a time. And they'll kill everything for me. Consider it done. You down. On route. I have 96 energy. That is more than enough. There we go. Uh, Nova has 38 HP, which is a concerningly low number. Hmm. <laughs> and there is no healing on this mission. Go get him, Tiger. There you go. Took him a little bit. He was lagging. It. <laughs> it happens. Now we're going to provide him covering fire so he gets as far as his little face can get. Go get him, man. Oh, you're so powerful. I'm very proud of you. Keep going that way, sir. <laughs> we just kind of poke him up. Hey, no, this way. Yeah, you got, you got more people to fight. Look, lunch over here. Yeah. Well, he tried. <laughs> Strictly business. I'm going to wait for mind control. Uh, five more energy. Acknowledged. I am here. Click me. There. This guy should uh, fix all of my problems without putting Nova at risk. Particularly the detection problem. Let's go. Activate the cannons. So the kill everybody achievement does not actually trigger until the mission is over. Which is just, it's just brilliant design, and it makes me really happy, and I'm glad to see it. You're right, Rainer. A well-placed nuke would wreak some serious havoc on those defenses. He's just not doing anything? Alright, free kill. I'll take it. Now we're gonna save right here. Thank you for killing that guy, and we're gonna try to nuke them without finishing the mission, so that I can make sure everything is dead. Okay. Everything should be dead. That should be the achievement. It's kind of... Kind of not in my hands right now. Well, I mean, it's completely in my hands because I'm the one that played it, and if a mistake was made, it was my fault. This ain't the end. I'll be seeing you again real soon. Uh... Ah, someone is missing. Who is missing? Uh, Viking on top. Where's the Viking? Okay. Is it in part three? Did we, where did we make this mistake? This is why I saved a lot. So we can look around, make sure that nothing went wrong. Uh, this one is, this one's a bit of a pain. Viking. 
It's this guy. Just a random reaper. Sneaky, sneaky man. Okay, this should be it. I don't know what you guys were talking about with the Viking. <laughs> I'm just... All right. <laughs> Chat might have no idea what a Viking is. Yep, there we go. A Reaper. Also known as a Viking. Okay, we gotta talk to the TV. Then we have to get the ghost upgrades. Hello, Kate. Thank you. Head to the armory. So we want both ghost upgrades and we want dual fusion welders, which is... Is that the multi-build? No, it's repair speed. Repair speed. Yeah, I don't think we get multi-build in this run. It's nice to have, but it's not as essential. And now we are going to the dig. I am a... I am not going to play this mission legitimately. <laughs> we don't do that here. So this mission can be really scary. And we have to kill, what, like 50 buildings? It's a it's a very high number of buildings. And yeah, it's uh, we got to kill a bunch of guys with a drill as well. So should be okay. Now there's going to be some tanks that we get here. So what we want to do is lose nothing in this early stage so that we can have a lot to work with early on so we can be a little bit greedy early on and not die. Because the Protoss hit pretty hard and pretty fast on this mission. I legitimately think this is one of the harder StarCraft missions. And it can take a really, really long time if you get in a position where you need to use the drill all the time. And we don't have a really long time. Tanks so we're going to do our like best. When you, put them in siege mode, you they siege get up. Increased range and firepower. You siege up. They can't move then these guys are going to so chill over here. Switch them back into tank mode. And we're going to try to nail these guys with concussive shell to make them slow. Remember that when Wings Liberty came out, they you could use concussive shell on Archons. It even gets close to us. For some reason. Not, uh... Not a design that lasted that long. They eventually became massive, but Archons were not massive when the game came out. Right, these guys here. These guys on gas. Here we go. And we need to lift you. Come on over and grab a Ghost Academy. Because we're going ghosts. Doing the Danny Phantom build order. Not a show I actually like saw almost any of, but that was that was his catchphrase, right? Going ghost or something like that. I don't know, I had a friend who watched it when I was a kid. Maybe that was a different show. Oh no. Alright, so you here, you here. Did the bot die? Uh I can restart the bot. Request failed with status code four hundred, yeah, okay. Sir, I've managed to restart in the bot. Left of the Mobius expedition sensor net. I have restarted the bot. I hope it works. See what the are up to. Give it a go. Orders received. Sure thing. All right, we're going to siege these up, take them out really, really quickly, and then we're going to clear the bonus objectives on the right hand side. I don't know why I enunciated the word side so weirdly there. <laughs> side. <laughs> As we continue to get our ghosts. What's our target? Is the bot working? Yeah. I see people being excited, and that generally is a good sign. Either that or people just love killing this bonus objective. <laughs> One of the two. Okay. So the upgrades that we got on the Spectre were, or rather on the Ghost, is a permanent cloaking and bonus attack range and vision range. Both of these are going to be insane <laughs> as we keep going through our life. It is like absolutely game changing for a couple of missions. Not for like every mission, but definitely this one in particular, if you've never seen this strategy before, it's uh, completely legitimate and not cheesy at all. 
All right, I don't know what side they attack from, but I would like to clear this area out next so that I can very easily get my expansion. I'm going to throw down a quick save because sometimes things fall apart on this part, but I don't remember when they fall apart. Uh, Depot Dave is going to go into the Depot Canyon. The Depot Canyon is the best place that you can put depots because nothing goes over there, and it doesn't waste space in your base. It's the Depot Dave special. All right. I do need more ghosts. Yesterday. My mineral count is still really low, though. We're just pulling these early so that we have extra time in between the attack waves. You know, taking things on your own terms is just a little bit easier. Oh, don't! No! Harold! Oh. oh, this is bad. I actually just lost quite a bit. Hmm. I'm gonna have to be careful. Let's pull these guys right now. So that we don't have to fight them at the same time. Okay. Yeah, that is that's the right call. Come over here, get tanked. Don't lose any ghosts, that's the important part. Uh, we have the snipe ability, which is a really fair anti-biological murder weapon. Don't don't sit in tank range. All right, I'm going to try to get the bonus objective now. Not sure if it's a good idea. We can't actually drill the bonus objectives yet, but just having the areas secure makes life easier as time goes on. Sounds like a plan. Let's get these guys sieged up. It's probably going to pull. I don't exactly remember what's over here, but it's probably not that bad, right? Yeah, there we go. Oh, we gotta get out of here. Yeah, this is the part where we get the drill, which means it is time to drill. What a clever statement right there. We get the drill, and that means it's time to drill. I'm really... I say words for a living. <laughs> That's what I came up with. Incredible. You heard the man. Swing that laser around. Oh my goodness. Alright, we have to take down the Immortals because they do all the damage. As the ghost count gets higher, my worries get lower. We will drill these, and right now what we are waiting for is the air wave. The air wave is when things start to get a little bit spicy. And we'll be able to start doing the achievements. I'm going to grab a barracks, and I'm going to grab a barracks. Depot Dave has built a single depot down there, but you know what? That's all that he needs to do right now. Let's get our setup. And then I should get those bonus objectives. So this is, uh... This is the strategy. I, I have infinite cloaked ghosts on hold position. They can't do anything about it because they don't send detectors on this mission. Ever. So we're just going to make two walls like this, and then they can never beat us. It's, it's really stupid. But it makes the dig way easier, and the dig is one of those missions where things could go terribly wrong. So I'm not ashamed. You gotta heal up a little bit. They do, uh, they do have detectors over there, and inside of their base they have a lot of detectors, but they never send any of them to attack. the energy signatures of several Protoss relics in the area. I'm marking them on your map. Okay, we're gonna send this guy to the bonus. Well, there's time we can blast and laser drill. So now we have to focus on the actual achievements. And what those are is we have to kill 50 enemy buildings from the most powerfully defended thing or bases in like wings. So uh, we're not going to do that legitimately. We're going to do it cheesily. These guys over here. Uh, these tanks, I guess, are just going to chill in the back. You here. 
you guys on over here and head on over. Uh, the scouts will eventually kill the drill if I don't kill them, but I'm not sure if we would win the mission first. We might. Oh, Dave! Ah, he's on his sabbatical. Remember that if I get supply blocked, it's Depot Dave's fault, not mine. That's how it works. Where does it hurt? So. All right, we can get this object. Oh. This objective. These guys are going to be stuck. Just make sure this is a nice little setup. Then we got to get the wall on this side. Okay, there's multiple things we have to do at once here. I have to not lose these buildings to these guys as we're heading them over there. Then we have to build our fortification. There we go, Invis invisible firing line of doom. And now we just come on over here with this building and we're going to chill it for a bit and we're gonna start getting our 50 kills. And instead of like killing 50 unique buildings or something, we're just gonna kill these buildings over and over and over again and then the AI is gonna rebuild them and then we're gonna kill them over and over and over again. Because one of the reasons this mission is really annoying is if you, uh, that is the one for killing 15 units. That is not the one for killing 50 buildings, unfortunately. We're going to have to keep going. I wish it was that easy. Dave, come on. So at this point, we've basically won the mission. However, it's still going to be a long time until we win. In theory, we could destroy the Protoss bases on this mission, but honestly... On Brutal, with the tech that we have, it would probably take longer than just doing it this way. So, it's not really worth the time investment. Alright, how's this area doing? There we go. We need this industrious probe to just keep rebuilding. Could you... <laughs> a little bit more than that, sir? Okay, we're gonna... <laughs> we're gonna encourage him to build some more stuff. And this guy can actually be rescued, which would be great. Here we go. Now he's feeling it. Oh no! Harold! Oh man. That was... That wasn't good. Who's gonna write the note to his family? Yeah. He died how he lived, running away from artifacts. Yeah, Harold too. Listen, there's not that many names in the world, so okay? <laughs> I can't remember which ones I've used. <laughs> it's, it's tough. I'm trying my best. So how's the... Come on, why are you being so stingy? There we go. So these are backup buildings, by the way. They don't have any, like, crazy strategy. It's just like, I don't know, I could lose this at some point. I'd prefer not to. So... Ooh, juicy. Perfect. Come again. Then we have our backup Come ghosts, away. and we have to remember to keep them cloaked. We are going to run out of money on this mission. The faster we can do it, the better. Because uh, the, these gas geysers, there's 500 and 200 left. And they will attack with, like, Colossus and stuff. The end can be a little bit meh here. That they send that really big attack wave of doom. But we are almost at a point where we can chill for just a little bit. And that'll be nice. Then I can take a drink. I can eat some more bloobs. And that's about it. <laughs> I don't really have anything else planned. What I'm going to do here is kind of stagger my missile turrets around. What I'm thinking about is the attack projectile of the Colossus. Sir, more air units inbound. Oh, yeah, this part we sucks. Or they'll keep dropping troops right on top of us. Can I get away without using the thing? I would like to. If I can, I will. Yeah, I think we're okay. Because I don't want to use the drill to attack units if I can avoid it because the objective that we're doing right now with the drill is just building kills. And then we want to kill the Zelnaga door. 
and anything else is a big waste of time that takes like five or six seconds per unit. We do have to kill this guy though, he's kind of a jerk. Uh, one thing we can do is actually poke this guy over here. And we'll start burning down some of the buildings on this side. Yeah. Double teaming. Wait, this isn't double teaming. What's the opposite of double teaming when you're doing a two versus one? The single half teaming? I, <laughs> I don't know the word. I'm sure there's some term for it. Being an absolute legend? Yeah, we'll go with that one. Oh. That's not good. I don't want to lose these buildings. I really need this achievement to pop up soon. I'm not sure how many units I've actually killed sure with. I am sure about it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ghost. Ghosts are one of the best units to, like, accidentally have a dialogue with. <laughs> okay. Blast, blast, blast. Hey, there we go. Okay, the drill is now going to focus on Zelnagador for the rest of time. And we're just going to not die. We have no gas income. We're going to have no mineral income soon. So we're just going to have to live with what we have. And that's okay. Not the end of the world. I wish I had like a couple more dollars to work with. Wait, I just need to make sure that was the achievement, right? Yeah, Protoss Structures, okay. Sure I just, if that wasn't it, that's one of those ones that would take a ton of time to make a mistake on. Okay. You guys hungry? Got some blueberries. I, it's upside down. <laughs> Why not take the second base? It's just a pain in the butt, and it's not needed. Like, it opens up to being attacked from different angles, and I have prepared what I have prepared. Hmm. Yeah, this doesn't matter. Right now, what I'm keeping an eye out for is Colossus, and I don't think that they send Colossus until the guy is like, Reims Janor, I will smite you with my big walkie men, or whatever he says. I'm pretty sure we're cool until then. Well, let's, uh, let's watch this epic fight. Oh no, I dropped a blueberry. So once we do this mission, we're going to be jumping into all of the Protoss missions in one giant blitz. We're going to do all of them really, really, really quickly. And that's going to give us a huge benefit for the rest of the run because we'll have so much tech available. Well... I really hope the floor is excited for that blueberry, because that's not getting cleaned up for 24 hours. No, wait. 22 hours. Man, are we only two hours in? Oh my goodness. <laughs> it feels like it's been about four. It's going to be a long day. Hmm. Perfect. Been a great time so far? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. I don't have, I don't know exactly the times that I want to hit, but two hours for finishing the dig does seem like good pace. Uh, I guess I do know the basic times that I want to hit. I'm, I'm feeling like about eight hours for Wings of Liberty. Oh, no! Herald number three! Eight hours for Wings of Liberty seems pretty good. And then about five hours for Heart of the Swarm. Heart of the Swarm is a very fast expansion, even if some of the... Some of the achievements are not super easy, but it is just very short. And then Legacy of the Void is about eight hours as well, because it has the prologue and the epilogue. And then Nova Covert Ops is about three hours. Which, if you if you can do quick math, you'll probably be very keenly aware of the fact that that makes up 24 hours, which means that I have no leeway. <laughs> so if as soon as things go wrong, it's not good. So I'm hoping that, particularly if I could save some time on Legacy of the Void, that would be really nice. But Legacy of the Void is a harsh mistress, and I am going to be tired during it. So I guess I have to hope that I save time on Wings of Liberty when I'm not tired. Because whatever you see now, it's only going to get worse. <laughs> oh, man. 
with it. Those blueberries were kind of not as juicy as I thought they would be. They weren't bad. Thermal barrier breached. The laser drill is now cutting through the coal. Yeah, so, um, people were asking, the 10th anniversary achievements are not part of getting 100% campaign achievements on the campaign screen, and that is the goal. So we don't do that. However, we do have to do all of the mastery achievements, and we have to do them while doing all the other achievements at the same time, for time's sake, and we have to do them on Brutal. And that is why Legacy of the Void is so hard. <laughs> because the mastery achievements, unsurprisingly were designed to be done in the Master Archives, which is the part where you've already beaten the game and you uh, you get everything unlocked. And you're supposed to only have to do them. So, when we stack everything together, that's when it gets really hard. Is my nose bleeding? I sure hope not. I don't think it's bleeding. I can't feel it. <laughs> if it is, that's not my problem, it's yours. <laughs> Unless I lose too much blood, then it's my problem. Uh, there's not much to see here. This is unfortunately, I think this is one of the longest missions in the game. Like, straight up, Wings of Liberty has some very slow missions, doesn't it? And this is, uh... Is it the slowest? Yeah, I think this is actually the single longest mission in the game. I can't think of one that's longer than this. Oh, um... No. Not even in utter darkness, because I have a strategy for it to make it faster. All in is... All in is 30 minutes and 8 seconds. So, it is going to be faster. Salvation is about 30 minutes. Like, all the time defense missions tend to be about 30 minutes long. Oh, the stupid Legacy of the Void Temple one, you're right. So this is the second longest mission. Hey, does anyone, does anyone want to do that mission for me? Because I don't want to do it. I don't like that mission. <laughs> Just like, let you hop onto the stream for a bit and play some tower defense for me. Because getting to 2.2 billion Zerg takes forever. And I want to, <laughs> maybe I should go take a nap instead while someone else does it. <sighs> Just snipe the door. I wish you could nuke the door. You unfortunately can't even attack the door in any way, shape, or form, which, it's lame. It'd be funny if you could snipe the door or nuke it. I mean, is a drill really better than a nuclear frickin' bomb? According to the StarCraft devs, yeah, but like, that's, that's silly, that doesn't make any sense. I'm pretty sure that at some point in the, like, 50s, people were legitimately planning on using nuclear weapons for excavation, which means they're basically as good as drills. Like, I am sure that someone is about to pull up a Wikipedia article for us about... They probably called, like, Project Bulldozer or something, where they decided they wanted to make, like, a 700,000 foot hole with nuclear weapons. And then someone was like, you know, we can't solve everything with nukes, right? But it was the 50s, so no one agreed with that. What a weird time. Oh, you don't want the temple to collapse. You're a smart dude. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I'm just like, we gotta break the temple. <laughs> yeah, I forgot we're getting something inside. <laughs> Listen, these, these objectives don't say, keep the temple's artifact intact, it's fine. Uh, Project Plowshare? Is that seriously what it's called? Is that real? That's amazing. I love that. Oh yeah, they're gonna spend one white mana to exile that land and gain life equal to its toughness. Or power. What a great use of nuclear weapons. Uh, there's a Colossus over here. As I said before, the only units I care about are the Colossus. So, everything else is kind of meh. And I don't want to use the drill. I'm saving 41 gas for drill repairs because the drill... I have no idea how much the drill takes to repair now that I think about it. But it takes some amount of money, including gas. 
There was no reason to snipe those High Templar, however, I really like using snipe. I find it very fun. By the way, all the Colossus on this mission do not have extended Thermal Lance, so uh, for some reason Missile Turrets outrange them. In case you're ever having issue with Colossus, the Missile Turret is a really good counter to them here. I don't know if they ever get extended Thermal Lance, but... I mean, if they don't get it by the 33 minute mark, they probably don't get it, ever. Alright. We are about ready to start blasting through a bunch of missions in really quick succession, which I am looking forward to because this one is a little bit slow for my tastes. There we go. What a strategy. Oh yeah, we gotta talk to the TV. Always gotta talk to the TV. Eventually the TV won't want to talk to us anymore. Gosh, Snipe is such a fun ability. <laughs> oh, it absolutely legitimately was removed from the game, but it is truly a thing. My notes don't actually say to talk to the TV. I apologize, guys. Maybe we don't talk to it. But I will check. But it might not have anything. Oh yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Now we have to go to Whispers of Doom. Raynor. Are you guys excited to listen to Zeratul talk for about half an hour? Because <laughs> that's what we're going to do. For anyone who has I never speedrun this game before, uh, you actually play in either French or Portuguese because Zeratul talks way faster in those languages, which is fantastic. So there's actually kind of a annoying achievement here, and that is that Zeratul is not allowed to lose all of his shields. And thing he only has 100 shields, and he has 300 HP, which means that things can kind of go wrong really quickly here. So I do have to be a little bit careful. And we're going to have to wait for him to like finish his dialogue and all that stuff. Because we have to wait for this ability to unlock. There we go. Because normally you can just walk in and blast all these guys. However, you'll lose the shields. And then the second achievement on this one is that you have to escape with three stalkers. Which at first sounds like kind of an annoying thing to do. Until you realize that you don't actually have to keep the stalkers alive throughout the mission. Because at the very final segment... It respawns all of your stalkers for you, and then you just have to finish that very last bit with them instead of having to, like, keep them alive the entire time. It's very silly. Which means that it's basically a free achievement as long as you don't lose them at the very end. So I'm just gonna knock... The, I almost ran into that. And then every time that we get here, we get achievement... Or we get, uh, fully healed, which is nice. First fragment of the prophecy. Oh. Soon all if these missions aren't quick, you'll have to call me a liar and a scoundrel. Uh, I will say that I think that I'm going to be done with these before the three hour mark. So, all the missions, including In Utter Darkness, before three hours. Which seems pretty quick to me. Because In Utter Darkness is a very long mission, and we have to do the achievement to get uh, 750 bonus kills. But I have a strategy for it. So we're trying to keep Zeratul away right here so he just doesn't get hit by the mute bounce. Because that is... His HP is the most important part here. Exalted one. We are here in the service of High Templar, Karas. Yeah, in Utter Darkness is the secret cow level of StarCraft 2. It just utters everywhere. is most welcome. Let us keep moving. Yep. See, this is actually... We gotta move. And that is the... They told us it was gonna happen. The secret cow level. Oh, no, don't shoot my friend! Ah. This is bad. I keep these guys alive. I mean, we don't have to keep them alive, but it's uh, a pain to let them die. And I love them. Until later, when I'm going to get them all killed. I will fulfill. I will erase. Alright, you can hit here, you guys hit over here, just surgically remove everything. This next area is annoying. 
because there's these brood lords. So what I'm going to try to do is get this guy to come over here. Oh, he reset. That's not good. Yeah, come this way. Zeratul is very low. Oh, hello. Yeah, just come this way. And then Zeratul will stun you. There we go. I uh, almost made a terrible mistake there. I wasn't really paying attention to Zeratul's HP. I'm going to give this a save because he didn't take any damage. Now, this is not the most annoying Cloaked Protoss Dark Templar damage taken achievement in this run. Because if anyone remembers the... What is it called? Templar's Charge, I think it is. The, uh, where you return to Ire. No, Templar's Return. Yeah, where you come back to Ire uh, with Alarak and Vorazun. We're going to have to complete that segment without taking a single point of damage on Vorazun on Brutal. And Brutal is way harder than hard is on that one. So that'll be enjoyable. Oh, dude. Zeratul. Z-Daddy. Why are you taking so much damage? Uh, well, I mean, we're just going to keep throwing down the autosaves and hope nothing bad happens. Let's uh, disable you. Take that down. And then we're not taking damage. The Zeratul shields are going to recharge. And we can blink on over. My allegiance is your Now this part is a bit funky. There's going to be an Ultralisk, and he's going to be our main scary thing. Yeah. Yeah, Stalker's dealing with the mute is just fine, and Zeratul deals with the Ultralisk with the Void Prism. If you don't prison, the Ultra Life kind of sucks. That was actually really clean. I'm super happy with that. Now let's just the queen of pop open these rocks. Here. Oh. She seeks to subvert this sacred world. I Does this heal up all of my guys, or is it just heal up Zeratul? I don't actually know the answer. The but we have to get this hatchery. I find this hatchery to be easier to get from this side. Because it's nice and open. As opposed to getting it from the other side, which is not. Oh yeah, we do get a full heal. That's beautiful. Just like you. Alright, take down the Overseer, and then there's one more Overseer that has to go down, and then we can z send Zeratul in to finish everything off. There we go. I was really, uh, going into this run today, I was actually pretty concerned and upset, because I started this at noon, and I planned to wake up at 11 in the morning, have one hour, and then I just woke up and couldn't get to back to sleep at uh, 8. Which means that I've been up for four hours before starting a 24-hour stream, which I'm sure is going to catch up with me later. <laughs> However, I'm feeling really good right now, which is... I thought it was just going to be awful the entire time. take them out carefully, one at a time, or risk being overwhelmed. Yeah, we have to be very, very careful here. But I'm hoping that because I'm feeling good, I can, like, save a lot of time on Wings of Liberty, and then when things fall apart later, I'll be like, hey, it's okay. Tired Grant. Getting his butt kicked, but we, uh, we, built, we built time for that into our schedules. Let's see, there's a Muta there. There we go. That was pretty slick. Then I proceed to <laughs> send the wrong guy to attack the Muta. Alright, so this part is the Banelings, and I don't like dealing with the Banelings, so I have a strategy for them. Is this a cruel and unusual strategy so that Zeratul doesn't accidentally take damage? Yes. It is incredibly cruel. <laughs> It is not, it is not how you should treat your Protoss brethren. But you know what? We gotta do what we gotta do. It's uh, it's too scary when you're not allowed to lose their tool shields, right? Oh, ow! <laughs> so then over here we can just 
go over here. This this part's weird, and I don't actually understand it. Because there's, like, supposed to be an Ultralisk, but I cannot figure out when it unburrows and when it doesn't. And I figured out that if you just walk over here and stab things with Zeratul, then he just sits underground. I legitimately have no idea why it is. But whatever. We're getting through it. Oh, Spinecrawler body block. We're getting out Microd. Glory. So what's going to happen here is the final little event with High Templar Keras is going to start. And this is going to respawn all of my Stalkers. Now I have to have the Stalkers live for the rest of the mission. I have to finish the mission with three of them, I believe. So I'm just going to try to finish the mission with five. And that is why I can get away with that Baneling thing, even though it looks like it's a uh, achievement failing strategy. So he's going to run this way. There's going to be Brood Lords. Blast this. Take the Broods down. And then there's going to be some Nidises. Zeratul is very good against them. And then once the Nidises are dealt with, or really about now, I mean, Karas is fine, right? Like, if he loses at this point, it's his fault. So I'm going to go and get this final hatchery. I think this is probably the best hidden bonus objective in the game. I don't know if you guys would agree with this, but like, it took me forever when I was just a normal player to find it. On my, like, I don't even think I ever found it on my first playthrough. I think that I had to like, look it up on a guide. It's just in such a weird place, but then when you learn that you can just do this, it's really easy. I'm glad that everyone agrees. Whenever I say stuff like that, I'm always like a little bit concerned, right? You're like, am I an idiot? Is everyone, did everyone else find it on their first try? And they're just gonna be like, Grant, you're so stupid. <laughs> and then you get some other people like, yeah, I had that issue too. And it's just like huge relief that for another day, I skirted by being an idiot. I mean, someday. It'll be me, the only person that has ever had trouble with something. But that day is not today. So this part's very simple. I'm just going to try to make sure that the people that are taking damage only take damage to shields. Just distribute the damage around. Oh, that's a bit annoying. Oh gosh, Zeratul's a little bit stuck. My, my bro, my bro, my friend. No, oh, no! Samuel. Samuel the Stalker. He's gone. It's okay. Samuel is not part of the achievements. <laughs> Easy peasy, we got them all. <laughs> Alright. Now we're gonna make stuff. Oh, I wonder if we can talk to the TV. Let's go see. Yay. I like that. It's not a herald? No, man, Protoss aren't herald. Actually, there probably is a Protoss named Harold. Like, if you told me there was a Protoss character named Harold of the Void, I would completely... <laughs> I would believe you. Harold of the Void definitely sounds like a Protoss character. Alright, so this is the Mar mission. What we have to do is kill Mar four times, because then we can actually start doing stuff. He, uh, he respawns really, really quickly, which is quite annoying. <laughs> So what we're going to do is make a lot of stalkers because stalkers are super microbial and I want to eh, make stalkers at the beginning. Close by. And I feel pretty confident in my ability to out micro people in PvP. Uh, for those who don't know, I am back when I was like a ladder player, I absolutely was a Protoss player. I play all the factions pretty similarly at this point, however... Uh, PvP, I have done a lot of it in my life. I feel pretty good about it, particularly against an enemy that doesn't have good blink micro. So we're just going to tear them apart with stalkers. Now, the achievements on this mission are the easiest speedrun achievement of all time. We have to beat this mission in under 25 minutes. It's not going to get close. And then the other one is that we have to kill every Protoss unit on the map. And that is not that bad. We do have to be thorough, which does take time. 
Which does mean that the speedrun achievement is a little bit harder. The actual scary bit is that there is a lot of open space on this map. And in that open space, it is completely viable that an enemy prism will be hit, and then it will run over into the area that only flyers can get to, and then it will sit there forever, and you cannot kill it. Which is stupid. It's like really stupid. <laughs> It'd be cool here though. Dodge projectiles in midair. Yeah, I love Blink. What a good ability. I think every unit should have Blink. And then all of RTS should just be dodging each other's projectiles so that Marines are overpowered again because they have hit scan. <laughs> Maybe that's not a good idea. But it does feel very good. I think I'm going to get a couple immortals off of this robotics facility. I think that, like, not a lot of them, but a few seems like a good idea. Maybe three? That'll be just some punching power inside of the force, but mostly I just want a micro. Remember that the immortal in this version of the game has the hardened shield ability that reduces all damage taken to 10 if they have shields remaining. Which is Banelings with Blink. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, Can I take back everything that I said about Blink? Because <laughs> Banelings with Blink is actually the worst thing ever. In fact, I've played against it. Uh, most Fridays, we do a co-op and arcade stream on Twitch, uh, where I play with viewers and stuff. And one time, we played a free-for-all mod that uses the campaign units, and someone went for the jumpy Banelings, and the jumpy banelings cannot be targeted while they are in the air. <laughs> Which means they're basically banelings with blink. And there's nothing you can do about it. So yeah, I should have I should have known that that was the wrong call. They're very strong. <laughs> it's uh I think I lost that <laughs> I lost that game at like the four minute mark, because they just walked into my mineral line <laughs> and killed all my stuff. And then uh <laughs> someone came in with the dancey super overpowered blink DTs to kill me off after. It was not a great day. It was a tough one. And by tough, I mean probably functionally impossible. Alright, let's jump on over here and grab this bonus object. Oh, hello! Let's uh, <laughs> pretend that didn't happen. Put this guy's back. It could be of great value and just us. try to not take any whole damage on our forces. Your Only half damage. What are we surrendering to, guys? What type of fruit? The There's the DTs. Surrender to this pair. Truly fate has sent you here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, I love you guys. That's uh, everyone's pairing. I can't wait until we get to the name of Amon, but we're not going to spoil that one yet for people. You got to get to Legacy of the Void for that. Okay, go over here. Oh, they're attacking from many an angle. Did they just micro away from the DT? Not bad. Uh, okay. I have a very embarrassing question to ask. How many times have I killed... <laughs> How many times have I killed Mar? Have I only killed him once or have I killed him twice? I've actually not really been paying attention. I've just kind of been building stuff and blinking. I've killed him two times. Okay, so I need to kill him four. The reason being is that the path he takes, there's either a left or a right. And the path that he takes is always dependent on which respawn it is. So what we're going to do is he goes down this way the next two times. Then after we kill him that fourth time, we're going to go over here and kill this base. And he's going to respawn and come up this way so that we don't lose our base while we're trying to fight. That's the plan. We still have to clear through pretty quickly. So it's not perfect by any means. You can kind of bug him out sometimes on the ramp, where, yeah, if you just, like, vision is right here, basically, 
and he is stuck on the low ground of the ramp. However, he can see the guy on the high ground that he's attacking, but he can't actually see anything above that, so he can't blink. And he becomes much easier to deal with if he's not blinking around. It's a uh, very inconsistent thing, but when you can get it to work like that, it just makes the Mar fight super simple because he doesn't do anything. And that is about that, so... We're keeping the DTs at home as well for defense because they can't actually kill stuff very quick. I mean, they do a lot of damage for their supply, but they don't really add anything on the attack. And if Mar himself is not attacking, Mar is a detector, but the other Protoss waves, they don't really send any detection, so they don't matter. So after this, you can see that Mar is starting to respawn really quickly at this point. And as a result, uh, we don't have that much time in between fights to kill these bases, but we should be okay. We just got to get a real quick kill here. And then we will be ready to take him out. Yeah, if he's stuck attacking the Immortals, it's a free win. Now we're just going to out-micro the heck out of this base. Everybody down. And pop on up here. I think that coming in from the top is easier just because you can't get hit from the sides, right? And if there's no enemies behind you or on the side of you, then Blink Stalkers are super overpowered because they can really just easily avoid taking any whole damage. You always want to fight in, like, one clump with Stalkers. As you can see, we're just... Oh, that was an Immortal. I thought that was a Stalker for a moment. Took a lot of damage as a result. We are going to lose a couple guys here. That is fine. And what we're actually going to have to do now is pull back and deal with Mar. Which, unfortunately, we are low on HP, and he does have that ability to pick people up. And when they're picked up, they just take a bunch of damage. It's like 80? So he did kill a couple guys. Now we finish him off, and we're not actually going to expand, because we're going to be done with this mission fairly soon, and it would take more money to expand than we would actually get from it. So it's better to just keep attacking. Yeah, that's fine. DTs are awesome. Okay. We have to make sure everything is dead, remember. This is the perfection run. Because this mission is very, very stingy about it. However, the achievement... Oh, does it proc properly? I'm not entirely sure. I think that the achievement does not include these objectives at the end. Because they're not on the Taldarim side, they're on the Preserver side. So it should be easy to tell that we got them all, but I don't quite remember. Do I have it written in my notes? No. Probably should have written that in my notes. <laughs> hmm. Oh, that's immortal. Alright, now we're going to come this way. doing great. We have this High Templar, which can come on over here, and at this point, the Protoss does not have the ability to attack me, so I can turn these Dark Templar into an Archon and use them to help in this fight. Because the only other base that could be attacking me is this one, and they're dead. Uh, Mars on the way back. I want to get as much damage as I can here. Oh, ow, 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 ow rude. Oh, these voids are doing a lot of damage, too. Oh, I am... I'm not feeling good about this. That storm actually just hit so hard that I'm a little bit concerned about the future. Where are you going, Mar? Mar? All right. <laughs> Mara was feeling bad for me, and he gave me a handicap. Uh, sure. I mean, if he doesn't want to fight, 
I am totally fine with, can you beat StarCraft II Wings of Liberty when your opponent decides to not attack? That is my favorite challenge run. The easiest run I've ever done. <laughs> uh. So in order to attack this final base, I need probably about 120 supply. I have written down 130, but 130 is to do it really cleanly with like no issues. 120 is more than fine as long as I micro well. Which, uh, as you saw by my ability to sit inside of a Psy Storm, I'm definitely doing. So let's, uh, let's just remain supply blocked for a really long time. That is also a good way to convince people that I'm doing well. I wasn't intending on getting the quick depot ability, however, maybe it's the right thing to do if I'm getting some super supply blocked. Now nah, the other option is the auto gas, where it automatically harvests for you, and that ability is so busted. I would never give it up for anything. Alright, so we're going to wait for Mar to attack one more time, and then we're going to go in and take down this final base. This base is actually pretty sketch, because you're forced onto this really, really difficult choke point. And then they have a really nice concave, they have immortals, they have carriers, they have void rays. All the fun things in life. So we're going to do our best. Uh, this is one of the reasons that the stalker is very good is because it has the ability to blast through a lot of the, or rather it has the ability to get through the choke point without big issues. And the choke point is the death point, right? I'm gonna give this a save though, because I'm not that confident. So now we can just blink this way, kind of try to get into this corner. And then when Blink is off cooldown, we can kind of just use it to get back. Pull oh, hello. Oh, goodness. Oh, this is looking bad. Take down the immortal. Oh, no. Uh, that was a lot of losses. I mean, we took it down, but can we kill Mar? That is the question. Where's my High Templar? Oh, they're rebuilding stuff. Come on, feedback him. Try to just control the area. Oh, uh, yep, I went with a little bit too little. I was feeling overconfident. We're gonna get it. And the time limit is 25 minutes, not 20. Let's take this down. But we do have to kill every building in here for the achievements. The sentry tickle beam is going to be the end of me. Yes. <laughs> Nothing can beat the sentry. It's too powerful. In the uh, Wings of Liberty beta, the sentry did like 8 damage instead of 6. And the tickle beam was actually the destroyer of worlds beam. It was insane. It was completely fair. So it, it got turbo nerfed. Like, it straight up was like a better combat unit than the Stalker was. You just walk up to someone with a bunch of sentries and they could not fight you. Right. So these are the things I'm scared of. Stuff like that prism. Just stay blunk on them. Make sure the probes do not move out to rebuild. That is the other thing, because it is not just like destroy everything that started on the map, it is destroy everything on the map. Including the units. So probes going out are a double threat, because they're both going to build buildings everywhere, and they're just going to be units that I have to hunt down. But I don't think I allowed anyone to escape. I was trying to keep an eye on it. I have a lot of stuff right now. We're gonna have to fight Mar one final, actually. I mean, if he just wants to walk past me, I'm totally fine with him going to my base. This should be the last guy. There we go, nice. And we just take this down. That took a lot longer than I wanted it to. Uh, because the fight was bad, the cleanup period took about two minutes longer than I would have wished. 
And that meant that that 25 minute meme timing was, uh, <laughs> it was looking kind of reasonable. Let's go check the TV. Yeah, we did it. Oh, double. Or I guess it's just a portrait. There, we never have to look at a TV again. Let's go get a Hulu subscription. Echoes of the Future is another one of those very easy missions. It is pretty simple to just blast through basically everything that they have. The enemies are not that strong. We get Colossus, and they don't really get an answer to that. However, we have to get 50 kills with Zeratul. Uh, I have to fix the bot? It's running twice. Um... Its abilities were I mean, I just checked and I only have one command prompt open. So we have to get 50 kills with him, so I'm just, you Some know, killing random stuff, it's fine. Don't worry about it right now, but there's nothing to do right here. This is way... <laughs> In Utter Darkness is way scarier than this mission. Grab this and this, and Zeratul is going to go over to the side, and he is going to start farming. You ever, you ever thought that the Dark Prelate himself was going to take up a life of husbandry? He's going to farm these infested. Up to 50. And grab the money, of course, because free money. One, two, three. Get an attack upgrade because we can. And a couple guys on Vespine. So yeah, the next part of this mission is just chill out until the Frenzied attack. We're going to defend against the Frenzy, and then we're going to take out the area over here and talk to the Overmind's tentacle, which is weird, but you gotta do what you gotta do. That's how prophecies work. I don't actually remember what... Oh, is the other achievement, like, speed-based? I think it's speed-based. I think of that I just don't care. Because this one I actually feel really confident on instead of... We must I was totally, totally memeing about how confident I was on the timer last time. <laughs> I promise. I definitely was not serious. Alright, Zeratul, 50 kills. So the 50 kill Zeratul achievement does not proc until the score screen. I have that written down because that is dumb. Like, my dude, you have 50 kills. <laughs> Why don't you get credit for it? Alright, Frenzy Attack is here. So, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm... I mean, it's just 50 kills. It's not like it can go wrong. And now we have four minutes to grab this and grab that. Which should be very simple, because we have a lot of firepower already. Oh, we are one Observer less than I thought I had in firepower. And as we all know, observers are the most powerful unit that there's ever been. These warp gates appear to be functional. There was actually a mod for a Legacy of the Void called Legacy of the Tall Rim, which was a fun mod. I don't know if it ever got finished, but it uh, basically came up with a partially co-op Tall Rim faction and partially built off of custom units. And the observer in that, I believe, had an attack. It was ridiculous. You could kill people with observers. I believe that I won a really hard mission with a composition of Observer War Prism. Because the War Prism also could attack. That is really what more mods should be. Because that is beautiful. Alright, we got these little guys. They're going to help out the war effort. Now Zeratul can just jump on over here. Make sure that we have the ability to blink back. And then we're going to defend against the frenzied attack and finish this mission off because we are basically done. I sense death. Alright. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. We need a couple more of these, and then we're going to head up, and we're going to clear. So the Frenzied Attack spawns like Nidus Worms, and the Nidus Worms have a bunch of scary stuff in them. So we can't just go and win yet, because we will lose our base. 
And we're not playing Terran, so base trading isn't really our strong suit. However, we can just deal with the attack, it's fine. Uh, Probe? Come on over. And we're gonna get a pylon right between these because this gives a couple friends and the pylon gives the bonus objective. Or the obelisk gives the bonus objective. Because these ever come up again. The Protoss were known for their obel- No, no, no! Oh, Probius! Probius! He's ah. fine. Can't believe Probius almost died. How's he gonna save us in Legacy of the Void if I let that happen? That would've been very embarrassing. Wouldn't that be funny if they- Someone built, like, an RTS with the butterfly effect like that. Probius dies. Alright, we gotta be very careful here. Bring these over to help. You guys can get married. Alright, let's go win. Oh, hello. There we go. So the rest of this isn't that bad. The Zerg actually have a pretty decent base over here, but like, this is quite an army, and it's very micro bolt, so things shouldn't go too badly. Because we can just do stuff like this, and then they just never make contact with their powerful units. The Ultralisk is very out-controllable, which is really the problem with that. I know that it eventually in multiplayer got buffed to be a chibi ultralisk and look really stupid, but in this version of the game, it's still big and his brain is still very small. I'm just gonna ask this right now, how do you guys feel about the chibi ultralisk? Because I think it's stupid. Like, it just, it looks so bad. <laughs> it's like 30% smaller or whatever, and it just, it, it's basically a zergling at that point, why bother? There's, it's just a lisk, there's no ultra. Okay. I like how I... I was like, hey guys, what's your opinion? By the way, this is the correct opinion. <laughs> it's bad. I'm definitely leaving open room for discussion here, like a mature adult. <laughs> Alright, for the end of this, we're just gonna blink over here, they're gonna get blasted really hard, and then... Zeratul is gonna walk onto the objective. There we go. We don't really care about the lives of our soldiers, it's fine. All right, let's go to In Utter Darkness. Oh, it's going to be slightly over the three-hour mark. I promised that one guy. I told him that it was going to be three hours, and then I just dropped the ball. I am a fool. I don't think we can do this in 20, 19 minutes. Let's see. I don't need to talk to the TV. It's because I talked to the TV, wasn't it? If only I hadn't done my TV timing attack, then it would have been fine. Well, let's go. I do I do have a pretty spicy uh, strat here that's going to save us about 10 minutes on In Utter Darkness, which is nice, because usually this mission takes longer than human history. It would normally be the second longest mission in the run, and the fact that it's not is just the greatest thing for me. You address me. Okay, we're going to grab you and you... Uh, let's get a... Uh, I'm trying to build! <laughs> like, no, you must build your cyber core over here! Thank you, game. That's what I wanted to do. You always have my back, game. We're gonna get two Immortals, we're gonna get two Colossus, and then we're going to mass the most skillful unit that there has ever been, the Dark Templar. Oh, I pulled these guys out. That was the wrong thing to do. I just have to everything. Alright guys, come on back to your little spotty places. Because I don't remember the attack orders. We're going to get four phoenixes. Your timing is impeccable. I guess the plural of phoenix is phenoxen. Yeah, we're going to get four phenoxen. And then... Oh, why am I getting a shield upgrade? Yeah, one attack upgrade. One ground attack. 
And then double air upgrades. Colossus, Colossus. Get Admiral Arun on hotkey. Uh, for anyone who does not remember this mission, the Phoenix is, like, really important, but it's also awful. Because the way that it works is it cannot fire while moving, which is, like, the reason the Phoenix is a balanced and not bad unit. But it also can lift the hybrid for some reason, which makes it very good. So we need a decent number of them. They're just not very good anti-air superiority fighters, which, uh... Air superiority fight. Yeah, it tells you tells you what it is, and that's not necessarily its actual role. So the two achievements here are to get... They're, they're both the same achievement, right? They're just one thing, but bigger. We have to get 250 additional kills, so 2750, and then we have to get up to 3,250 kills. And honestly, it's really easy. This mission's not that bad. There's a couple, like, gotcha moments where you can really be blasted, and I'm gonna pretend that I have all those memorized. I absolutely don't, but I'm gonna pretend so that people will be like, ah, oh, we're safe with Grant. It's gonna be fine. You address me? I do have basic pattern recognition, which is truly a skill, and that means that I understand how the attacks are gonna work at the beginning here, where they go uh, middle, and then top, and then bottom, then middle, then top, then bottom. And then I don't know if they do that again. Oh no, my guys. I thought these mutas would come over here and they didn't. Well, I mean... I built extra immortals. It's fine. We're gonna have enough DTs to tank eventually. So this base, I cannot take yet. And that is the crux of my strategy, is not taking this expansion for a while. I know that sounds weird. Because it's weird. But we're not doing it. I will okay. It's, uh, a little bit of lifty. Oh, let's do a little bit of runny. Phoenixes. Phoenix, no. And then we can expand because the hybrid are going to attack, right? I hope so. Because my notes say wait for the hybrid to attack, and I'm going to take the expansion, so I hope that this is their time. Oh, and then what I need to do is I need to build some Broton cannons over here for our bros. Just to make sure that that area doesn't get blasted. Alright. He's here. He's here. My burden. And we're just wasting a ton of money on these air upgrades. They'll be useful in the future, they're just not useful right now. Shall be remade in my name. Behold, my Here they come, the big boys. Remember when these guys were like super cool? And we were like, oh the hybrid, they're so sweet. What amazing units and design. And then they just got like spammed constantly for two expansions. Actually, it's really just one expansion that it got spammed for, was Legacy of the Void, and they kind of stopped being special. It was a shame. I'm gonna get some cannons over here, just for safety's sake. And then gas is actually the thing we want from this gold base. I know it seems weird, but you don't need minerals as much as you need gas. Prepare for an assault. Oh gosh. We gotta try not to lose here. Someone say Terry? Oh, Donnie's gonna be so mad. I'm hoping the cannons can deal with that. Yeah, they'll be fine. And then there's gonna be a big old attack on the side. Yeah, this is why we got these cannons, because they're just going to keep coming for a bit. We need to... There we go. They're cleaned up. Whoa! Hi! You want to come over here? There you go. Enjoy fighting cannons. Yeah, okay, this isn't going that well. What? What? Why are you over there? Oh, no! Ugh! 
<laughs> this is bad. I think I just lost a lot of stuff by some very interesting pathing decisions by my forces. Ooh. Um. Hmm. I got Omega Lisked. Okay, you guys come on over to help. Eat more DTs because I lost the majority of my ground army besides that. Watch out for hybrid. We should be okay. Broodlord's over here. And then Mr. Mojo Jojo is going to come and help us out real soon, right? Our boy. Here's some hybrid. We have to put these down. Yeah, this is a little bit chaotic. Very careful. Try not to lose Colossus. Thank you, Mohandar. Ooh. It's an easy mission. Really just an easy, easy mission. How many? Zero kills. What about this one? Hey, I didn't actually lose anything to those. That makes me feel a little bit better. I Not much. <laughs> but, you know, take what you can get. Let's start building cannons because I need to feel a little bit optimistic. And yes, we cannon. This is a pretty good slogan right now. Also, we're making Void Race because why would we not make Void Race? Maybe if things were going better, I would opt to go for something a little bit less, you know, basic. This is like, this is the Protoss version of Karma Macchiato, right? Like, yeah, of course you're going Void Race, dude. That's what you do. We're not, we're not being special here. We're not like other Protoss. Four. All right, hit me. No, not there, hit me over here. Thank you. So the Void Ray and Wings Liberty is weird because you don't hit the channel button. Instead, it just channels up over time. The actual damage that you do on channels 1 and 2 are awful. The base damage of the Void Ray is 4. And that's with plus 2 attack. <laughs> and then I think it charges up to like 8 for charge number 2. And then I think charge number 3 is like 26. It's like a completely illogically high amount for the third charge. It's insane. It's just garbage, garbage, greatest unit in the history of mankind. So we're going to take advantage of that. Oh, boy. And by that, I mean we're just kind of waiting until we can build carriers because those are the actual good units. Void rays are fine, but carriers are amazing. And the Void Rays help against stuff like the Corruptor. Alright. Uh, doing fine on me here. That's a lot of stuff from a lot of angles. Be very careful on this side. Pull these back. Make sure that we don't get split up. The cannons don't matter. If they die, they die. They can always be replaced. The Void Rays, on the other hand, not so much. We definitely gotta be careful with them. Take down some of the Hydras, or take them up. Yeah, we don't take them down, we take them up. Alright, so now is when things are about to get a little bit spicier, and this is probably, I mean, the thing that we did on the dig with the ghost cheese is definitely pretty cheesy, but this is going to be even more cheesy than that, I think. It's a pretty good strat. One, two, three. Those guys go over there. And then, how am I doing on upgrades? I have three, three, one. So, we don't have great shield upgrades yet, but everything else is okay. Uh, we're going to kill our own cannon. Please don't think too hard about it. This is a, just a standard, proper procedure as Protoss. Then we're going to go over here. And if I did it right... Ooh, supplies is really nice. Alright, so the Nidus Worms are spawning. All of these Nidus Worms spawn 
broodlings. And broodlings do not give you kills when you kill them. However, there was one additional Nidus Worm that I'm pretty sure was added after the fact by Todd the Intern that is this one. This one spawns Zerglings forever. So we are not going to kill that Nidus Worm. That Nidus Worm is going to eternally spawn Zerglings for us that we are going to farm for kills. It's going to kill our base. I don't care about that. It is going to, I think throughout the entire rest of the mission, it's going to spawn about 500 Zerglings. Actually, no, it's closer to 700 Zerglings. So right now the cannons are just doing their thing. This base is going to die. I don't care about it. Then we're going to have three DTs farming it for the rest of time. Yeah, we have, it's a Zergling factory. We don't even really need to pay that much attention to it as long as we don't lose the DTs. Actually, that attack is probably going to kill this base. I need to keep these DTs safe. Because if the DTs die, they're pretty expensive to replace and I'm cheap. It's not like it would actually be bad. I definitely could afford it, but you know. Why afford it when you could not pay for it? I've never stolen anything, I promise. I intentionally. I did accidentally steal from the grocery store once. <laughs> I'm sorry, Fred Meyer. Alright. So we got the carriers on the way. We are almost maxed out. No, no, you got you cannot tell the guys at Fred Meyer that I stole from them. They were so upset. I still go there a lot. They don't know that I'm a hardened criminal. Doing okay. So, I honestly thought that this was going to die way earlier. The cannons are doing a fantastic job. <laughs> Usually this whole place is gutted eventually, but like, alright. I might as well be able to mine all the money here. If I just put these on hold position, what happens? Alright. I mean, as long as I don't have to pay attention to it, it seems like a very good strategy. And now we're kind of just losing ground units intentionally so that we can replace them with carriers and void rays. Zeratul's gonna die in a moment. Yeah, I could've microed you, I know. I just chose not to because I'm a bad person. I like to believe that he's being passive-aggressive there, just calling me bad. Alright, we have four more minutes. Can we get to the Fable? 3,250 kills in four minutes so that we can do it before the three-hour mark. I want to believe. I really, really want to believe. Oh, they figured it out. <laughs> 63 kills on the cannon! 76, 57, 79, 66. <laughs> uh, I actually need to, like, lose those probes so I can replace them with carriers. Is this the next set of Nidus's? Or is it? No. No, there's no way. This is working so well. This is better than I ever thought it would be over there. Because the actual way that you have to do it normally is you have two and a half Dark Templar attacking it. Because it spawns faster than two, but it doesn't spawn as fast as three. So you have to micromanage the Dark Templar so they don't accidentally kill the Nidus, but they're also killing at full capacity for the respawn rate. And it turns out that this way is way easier. Oh, okay. I think this is going to end now. So, start building our second defensive wall over here. We only need to hold this low ground until the research is done, which is three minutes from now. And then we're in the clear. This is going to be a big wave that hits us because they're finally overwhelming. However, I do have these four colossi still. Which I think means that it's just not going to be a problem. Like, 
on the infestors. Good thing they don't have Neural Parasite. Alright, get him, boys. And that kill count is going to jump above a thousand, or 2,000 very quickly. Oh, I actually have to be very careful. And then just micro the Phoenix to pick everybody up. Beautiful. We are going to have to check to make sure they're not killing too fast in a moment. Oh, they got distracted. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, they have plenty of time then. So when we are doing this, for perspective, the 30 minute mark, when our Tana spawns, is the time that you normally get 2,500 kills on this mission. Just to, so you can understand exactly how fast we are in comparison here. And then it normally takes about 10 to 12 more minutes, I believe, to get the 3,250 achievements. Carriers are arriving. Uh, you're going to be on hold position now. Yeah, that way you won't accidentally find your way over to that. Seems about right. These guys are going to start working this way around. The Nidus is going to pop guys out every once in a while who get slapped by this one on hold position. They're just doing their job. It's a dirty job, but they're good at it. 75 kills. 8192. <laughs> what legends. Over here, we're basically just fortifying the area so that they don't run past us. I don't really... I'm not afraid of being eliminated. It just seems really annoying if they run past and I have to chase them down. Ah, uh, we hit the three hour mark. Well, it's okay. I wasn't planning on having this done by the three-hour mark. I was hoping like 3.15ish would be the time, so we're still in great shape. We're already up like 15 minutes in this run. Which, as I said before, is really good because I am bound to mess up terribly as time goes on. All the mistakes have been very minor. At most. Yep, that's 2,500. And now we're going for the objectives. This is a good four minutes faster. And yeah, as you can see, the Broodlings don't actually get kills. The only kills that we were getting were these. Let's uh, pop these cannons up. I do humbly apologize to the guy that I told that we would do it by the three hour mark. I, I, I can't believe that I would lie like that. Of course, as someone who has stolen from Fred Meyer, I'm a hardened criminal, so... Lying is just part of my natural existence. This is so stupid. I can't believe that this works. Oh, hello. Ah! Everyone ended up off of my hockey. That's not good. Let's see, we got the archive, which is great. Yeah, just lift you guys. The ultimate weapon of the final war indeed. Swoop on in. Phoenix is such a great unit. It just feels good to lift things up. Makes you feel like a legend, a microman. So we're going to get the achievement for 250 kills in about now. Perfect. How, how did he die? <laughs> Wonder what happened to him. Hmm. We're going to have to replace him. It's not... Not something that I cannot afford, actually. I have a ton of money. Been maxed for a really long time. Oh, that's a lot of painlings. Oh, there goes the ground units. Time to build carriers. So one thing worth paying attention to is that when you run out of both buildings and ground units, the enemy gets really kind of scary in their uh, anti-air. They just send huge anti-air specific waves. And we don't really want to... Uh, we don't want that to happen. Not that at this point it would be an issue, I think. We're doing great. 
By the way, these Ultralisks have the Ram attack that got removed in, like, patch 1.1. Great ability. 75 damage to buildings only. I think it looks cool. I like it that they hit things with their little head. I don't remember why it got removed. I don't remember if it was too good or not good enough. Okay, that is the achievement. So we did it before Artanis even showed up. And Hierarch Artanis commanding the shield of fire. Now we have to kill all of our guys. Zap everyone. Yeah, this is the hardest part of this mission, honestly, is destroying all of our own guys. Oh good, those guys died. Perfect. Oh no, they're right here. Here. Archon merge. There you go. Now you can be seen. Let's through, and then we're going to the Morbius factor. Are you guys ready to morb? I'm ready to morb. And the Morbius factor is actually one of the easiest missions in StarCraft. Like, it is a nice little reprieve from... This mission can be a little bit scary at times because of how much it comes. Like, most of the time it works out. But sometimes you can make a couple mistakes in the early stages that just, like, make you fall apart later. Uh, Mobius is, like, the opposite, where no matter how many mistakes you make, you're fine. Alright, we have a lot of shopping to do, though. We have to get Fire Suppression Systems, Orbital Command, Science Vessel, Planetary Fortress, Automatic Gas, the Hercules, and the Energy Upgrade. Let's hit the Armory first. Here we go, and da, 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 da. Orbital Command, super overpowered. It's gonna carry us through the rest of this run. We have no money remaining. Now we head to the laboratory, and we grab Autogas, because it's overpowered, Science Vessel, because it's free repairs, Planetary Fortress, because it's a Planetary Fortress, Hercules, because I'm not making Predators in this run, sorry, and the Energy Upgrade, because it's actually obscenely broken. Easy peasy. Uh, do you guys want me to reset the bot mods? This is a uh, decent time to do it. So we go to Tyriador. No. Okay, so is it working properly? Cool. Do not worry, guys. We got the TV achievement. No problems whatsoever. Alright, so the... Objectives on this one are a speedrun achievement, as well as a... Uh, we have to find all the dudes on the map. There's, like, a bunch of mercenaries and stuff, and we gotta, we gotta become friends with them. I don't like that she calls us stupid. She's right, but I don't like it. She's kind of mean. I'm giving you control of our medevac. Alright, so we're going medevac infantry, obvious. Like, why would we not? The city it's the medevac mission. The Ready for dust off. Unfortunately, the Hercules is a little bit too slow to actually go for in this game, because it requires the fusion core, which is honestly silly. I feel like it is uh, a little too extreme of a tech requirement. In Nightmare Difficulty, it actually got buffed to requiring only the Tech Lab, and it feels like a pretty good unit at that point, but the Fusion Core, it's too far. <laughs> if I don't get a Battle Cruiser out of my Fusion Core, it's not worth it. Okay, so we're getting a tank, we're gonna grab some of these, and we're going to be a little bit cheeky. Because we are, uh, we're losers who can't win normally. That's really it. I gotta cheese everything. <laughs> it's really just a time issue, right? We don't have enough time to beat all the missions normally, so we have to be very, very gimmicky a lot of the time. And honestly, I'm all for it. Okay, we're getting these. Everything is going well. We can grab you. And we're just gonna drop this guy off at daycare and then head on home. Ready for dust off. Go. Let's grab an engineering bay, start getting some attack upgrades. Waiting on you. We're doing well. 49, 50. Ready for pickup? Time for mule. Here's your stop. Alright. Have a good day, honey. Hope you enjoy school. 
you're gonna you're gonna sit there for a while not being able to see anything but eventually when we kill the first objective then the second one will become visible and they'll be able to see it easy peasy okay we're actually gonna lift this bring it over here turn this into a barracks getting a little bit fancy here we don't need actual medics because we have medevacs but I would like to get some science vessels because I forgot to build supply depots because Dave is on vacation. And I'm not ready to go yet. I'll wait until I have my attack. And some, uh, some of these guys. Oh, what I can do is just head on over here and grab some friends. Okay, two science vessels just to repair all my floaty stuff. Grab Dustin Browder. And keep moving. So we don't actually have to do this objective for a long time. Uh, Kerrigan takes forever. My notes say... Yeah, do it with about two minutes remaining. And I will follow them. Now we can get some more pigs. I really should rebind the war pig away from P because no self-respecting RTS player reaches all the way over to P. So I just click it every time, and I know that it's wrong, but I'm also lazy, and you don't have to do it very much. <laughs> you know? It's like once or twice per mission most of the time. Alright, that guy's doing good. And believe it or not, we are about halfway done with this mission. Because as soon as we start moving out, it is going to be an absolute blitz across the map. I just need to make sure that I have all the right stuff before I do that. This might not actually be enough medevacs, is it? Oh, we're fine. Yeah, they're roomy. Alright, let's go. I'm gonna give him the stink. Oh, this guy's gonna smell so bad. Yeah, take a get bath, loser. You better get to that data core fast, Jimmy. The queen Kill the data core. And now we'll go back to medevac production. Oh no, so scary. It's one down. Keep it moving, boys. Uh oh, hi. That's actually kind of scary. You won't get the rest of them. No, don't irradiate my friends. At least she doesn't know where to find the other core. That was we better get to the next one. A little bit of a pointless loss right there. I think that there's a Nidus worm, and then what happens right here with the siege tank is we just click them on this because we have vision of the data core now. And they'll die. This better be good. So now we just have to head over to the third one after getting the bonus objective and finding of all of the people that are lost and confused. We can oblige him. Which usually is me, so it's nice seeing it be someone else. Uh there we go. Sir, you better do something about that nidus worm. I've made the mistake of not killing that nidus worm and just going on adventures so many times. That I have it built into my psyche at this point. Oh! Ready for dust I'm so sorry. <sighs> that was That was inappropriate. I can't believe I just let him perish like that. Wow. Life really is fragile, isn't it? Oh, well, let's go, uh, show this brutalist how fragile life is. Nice bonus objective, bro. He does, like, infinity anti-air damage, and his anti-ground attack is, uh, not fast. So as long as you move stuff away, it's fine. Now we're just gonna go down the highway of pain. I do like how there are, like, actual roads on this mission. I think it's really neat. It looks cool, you know? Oh, I don't like the ultras. Could use some help down here. Get out of here. Now we have a couple more mercenaries we gotta grab. We're just gonna pop over here. Finish everything off. Get in and get in. Oh, no, 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 we gotta actually take them home. I mean, we don't, not for the achievement, but I want them. And that is the achievement to get all the guys. Easy. 
I like that achievement because it's actually like worth doing, you know? Uh, a lot of the achievements that don't give you research tend to just be like a pain in the butt. It's like, go kill the Loki or something. I don't want to kill the Loki. But this one, it's like, here, double the quality of your army for free. And I'm like, all right. That's uh, now you're speaking my language. And then we just click on this. Is that Queen of Blades? I don't know. Really Make everyone smell bad. Doesn't matter. Confirmed. The, the objective is just so easy on this mission. We should evacuate immediately. Okay, guys, there is going to be a cutscene for two minutes and forty seconds. Uh, I am. Right. You guys are going to watch it. Me guys are going to go and get like a new drink and stuff. I will see you in a moment. When does it play? Right now? I don't actually know. I didn't figure that part out. Here we go. See ya. This is Kerrigan. We've neutralized the Protoss, but there's a wave of Zerg advancing on this position. We need immediate evac. Belay that order. We're moving out. What? You're not just gonna leave us! All ships, prepare to move away from Tarsonis on my mark. that evac? Damn you, Arcturus. Don't do this. It's done. Helmsman, signal the fleet and take us out of orbit. Now. Commander. Kim? What the hell's going on up there? I need to pour from my jar to my cup, and then we are ready to rumble. Let's continue the wings of liberty. So, uh, where are we? Who am I? Hive mind emulator. There we go. Let's head to the laboratory. So we need to get a hive mind emulator and shaped blast for the siege tank. Yeah, this uh, this is going to be used for a completely legitimate and non-cheesy purpose later. I promise. Alrighty, uh, shaped blast, where are you? Vehicles, yes. This is the less damage to my own units. And then we are heading on over to Agria for the fire bat. <laughs> yes, we, uh, we have finished off one of the tech trees. We have finished off all the Protoss missions. And now we're going to the evacuation. Uh, is it stupid? Yeah. It's, it's pretty silly. But that means that I have time to eat, and it's really easy. And, uh, 
It's not time gate, or rather, it's time gated, so we don't really save any time by going here earlier. Because all the things that we rushed too quickly were not an issue, right? Like, we didn't have any issues except for on that one Protoss mission where I took too long, and going to the evacuation first would not have changed that. Thank goodness you're here. I'll give you control of the main building so you all can right. help us evacuate So now we're going to go back and grab all the money. I just wanted to start this segment, and we are going to get some infantry in the early stages, but then we're going to transition into siege tanks. Because the objective on this mission, the uh, achievement, is to not lose or salvage any of the bunkers on the road. So I waited until I had the siege tank, and then I waited until I had the siege tank splash damage reduction ability, and then I'm going to surround those bunkers with siege tanks so nothing can possibly go wrong. We're turning it into a 0% failure rate strategy. These guys over here. These guys over here. Is it overkill? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's overkill. It's like the overest of kills, but it's fine. <laughs> because this is just one of those missions. There's some missions that I'm afraid that I'll have to play twice. And there's some missions that just I would give anything to not have to play yeah. twice. And this is one of those ones. It's so boring that I'm willing to go above and beyond the Call of Duty in order to make sure that I get it the first try. Okay. Let's get Mr. Siege Tankington. Don't stop for anything. Let's and then we're actually going to go mech here. We're gonna have Goliaths, we're gonna have like, I don't know, Diamondbacks. I don't I don't think we need Diamondbacks, but we're gonna have Goliaths most definitely. Following us around, because they're good against ground, they're good against air, they're actually pretty cost effective. It's it's actually quite a good mech mission, because the mission is supposed to be done early, so they have no tools to deal with it. Someone had the right okay. idea of building bunkers to defend the And then of course we have the mule, so we start out really quickly. This is Probably, I think I've said this about a couple missions so far, but I genuinely think that this is the easiest mission. Simply because we have so many tools available that you're just not intended to have. I don't even, they don't attack on this first one, do they? Oh, wow, what an ambush. Incredible. We almost died there. Oh, with Firebat DPS, it's actually not looking hot. Start rallying some workers over there, and I think they do send some guys over here, so we're just gonna do this. Roast them. Perfect. I don't think that I can afford more than two factories on this half of a base, so I'm not even gonna try. And then we just have a bunch of stuff we have to clear because we have to get the bonus objectives, and what is, the other objective is to not lose guys, right? Like, we're not allowed to lose an APC, which, I mean, yeah, that's easy. Not an issue. We're gonna use mercenaries to man the bunkers, by the way, because if we're going all in on these bunkers for the achievement, we're gonna go all in on these bunkers. No half measures. These roads have never been safer. It's a long haul to the stop port, partner. All right, we don't really have any damage here, but we can probably get this. Unless there's like a roach, then it will take until the heat death of the universe for us to grab this. Now we're fine. I'm gonna put, let's say, four siege tanks at each of these places because there's. Oh yeah, this is a fun little thing. So if you unlock any starships before you unlock starship weapons, the game just doesn't give you access to the starship weapons upgrade, which I think is fun. Like, it doesn't let you make a mistake by getting it despite having only the science vessel and the medevac. Just a cute little thing. A little nicety from Blizzard Entertainment back when they cared. In the good days. Okay. Get to the starport, move it! I think that's about it when it comes to tanks. We'll get one more, and then I'm gonna have to go big Goliath energy because the lack of lack of gas is really painful. Yes, sir. Been waiting on you. I probably should be making 
Uh, did I make hammer security? Oh, I'm just like uber supply blocked. It's fine. <laughs> armed and ready. I'm really stressing about a mean mission. Like these guys, I don't even know if the bunker's gonna get hit. Yeah, it didn't even get to attack. What an incredible, incredible show of force from the Zerg. So this mission and the next one isn't bad either because it's going to be Outbreak, which is the zombie mission. And the zombie mission is free if you have the Reaper, which we do. In addition, we will have the Goat. Ooh. Helen just got annihilated. She's fine. Whoa, 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 wait. They just targeted that down. I can't lose that. Are you serious? <laughs> they just targeted it down. All right. Cool. That was... That was a neat little thing that they decided to do. Let's, uh... You know, sometimes you learn while you're playing. Let's, uh, cut the siege tank count. Start making goliaths. I need more damage output right here. That was... This is why I take this mission seriously, because legitimately it's scary. There's a lot of places that you have to cover at the same time, and the, uh, the APC has a gun on it, which means it has the same target priority as actual combat units. However, it's not a combat unit. The gun is garbage. It's got, like, the DPS of a marine. So it just pulls people onto it. Yeah, we're gonna... We're gonna have Escort and Goliaths this time. Their anti-ground cannons do enough. Get to the starport! Move it! And honestly, we saw that two tanks was fine. Just have enough repair guys over here. Stay in the front. First restart was a ghost mission. Yeah, it was. I mean, none of the... We haven't had to do, like, an actual restart or anything, or a replay. Which, later on in the run, may become a thing. There are some missions where if you just flub an achievement, you just have to keep going. And hope that you can get it in the archives. But we haven't had anything that's more than, like, a minute of time loss. And we have 1,440 of those. <laughs> we have a lot of time. Well, we don't have that much anymore, but we started with 1,440 of them. Wow, look at that meme attack. Look at how not damaging it was. Incredible. What lack of power. Wow, so, so strong. I don't know how that got me. That is so kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I'll be honest, I was spending the time thinking about when I could take a bite of food. <laughs> and that, uh, that caused my demise. Alright, we're gonna get the bonus objectives. Then I'm thirsty. So there's a weird kind of interaction with medics and mech stuff, where the medics still can provide damage reduction for them if a bio unit takes a shot, because the medics have higher target priority from the enemy. So they will... They will look at your mech units and be like, alright, I'm gonna ignore these and fight the medics instead, and... I don't know, it's kind of... it's weird, because it means that medics still have value when you're going mech, which... probably isn't intended. But it works. Okay. So... Lots of Goliath. We got the money over here. We have Commander, last set of guys. Oh yeah, we'll just wait. Out soon. I'm gonna save. It's too scary. We don't know what could be on the roads. Does anyone agree? I've said this before on my normal streams, but like, doesn't it seem like this should be the mission where you unlock the Hellion? Because it's like a road? and you have to go up and down a really long road. Like, genuinely, the fact that the mission that you get the Hellion is gated behind this one is really weird to me. Because this is definitely the mission for it. Why is it on the zombie mission instead? I don't understand it. 
it'd be really cool to just drive around with your race car and maybe some Diamondbacks, but Mr. Blizzard doesn't want us to do that. Alright, I'm going to click these guys here. Fortunately, the APC does have, like, the ultimate push priority, so it can just decide where we go. This seems like enough workers, right? There's no way that they're going to do enough damage to out-repair that. I'm going to start laying spider mines as well. Then I'll use some money to grab. Whatever they're called. Siege tanks. Yeah. Yeah. This will give me some nice vision, too, so I don't get caught off guard. Never mind. I don't have any vision. Just like Zagara. How did this mine not fire? <laughs> well, they just, like, ran over that thing for a while, and it was just like, I'm a pacifist mine. All right. Why not? Can I block the a APC with siege tanks? I can. Uh, I don't want to because I need to finish this mission and move on. But I absolutely could. The siege tank does have that ability. It is the only unit that has that ability. So I actually have to be careful to make sure like this one is not in the center of the road because it will be able to block it. Alright. Let's get this final bonus objective. Money, money. Got it. Oh my goodness. Such power. I like that they unburrow one at a time to die. Could the medic not make it through there? How is this? Sir, this one just made it through. Just detected Zerg organisms entering the upper atmosphere. I can't give you an exact fix, but they're Ooh, heading what's... your way. What? <laughs> Where are these guys coming from? We have another convoy. Why were they the down there? Command. What did I tell them to do? Oh no. This does not bode well for the future. If yeah. I'm just like sending vultures sure. on adventures right, without yeah. noticing, that's uh. Go ahead. How did they come up from down there? That is weird. You gonna give me your Starcraft 1 pathing. <laughs> <We'll do. laughs> yeah, darn Starcraft 1. <laughs> Getting in my way. Uh. Okay, let me just look at my notes. So after this mission, we're getting maelstrom rounds, and we have to talk to the dock. Tur. Ooh. Hey, uh, to the person in chat that said 20 hours left, thank you for thinking that I'm going to have 30 minutes of uh, time. I really appreciate that, dude, because... <laughs> I got 20 hours and 30 minutes left, probably, but I really appreciate the confidence in me that I'm going to have that much leeway. Oh. Okay, waddle your way forward. Couple of these. So one of the things that's actually really nice here with the mech units is that they are really big, so they kind of naturally space themselves out around the APC. And then you don't have to think about things as you're keeping it safe because it's just surrounded on all angles by giant walkers. If you've never played mech on the evacuation, I don't really recommend it. Like, I'm definitely talking it up. I just don't recommend playing this mission. But if you're like, I don't know, someone comes, it breaks into your house, you know, like gun to your head, and he's like, you gotta pick a composition to play the evacuation on, or you're gonna get one through the head, then I, mech's okay. Definitely worth a shot. Like, you won't have bad time, besides the whole, like, crisis that you're going through. But, you know, I can't promise that part would ever be good. Upgrade complete. Let's get our armor upgrade. You can tell that I really like this mission because uh, I'm rambling into a little bit like a crazy person. And you only do that when you are just having so much fun. I'm going to eat food. My favorite thing about the food is the flavor.
We're doing good. Uh, I see how the vultures got down Sir, here. Sir, picking up seismic disturbances closing in on your position. I think it's some kind of tunneling, Zerg. It's wonderful. Just mine this area up again? Keep things nice and interesting. We're so the reason that I'm not, like, building a Another bunker here is because I don't know how it works with the achievement, and I don't know if it's okay to die or whatever, and I don't... I don't want to learn. <laughs> You know, sometimes it's just not worth understanding how things work. It's much better to just drop a bunch of landmines somewhere and move on with your life. That's words to live by, by the way. Like, when I eventually get a poster in some office for, like, inspirational quotes, it's going to be just drop landmines everywhere. Stop paying attention to everything else. That's going to have, like, a cat hanging on a tree or something. Because that's how those posters always work. This is the final escort, the thank you. Good to see. Can we manor mule them? Yeah, we're gonna save up some energy and drop some mules on our opponent. How are 42 colonists saves? You thought the APC had 10? So you are somewhat correct. The way that it works is that the first three APCs have 10, and then the next two have 12. And the number is actually incorrect because the APC counts as a colonist. So the first three have nine plus the APC, and then the next one has 11. It's a it's a weird system. But basically, there's a catch-up mechanic for in case you mess up. Particularly, I think it's this one where there's like some banelings that just randomly spawn, and they can cause some big issues, so having a catch-up is nice. You can actually manipulate it, though. Oh, excuse me. So the way that it works is the number of enemies that they send, or the attack waves that they send, are based on the number of colonists that you have alive. So what you can do on the very first route, if you kill, what is it, four of them, then you'll be down to six, and that will uh, mess up the triggering so that they think that you're still on the second wave when you're actually on the third and the third when you're actually on the fourth. Because they're like, oh, he doesn't have enough. He didn't get the entire thing. So they'll send easier waves. But it doesn't matter because this mission is a joke. Like, if this were a hard mission, that would be a cool strategy. Okay. And we're done. So, Outbreak is next. No, uh, talking to the doctor is next. This one's really important. I have to talk to her. That's the last of them. Go. Lift off now. I got a piece of mic on the rice for phone. We've I'll just go with it. Okay, talk to the doctor. Maelstrom rounds. I'll get the Maelstrom rounds first, because this is the one I talked... Or I clicked on. I think she's at the bridge, right? She might be in the science facility. I'm not sure. Uh, bridge, doctor. There we go. Now, I think the only person I have to talk to in this entire campaign now is uh, General Horace Warfield himself. At least I'm pretty sure his first name is Horace. If it's not, I just made one up for him. Turned him into an Egyptian deity. All right, here we go. This one is a just fast setup one. And if you can get set up fast, it's not a problem. It's the reason Autogas is so good on it. We're going to go straight into Reapers. So the missions that we have here, number one is, or the achievements that we have here, we have to kill 15 buildings during the night. And then we have to, we have to lift, oh. It's my Reaper button. S. Doctor, Lady Jimmy. Yeah. See why else we, keep uh, we have to... <laughs> Basically, it's kill people during the night and then beat the mission within, like, 35 minutes or something. It's some unreasonably large amount of time. It's just... We're fine. We're gonna beat this mission in, like, three nights. And the only reason it's gonna take that long is because we have to kill buildings during the night, so it takes some setup. I'm not... It might not even be three nights. It might be two nights. We'll see. 
All right, we're going to pull back. The Reapers coming in. Reapers inside of bunkers are absurd on this mission. Like, absolutely, completely, and totally unreasonably powerful. So, yeah, we're going to do that a lot. And then the Reaper, of course, it does bonus damage versus light, which every infested is light. And then it has an anti-structure attack, and our objective is to kill structures. So it just works really nicely. It's a good setup. And then what we're going to do is we are going to clear up and then down during the next day. Instead of going off to the side or something. Uh, we're not going to go to the left at all. And the reason that we're doing that is that during the next night, we are going to grab some ghosts, and then we're going to use the permanent cloaking ability. We're actually, during the day, we're going to clear out all the missile turrets so that there's no detection over there. And then we can uh, just target down the buildings with cloaked ghosts. And that means, because the way that it works is if you attack a building during the night, a million billion infested spawn. And that's why the achievement is supposed to be hard, is because you get overwhelmed by infested and then you explode. But uh, cloaked ghosts are, in fact, invisible, if their name didn't give it away. So the infested are just going to pop out and be like, What's that? I, didn't, I don't see anything. And yeah, that's, that's the strategy. It's not very complicated. Pop this right down here. Tech reactor. I keep saying tech reactor and it just isn't one. There's something in my psyche that wants me to get the tech reactor, even though it is objectively worse than the other op or the other option, which I really need, but something wants me to grab it. I'm not going to listen to that part of my mind. Uh, we're not going to die, right? Yeah, this is fine. Here, you repair this side. The first night here can be a little bit sketch. I do prefer this walling setup compared to walling at the walls, because walling at the walls, uh, I always feel like something can go wrong because you're so far away from your mineral line. So the Hellion is by far and away the second best mineral only unit that costs, or that comes out of the factory for this mission. There is only one mineral only unit that comes out of the factory. That costs, yeah, it is better. And that is, that's a high place to be. It's very impressive. Okay. 20 seconds to hold, and we're going to have to start getting our spooky sanctum. So we can defend. Not if, we gotta offend them. We gotta offend them. Oh, I'm losing it already. All right, here we go. Let's go murder stuff. I might not be able to talk, but I am able to shoot. Rise and shine, boys. Now it's our time to do some damage. I, I don't know what this is. <laughs> like, building some maze for them to get through like it's tower defense. Why am I doing this? <laughs> if they get through, I, like, lose one uh, SCV. And if I lose all my SCVs, then I get no more income to build my towers. That's how the Outbreak Tower Defense mission works. Alright, we're going to need a couple Reapers over on this left-hand side, so the ones that pop out are going to be the ones that do that. As you can see, the Reapers just absolutely clobber everything. They mow through these structures. Like that sector's clear, Jim. Better move on to the next one. They do take forever to build, though. 40 seconds. So we head on up. Swing on down. And what we're going to do right here is just take down these detectors. And start the ghosts. Yeah, I don't really care about the guys on that side. They're more than enough to deal with broodlings on their own. Those spines hurt. There, that detection is dealt with. Come over here. Finish this off. Uh... I kind of forgot to go over here. And because we delayed this mission a really long time, we have scan. So we can just kill the bonus objectives. We don't have to wait for night. 
Sir, if you kill one of those creatures, you keep going over here. Everything is going well. How about you guys head on up and finish this stuff off? And we're just gonna wait until we have a scam, and then we'll try to get out of here without dying. Take him down. All right, go home. All right, let's get out of here. So now we have to kill 15 structures with these ghosts, which should not be hard, considering all of these are unguarded and they have no detection. Easy. Yeah, maybe we should wait for daylight. Oh, loser. Tyka scaredy cat. Wow, what a what a bad joke that was. Why? How did I ever think that that was going to be funny when I said it? It could be like Tyka scared day instead of Finlay. Or, but I didn't. I didn't even try. <sighs> it's, it's the millennial. Darn millennials. Just like me. They're too lazy and entitled to even come up with a joke. Would it be worth it to use nukes? Uh, not really. Gas is... We're very gas-capped right here. And... I mean, I'm gonna make one because you mentioned it and it sounds fun. But I just want you to know that it isn't the right call. <laughs> you convinced me because... It's a nuke and they're just an enjoyable experience for the whole family. My favorite part of this achievement is that you're not supposed to do this, so it just keeps pinging you over here every time that you shoot a building. Oh, what could it be? Oh, I'm doing the bonus object- not the bonus objective, the achievement that you assigned me, game. It's like, what are you doing, sir? It does this a couple times throughout the campaign. Alright. There seems good. Oh no, he's trapped. Uh, yeah, open up. There we go. This is absolutely the wrong call. I don't care. Give me that achievement. If the nuke had gotten the achievement, it would have been worth it. That would have been good. One, two, three. Just make sure that we're well defended. You should pop up any time now. Okay. Whenever we get to situations like this, I get a little bit stressed. There we go. Here, we'll make the tower defense a little bit easier for him. And then we're just going to keep shooting because we got to finish this up. There should not be another night. We're going to be done with it very soon. Uh, we have to watch out for this, and there's a building over there. Those are the ones that could slow us down, and I don't want to be slowed down. Also, an Uber supply block. There we go. How much do the Reaper cost? Reaper's only one. You've dealt a serious How did I possibly get supply gym. blocked on this mission? <laughs> Building like the most expensive per supply unit in the game. That area didn't get busted. Weird. I thought it was supposed to. This be good. You guys come Don't on forget, over here. You have and to be back by dark. Yes, Mom. We'll be back by dark. So I know my curfew, Mom. So Come on. I don't like the doctor. Got something for me to kill. Let's yeah. Do, do you guys agree? Is the doctor the worst character in Wings of Liberty? And if not, uh, I need like a 700-page peer-reviewed like document clear, as to why. Move on to the next one. If you agree with me, you can just say yes. <laughs> That's fair, right? <laughs> Uh, Amon? I, I said Wings Liberty, right? Looks like that sector's clear, Jim. She's, uh, Amon's not in Wings Liberty. The dank voices. And the dark vo voice is cooler than Amon. Even though they're the same character, but you know what I mean. Alright. And then we're just hitting from every side. Better move on to the next one. And hopefully we just don't lose anything. The vultures do a lot of damage here. They're just better than the heli in, in every single way because they attack faster and they do insane damage against these buildings because all these buildings are light. 
The Hellion really just did not get treated with respect and or dignity in this campaign. And, you know, someone has to be a loser. Okay. Oh, Mr. Sneaky. Scan him. How many kills? Seven? Yeah, no. It's just not that impressive. You did it, Jim. They lived the entire mission. 28 minutes later. So 28 minutes is the amount of time we had for the speed achievement. So siege breakers we have to grab. Lots of folks ready to fight. What about Orlin? I don't think Orlin is a bad character. He's just not really a character. Safe haven. All right. Let's do this. So we have to side with the doctor, unfortunately. No. Uh, I have to talk to her. Hi. Bye. So, haven, launch, protect the colony. Let's go fight some Protoss. Jim, the Protoss. The bot is broken. Oh, yep. It's definitely broken. Let me relaunch it. Uh, the bot might still be broken. Uh-oh. Let me... Let me try getting my gas geysers up and then... I'm just going to leave it closed for a moment. And then I will try getting the bot working once again. I do need to start my build order, though. You over here, you over here. We're going to grab a... Tech lab. Move these over. And then we'll build a reactor on this one. We're going to get some science vessels early on for the healing. And be prepared. All right, running. After start, error cannot read properties of undefined reading parentheses, text, and parentheses. Yeah, I think the bot might be broken. I don't know what happened. I don't think the Ace is here. And he's the one that made it, so. Unfortunately. Oh, Ace is here. There he is. Uh. Well, we'll see what happens. If you can figure something out, then that would be great. So we need to get set up and ready to rumble before the first terror fleet. What we have to do is save the colonies, which is basically just defeat the terror fleets and go fast. It's really an easy mission. It is honestly not too bad because the Protoss don't come in high numbers here. They sound like a couple carriers or whatever. There's some things in the early stages that can be a little bit spooky. However, we'll see. You have an idea? I should wait five minutes. Okay. I'll, I'll uh, beat this mission, Ace, and then <laughs> I'll check to see if you have any updates for the bot. So we're just going to make some Vikings. We're going to make some vessels. Vikings are insane on this mission. I'm sure that everybody knows that that has ever played this mission. They are just an absolute unit because the terrain is perfect for them. And the Protoss sends everything that is weak to them. Also, we can just irradiate people. Then we don't have to deal with them. Correct. So we're going to hold. Oh, I was drinking. You can't do that. That's against the Geneva Convention, sir. How many of the colonist bases are we allowed to lose? All of them if we defeat the terror fleets and the Hercules flies away. So what happens is the mothership fires a laser. The laser craters everything and then sends a fleet of people to come attack us. As long as we deal with that fleet, the Hercules will fly away. And as long as the Hercules is flying away, on? we are fine 100%. Nothing can go wrong. And uh, you get a bunch of money when you do that anyway, so it's like, why would you not? There's not really a downside. Plus, we have a little trick here. And that will make things easier as well. Commander, a Protoss squadron is going after the colony ships. So this is a little peculiar a attack that is going to happen right now. They are going to send a couple of carriers over here. And they're on attack move right now. 
But then for cinematic purposes, they get put on a move command to come right over here. So what we're doing is staying away from the attack command. Now they're on the move command because they want to cinematically fight right here and we just shoot them as they're not shooting us. Cool fight. We're getting out of here. I think you can only do it on the first one, but it makes the first one completely and totally free. They just can't do anything. Okay, we grab that upgrade, and it is time to start clearing. I think we can get two of these next eye before the mothership gets to its next point. We want to just beat this mission fast. Oh, I made a bad decision! Oh, no, 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 Get up. That was a weird fight. It's fine. Let's, uh, maybe have a little bit more subhlety in our movement next time. <laughs> the Colossus hurts. Okay. Uh, someone was asking about research. I have all the Zerg research, and I am one Protoss research away. However, what I'm doing right now, it's uh, weird, but I need money, is the TLDR. So I am getting the Zerg research here. Because every research past the cap you get, you get $10,000. So I actually, I don't need... The ability to drop infantry from the skies as much as I need the ability to have $10,000. And if you want to help out, then you can go to patreon.com slash giantcrankin. I recently put up a $1 million patron tier because for some reason they let me. If you want to make a bad decision in life, let it be a bad decision on me. Keep a couple of these guys in the air. Everyone else goes on. There we go. We got the Colossus. They shouldn't have any more high ground spawning. They somehow have high ground spawn. Oh, that prison, I see. Well, it doesn't matter. We got it. Uh, careful about the Immortal. So the interesting thing about the way that Vikings lift is if you hit the button, they are instantly considered an air unit. So as soon as the button is hit, things like Immortals can no longer hit them. And that means you can actually do some pretty fancy micro, picking things up and staying safe. Which I like. Did I just walk these two Vikings all the way over here? <laughs> Not my intent. Right. Are you guys excited? Are you guys excited for what is arguably the worst boss fight in the history of RTS? The most disappointing piece of garbage? Because I am. This is my favorite part of any Wings of Liberty playthrough. Is just the amazingly, epically disappointing Purifier Mothership. It's gonna be great. But first we have to take down these guys. Come on over. Come get me. I'm just gonna put down some defensive siege breakers. I have enough to beat this mission, so... Just make sure that I don't die to something silly. Oh look! It's on move command again. I guess it does work on the other missions too. That was a close one. Thanks. You're welcome. Colonists have successfully evacuated that settlement. That's just a bunch of probes. What's that? Go ahead. Siege them up. Siege them up. Got a couple guys on repair here for safety's sake. We have you on visual. And then I think that there, yeah, I remember that there's one bad ombre. No, no. One bad dude. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, and as long as he is stinky, we are fine. Then we land here. And then we're probably going to get got by like a carrier or something, but that's fine. Archons are garbage. Lift you guys up. And then the final Nexus goes down, which allows us to attack the Purifier. Can't hold alone. We 
Okay. Purifier shields are offline, sir. Hit it now. All right. If you say so, Matthew, do you think we have the firepower to beat such a powerful boss monster? The most powerful unit in the history of StarCraft with 8,000 hit points? Truly the most stunning piece of Protoss technology that there ever has been and slash or will be? I don't think so, Matthew. They've almost reached the next base. Hurry! Cool. The Protoss <laughs> Not a fan. <laughs> I think they could have done a little bit better. Let's get those Viking mercenaries. Let's get down to business. Yeah, the Hex Angels. And now we're going to a mission that's actually fun. Supernova. I'm a big fan of this one. Uh, Supernova. We're going to be pretty quick here. I should be able to restart the bot now. All right. Hey, it's working. I got this. It just hates that mission. I understand. All right, so what we got to do here is not lose anything to the firewall, which is a joke. Super, super easy. And then the other achievement is get 75 kills with cloaked banshees. Which is actually a lot of kills, because these are Protoss. It is not a quick achievement. But I have a little bit of a strategy here to make it faster. Are we on zero hour? What happened? Did I say zero hour? Oh no. Either me or the bot said something very stupid. <laughs> I'm going to choose to believe it was me. Alright, so what I figured out, and this is truly peak tactics is that there's this base over here that has a bunch of guys and they like send a couple attack waves against you you can just walk over to it and kill it and then you get a bunch of kills and they don't attack you so you can spend a bunch of time building up and stuff without any fear it's uh they're very bad at their jobs the Talderim. you gotta be a little bit careful and not like lose stuff but i don't know for some reason, this base just isn't built at the beginning, and they spend time building it up. It's very odd to me. They seriously need to learn when to quit. Very careful with our friends. And we're going to use the mule in order to get these bonus objectives, because it's easier that way. Very slowly move in here and start taking things down. And now we're already doing really good on kills, right? We have like 30, 25, something like that in the very early stages of this mission. Oh my gosh, a sentry, what are we gonna do? Just mop up that, we almost lost it to a sentry. 10 HP. Oh, the destroyer. All right, so this area is going to become moneyified in a bit. We're going to have to be very careful when we grab that, because if we accidentally leave the guy, then we'll lose the achievement. So we're going to have to go in, get it, and then get out. And we're going to keep clearing. Now that we have the amazing power of the science vessel, normally I would want to uncloak here. However, the objective is you have to use cloaked units in order to get the kills. A very easy mistake to make, because you shouldn't normally keep these cloaked when you're fighting with a bunch of science vessels. You want to distribute the damage more evenly. And don't ask me why I'm making such a big fuss about this. I definitely didn't mess it up in practice twice. Because it's very easy to forget. I mean, if you, if you mess it up once, then, you know, it's just normal. And that's totally the number of times that I messed it up. All right, let's uh, keep attacking up here. Don't lose anyone to the fire wave. Warning, fire wave arrival. Let's keep a move. Base evacuation required. I don't know why I uncloak. That just costs 25 energy. See, this? it's just this habit. It's a good habit. I'm doing the right thing, but it's wrong. 
Finally, I know how those guys that rage at ladder go. I only lost because they're doing the wrong thing. I'm not dead yet. Alright, so right over here? There we go. Thank you. Let's get some angels. Now we're going to have to recharge our cloak batteries for a bit. Unfortunately, I did just waste a lot of energy with that uncloak thing. It's fine, though. We can mic... <sighs> Migrate over here to the base with the spontaneously exploding armories. You get some more science vessels, and then we can grab the final bonus over here, and... Oh, I didn't grab this one. The second to final bonus over here. Get him, angels. I, I could have sent them in earlier, but for some reason, I just somehow decided that those marines needed to die. One of them to a scout. That was a complete waste. So now I need to wait until an immortal sentry push. According to my notes. I, uh... Don't know when it's gonna come. This better be good. But I'm just gonna chill here. Make sure that I have nothing over here. This is the most important part. Because if I do have stuff over here and it burns to death, then I feel like a fool. Because this mission really isn't that hard. As long as you're quick about it. Also, as long as you avoid this stupid base. This place is way harder to actually fight than going around it, and the game really encourages you to do it, and I genuinely just think it's the wrong thing to do. It, I don't know why it's so well defended. Hey, Mortal Sentry Push Cloak. Get kills. I mean, that has to be the one. I don't see any other Immortal Sentry Pushes. Let's go. Uh, now I need to go up here and, like, try to farm the enemy for kills. There's a bunch of sentries and stuff over here that are free kills. We're probably at, like, 55-ish. That seems about where we are for the cloaked banshees. We don't need this money. We don't need any money. I'm just trying to micro my stuff moderately. Don't send the angels forward. Here we go. Be careful of the scouts. Ah, nice juicy mineral line. There we go. Yep, that's 75 banshee kills. And now we can just head to the end. Carefully. Ooh, I lost an angel, actually. That was pretty bad. I gotta be more careful because those are my only anti-air. I don't have any upgrades for them. And the scouts. Scouts. They're scouting me. I probably should have waited until I had a second set of guys. I'm actually kind of concerned here. I'm going to drop some mules to help repair. I think that'll be good. Oh, they, they lifted the mule! <laughs> That's awesome. What a play. Oh my goodness. That's lovely. That makes me so happy. Oh, they're trying their best, these Vikings. They're very bad. There's nothing over here to die. We're going to lose this base. Whatever. Just float. We have four out of four, and that means Supernova is done. Give me that achievement. Perfect. That was a very clean Supernova. I mean, that is a mission that can kind of fall apart. So, the fact that it went decent, very happy with. The artifact now we are going to get Orbital Strike. And we'll move on to Maw of the Void, which is the first mission that we have to do to it is the first mission that we have to do twice. So we're going to go to the bridge. Right here. Sigma Quadrant. So the objectives here. Number one is that we have to 
beat the mission without losing a unit to the Ritfield generator. And then the second one is that we have to kill all the Ritfield generators. And uh, you can do that on Brutal. However, it's way faster to not do it on Brutal. Let's go. go ahead. So we're gonna do these here, and this is the first try is going to be really, really fast. We're gonna get this done in like three minutes, and then we're gonna have to play through the mission again. Yeah, three, four minutes. All right, we'll scout around and see what we can pick up. Because we have orbital strike. And this is just to get the don't lose any guys in the rip field done. Because this is a very, if you're trying to play this mission normally, particularly on Brutal, it is a very, very lengthy mission, right? Like, this can easily take 45 minutes because it's so slow and you have to constantly go back and forth and stuff. And yeah, it's just a complete waste of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to cheese the mission. And in that cheese, we're going to do the don't lose anything in the rip field. Then we just play through the mission normally on brutal or play through the mission normally on normal, which obviously is giga fast compared to doing it on brutal. It's a big time save because the battle cruisers on a normal can kind of just walk around and blast everything. Touching you through. Okay. Just uh, put that right there. Please pay no attention. And we need 600 American dollars in order to afford what we need to afford. Well? Yes, Commander. Well? Let's see. Feels like cheating to you. Everything is cheating, but as <laughs> long as we get the objective. The, in fact, it's not cheating. Because specifically, achievements are disabled when you cheat. So if you do it and achievements don't get disabled, you're not cheating. That's just, that's just how it works. Got logic right there. Alright, uh, $600. We need Add all of them to complete. be built simultaneously. Add on complete. There we go. This sometimes seems to help. It's a little bit weird. I'm gonna throw down the save. And now we have to wait for this very, very, very long 38 seconds. And then I just have to not mess up, because it's very easy to mess up. Alright, cutscene. Cutscene. Game. You're supposed to have a cutscene right now. Where's the mother- There we go. Fault. <sighs> <laughs> Beat the mission during the cutscene. Protoss mothership is formidable, sir. And our guys are despawned during the cutscene, so they don't take damage from the root field. Okay, now we have to play it again, and we have to play it through for the other achievements. Oh, that's so cool. Stormzarn is the one that came up with the drop strategy for the ghosts. And I was the one that figured out how to uh, consistently make them disappear with the with the thing. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. Oops. It's so good. Alright, now we have to actually blitz through everything because we have to finish off all the Ripfield generators and then defeat the objective. However... The big benefit to what we have going on right now is that we can lose guys inside of the rip field if it comes up. Obviously, we don't want to. Right, like, if things live, that would be ideal. However, if something dies inside, we no longer have to reload a save or something. We can just keep going, 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 and blasting through. Now, one of the things that's going to have to happen is you guys are going to have to remind me to set the difficulty back to brutal on the next mission. Because... 
every single mission has to be beat on Brutal for that meta achievement. And it is very easy to forget, and then you just get locked into hitting restart on normal, but that doesn't change the default selection if you do it from in-game. It's, it's this whole thing. I don't want to go through it, so I'm going to need help. But not right now. I don't need help right now. <laughs> when we get to the end. Uh, this also means that we can do stuff like just dropping mules. For example, there's a bunch of money up here. And being able to just drop a mule inside of the Ripfield generator to pick up the money means that we're going to be able to blast this mission way faster than normal. And that is good, obviously. Okay, that and this. Yes, Commander. Uh, probably want about six battle cruisers before we actually start moving out on the map. We're going to move up here. We're going to clear all this stuff out, take this down, and then pull all the way back and go around this side. It's, uh, I don't know if it's the only way to do it, but this mission is just a pain, right? Like, it's really, really, really annoying because it is so long and the battle cruiser is so slow that if you get caught out of position, it is like game over so I gotta be a little bit safe it's also why I want to make sure that I'm doing it on normal instead of on brutal so I'm just waiting for the first attack and I'll probably just move out after that attack because I should have five battle cruisers by then which is kind of like the number that I said I don't remember how many I said I should have it wasn't that few but Oh, you know what? We could actually go and rescue some of the boys while we're waiting. That's not a bad idea. The Dark Templar boys. Because we can actually run around inside of the Rit Field with them. Their cloaking ability is so good. Okay, swing on over. Blast on through. Can't target in vulnerable. Okay. 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 Yes, Commander. <laughs> I guess we don't get that bonus objective yet. Sure. Upgrade complete. You hail? Hmm. What is it? All right, boys. Hit him with the Yamato cannon. Well, I guess we're running through a bunch of photon cannons. I should not have gone over there. I didn't recognize that I couldn't get that objective. We're not expanding, by the way. We're just gonna win with what we have. What is it? And we're not dropping mules on our base because we're just dropping them up here. I mean, a mule normally gets, what, 240 yes, minerals? So, when you can pick up 400, you just cash money. What's going on? Oh, now we get the bonus objective, cool. You through. All right. Acknowledged. So we're just gonna rat-tat-tat that down. I appreciate all the uh, donations once again, guys. Uh, I see them. I'm not good at responding to them because I'm focusing so heavily. But I do genuinely see them, and I do genuinely appreciate them. Oh, money. Yeah, I got some of that Vespine. You target that down. You guys are going to come over here and just target that. And then we have to go take those down. There's like no High Templar, I think. Okay, that one is gone. Now the Mothership spawns, but we don't care about her. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Oh, this is looking bad. I'm going to have to drop a mule here to repair some of my guys up, and maybe we can just get something done with these guys who seem to be going on adventures. Okay, let's just work on this. Oh, 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 oh. is he going to get there? Oh no, he's going to die the rip field. Well, that's unfortunate. He was trying his best. Where are my other DTs? I wonder if they can run past. I mean, there's nothing else to do with them, so we might as well just give it a go as we're healing up. Uh, 
this area we cannot attack anything on. That area has a cannon, but it also doesn't have that many actual units, so maybe we can just slip past here. If we just have shields on one of them. Yeah, there we go. No, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's not what I want to be doing right now. Mm. Let's uh, let's try to tactically retreat. Bad idea. Yes, Commander. Yes. Uh, she got bored. Got to There's no way that we can just get this one, right? I am intrigued. Let's put this guy behind. If we could just walk right here, take it down. That'd be beautiful. Oh my gosh, we're going to get it. Oh, this is going to make moving around so much easier. Nice carrier, bro. Incredible. So then all we have to do is come down the bottom and we'll be done. With Maw of the Void, which usually takes about six to eight weeks. It's like if anybody remembers what buying something online was like before Amazon. That's how long this mission takes. You're never sure if it's going to come. It's just... You spend a month waiting. The bad days. Alright, I think these guys can probably move out on their own. Can we sneak through here? I mean, battle cruisers are known for their stealth, right? So I think we can... Where are you? I don't know why you were so far behind. We're not playing one of those RTS where people get slower when they're damaged. Thank goodness. Alright, pull this down. Maw the Void is your least favorite mission. Me too. A lot of people really like this mission. And I think that those are all people that have not played the mission very much. Because I think it's a really good mission the first couple times. And then it is just so slow after that. But I think that's fine for a mission design, right? Oh, we have so many battle cruisers. Yeah, you guys come on over as well. So the whole sneak past thing kind of worked. Ended up with these guys. 13 HP, not a problem. And now we can finish it off. Oh, we gotta get this guy. And then we can finish this off. I can't believe how good the Dark Templar were on this mission. I don't think I've ever seen the Dark Templar actually get that much done here. But they killed, what, like four of the Ritfield generators on their own? That is phenomenal. Where's the mothership? Oh. <laughs> Hi. Uh, let's just... Walk over here. There we go. Target it down. The last fight wasn't very pretty. So we have to not make a mistake right. on the Brutal. Don't make a mistake. We gotta set it back to Brutal. And we're saving cash. Oh, I gotta... I gotta make a save here. I have to make a save here. <laughs> save. Uh, big money save. Wow. So cool. My entire slide just says make a save here over and over. And now we're going to Engine of Destruction, which is a much more fun battlecruiser mission. We're going to be going battlecruisers once again, and we got brutal. Thank you, guys. This is a really good battlecruiser mission. After we get through this first part, that's uh, a little bit painful sometimes. Try not to let Tychus die. But if we if Tychus Dicus, it happens. All right, we're going to chill right here. If you're really, really careful and you follow this line, you can heal Tychus without making him... There we go. But if you go, like, any further, then he goes. Yeah, I don't like the starting part. Okay, well, we lost a guy. It's fine. We don't need him. We just need enough to fit in a bunker. Yes, sir. Don't waste my oh, he'll take us. He'll take us. There's another perdition, I believe. There. Oh, why 
Why is that part so stressful? <laughs> oh. oh, there we go. We got it. Marines in here. Go on over. And we're going to be doing a little bit of secret agent operations right here. And it's hopefully not going to go too terribly. There is a way to kind of invalidate the second base that just involves being really sneaky. And hopefully we can make it work. I'm not convinced that I'm going to do great at it, but I can try. And all that it costs is wraiths, which the wraith is a useless unit anyway, so. I shouldn't have cloaked right there. Stay uncloaked for a bit. Because we actually need our cloak. I like that they start you with a starport, but they don't even bother to give you the tech lab, despite the fact that you need a tech lab. So for this mission, we have to kill the Loki, and we do not allow the Odin to get under one-third HP. And that second one is the more difficult of the two achievements. It can be... A little bit frustrating, because the Odin dies very quick. That is a Seeker Missile. Let's not get sneaked, or seeked. Uh, should go a long way, don't they? <laughs> okay. So if we can kill this Raven... Then this Raven is the only detector in this entire base. So now we can just, uh, kill all the stuff. I mean, okay, so kill is a little bit of an overstatement. This is a Wraith, and the Wraith is like the worst unit in the game. <laughs> but we can very slowly pelt all of the stuff as we are cloaked. And hopefully just soften it up enough that there's no issue. The Odin, when he's fully healed, can just deal with this base. We don't have to help Tychus, and he won't drop his HP low enough to be problematic. I kind of want to send a guy anyway. And I think I will, just as, like, double insurance. But what we want to do here is basically kill all of the air units and the siege tanks, because those are the ones that get the Odin's way. And then hopefully we can kill the bunkers and the SCVs, but we're probably going to run out of healing. Or rather, energy, because the healing that they have is too high. Yeah, this, uh... This is not high damage. But if we can take down some SCVs, that's good. We have 40 energy remaining. Own HP is looking great, and we have battle cruisers on the way. Perfect. Nineteen. Yeah, no. We can't get any more. Honestly, they did a really good job. I'm quite proud of them. And we're just gonna make battle cruisers because the battle cruiser is kind of like the Odin, but on my side, so I can control it. And that's Man, eh, it's a big destroyer. Does he always talk this much, sir? Yep. Once you get him in a fight, he never shuts up. Do I have anything on the ground? Well, oh, I'm supposed to expand. I forgot about that. I keep buying stuff. How do you build a base in this game? I guess we pick up this and build the base. I was wondering why I had such fast battle cruisers and not very much money, and it's because I didn't have a second mule and I didn't build a command center. Okay. This seems fine. Oh gosh, Tychus, you were not healed, sir. I sent the guy to heal you and made him do other things because I got distracted. Oh, please don't. Please don't take damage. One battle cruisers. Ah, uh, the odds are it's fine. Well, statistically, I have like an 83.2% chance that nothing bad is going to happen. What I'm going to do right here is just use these battle cruisers to get high ground vision for Tychus so that he shoots from a little bit farther away instead of walking his stupid face up a ramp and getting killed. Because that's, uh, really his favorite hobby. 
is face checking ramps. Which is basically the StarCraft version of face checking a bush in a MOBA. Perfect. Yeah, this base is dead. Without the Battlecruiser, without the medevacs to just make things annoying, it is. It's a really weak base. Uh, yeah, I think it's armory time. And we're gonna steal their base while there is still, like, half living in it. It's kinda rude. That's okay. And one of the things about this mission is that its speed is based on partially how fast the Odin can clear, so the faster we clear, less issues we have. Speed is also based on how fast you can kill the final base, so if we can kill the final base without the Odin, we can save some time. And that would be nice. Of course, Battlecruisers are a big help for that. Gosh, he's taking, like, no damage. What a legend. Oh, uh, he's... It's like if you had Goku as someone that you were babysitting. You know, like, he absolutely can destroy the entire universe. As long, he's a, as long as he doesn't trip over his own face and explode. Like, the Odin is so powerful, but also at any moment about to die. We should take the Odin to Char. I mean, have you seen <laughs> Real Scale Heart of... Er, yeah, Real Scale, um, like, Heart of the Swarm? That's it. Because Kerrigan has no a thing or two to say about the Odin, and it tends to be the, the word implosion. Maybe good will come of it. I don't think it would do very well on Char. No, I'm not a lore nerd. I don't know everything, but she definitely does have the ability to lift things up, and then they no longer exist. Yeah, that's going well. Oh no, my bunker! Oh, the little Heatly drone saved it! Thanks, little Heatly drones. I think we're going to grab the Wraiths and just keep them over there from now on, because I have a million Battlecruisers. I don't really need three Wraiths. Honestly, I'm kind of shocked that they survived this long anyway. I'm just getting attack upgrades. So the only other thing we have to do is find and destroy the Loki. One of the reasons that we are going Battlecruisers here is the Loki is, like, three battlecruisers worth of power, so as long as I bring 15 battlecruisers, then it just instantly falls over. The Loki can actually be a little bit annoying if you are playing with the Wraith, because it has the Missile Pods ability, which is normally a really bad ability, but the Wraith is also really bad, <laughs> and if they get stacked up, he'll just blast through them all, which is pretty lame. I completely forgot to send repair guys. Oh, this could be horrible. I just got so distracted by the fact that everything was going well. Remember, the Odin cannot get under 30%. Well, it can very easily, which is the actual problem. Okay, we're fine. I don't have to drop mules. There we go. Take down this, and I'm actually going to start moving on to the next base at this point. The Odin can kind of clean up the buildings. I can keep moving. Eh, we'll heal for a bit first. I don't want to be too reckless here. I don't think this mission is that hard, so... But he was dancing. Sometimes when you're Tychus, you just have to dance. It's really a beautiful thing. That's how he deals with the stresses of being in New Folsom Prison. He deals with it. And dance. Oh, really? Which is cool. Alright, this base kind of sucks. It's got like a bunch of tanks and stuff. If the Odin is over there, he gets stuck in a choke point and takes way too much damage. If battlecruisers are here, then Rebase siege tanks down. lol. Maybe the convict has his uses after all. Oh, siege breaker. Yes, Alright, finish that off. And take these down. And that'll give us time to fight the Loki Battle Cruiser. Alright. Uh, is this enough? I mean, it's a lot of Battle Cruisers. Just be split. 
How strong are you? Oh. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> I may have overestimated the power of the Loki. Uh, the Odin is definitely the superior weapon in that regard. Angel over there. Oh, we're losing a lot of battle cruisers. I kind of need to be a little bit careful with my movement. I don't actually have the armor up. Whoa! Huh. Um. Get him, Wraiths! Yeah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> 1 HP. 37 HP. No problem. Save him, Wraiths. Just repair everything up. Oh gosh. Okay, this is not good. You know what? We got a lot of repairing SCVs over here. Let's just meet up with our, our little friend. <laughs> Everybody. We have like seven combined HP throughout our entire fleet. We're going to stick with the Odin for a bit. And the raids actually saved us. This is such a dumb armory position. Why did I put it here? It's like inside of the enemy base at the time. How did I possibly think that was a good decision? It worked, but I don't think that's necessarily indicative of a good strategy, just a accidentally successful strategy. All right, there we go. We got that Zerg upgrade, the research. And we're gonna let the Odin do its own thing. And we're gonna bust through the initial defenses over here. There's like some battle cruisers and stuff. The Odin is really bad against battle cruisers, or really any air. So as long as we can finish those off, you can kind of just walk to the end. I'm detecting battle cruisers at the next base, and the Odin doesn't have strong anti-air capabilities. That was <laughs> the most half-hearted attempt at dodging a missile ever. I literally, as I was moving my stuff, I was just thinking, I mean, they're battle cruisers. If they die to a seeker missile, they deserve it. Alright, let's finish all this off. Probably not going to be able to finish it before Tychus gets his nuke. But we do need a vote in the chat, guys. Do we save the battle cruisers, or do we get them nuked? Do they deserve a reward for their service? Or are they going down with the ship? They are, they are the ship. Can you do polls on YouTube? I'm not sure. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of nukes. We only have like 10 seconds for this. Uh, actually, he's taking a long time. Oh, I guess we can't win if we got a wait for the nuke thing, because if we killed these, we would actually win right now. But people seem to really want the nuke answer, yes, and who am I to deny them? Alright, there we go. How did we... <laughs> what was over there that killed my medics? Save him. What, a phantom? How did they die? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Oh well. Oh, look at this base. It's so big and terrifying. If only we had some nuclear ordnance in order to defeat it. Whoa! There we go. People definitely want the nuke. If I lose this run by a minute, it'll be funny. It'll be worth it. Beautiful. Alrighty. Now we continue on to Media Blitz. And we are saving our money. Hello, Tychus. I'm really excited, so... I'm, like, really, really excited for what's gonna happen after the secret mission. Because I really like the routing. Alright. If 
so in this mission we have to destroy a barracks, a factory, and a starport during the sneak attack. And then we have to beat the mission in under 20 minutes, which is actually kind of a time constraint. Because you spend a lot of time on the sneak attack, and this is a long mission. However, we did some routing, so it should be okay. Excuse me. I'm gonna do my fancy pantsy little build order here. Walk over here, and we blast this guy down. And then we're gonna take down those factories. To stand in minimum range during the sneak attack of the tanks so they cannot fire back. Fire that off. Easy. And then we take this factory down and we're gonna fire a siege volley over here. Then we'll take this factory down and that will be the entire factory base gone. And they'll have no ability to produce. Heavy duty. And we're heading to the starport base next. There's probably slightly optimized versions of this build, but I'm pretty happy with the ordering overall. Like, all four factories are going to go down, and we're going to take down all four of the starports. And, of course, this barracks for the achievement. And that really means that only this guy exists, and he's kind of lame. He's just like, oh, I send Reapers, and I'm like, okay, cool. I have literally the Odin. Make room for the big so we can do this. The longest part is trying to deal with these banshees that take forever. An alert's gone out. Okay. Won't be long before they shut me out of their system. Now we're gonna blast this, and I believe that if we hit this, it pulls the Viking. Perfect. I like it. So kill this for the achievement, but we don't quite get the achievement. Then we set up the siege guns right here. It should blow up all of these guys, including the starports. Perfect. Um, I heard the sound, but I hit escape at exactly the same moment, and I didn't, like, show it to me. So I'm going to assume I got it. But that was kind of weird. I was canceling out of the siege guns. And that's left me a little bit concerned. Now we have like 10 seconds left, but we're just going to wait until we have these. Fire them off. There we go. Can we take this guy down? Yeah, we can hurt him. Perfect. Yeah, so basically most of the map is completely invalidated at this point. They don't really have much they can do. We're going to heal up the Odin. Up and running. I'm transferring control and of it to you now, sir. Let's grab some vehicle weapons. Ready. So I think that you could either destroy the Raven over here or you can destroy the siege tank. I'm not sure if you can do both, but I really like destroying the Raven because the siege tanks feel a little bit more consistent, right? Like they're just not as big of an issue if you deal with them correctly. Ravens, on the other hand, you blink once and you lose half your army. So let's not do that. And unfortunately, I do have to blink. Okay. Yeah, let's check to make sure that we have this achievement. Yeah. Barracks, Factory, Starfort, Media Bullets. Perfect. It worked. No reason to fret. So we're going to grab some siege tanks. And we're not going to do the fastest thing we can do here. We're going to do the most consistent. I don't want to go super duper fast. I just want to make sure that there's no issues. And the Odin is actually going to head straight to this factory base and just do it on his own. Because he can. Assuming that I hit people well with my ability and target fire the correct stuff. It's not just like a set and forget it type thing, but being done with this base forever at the six minute mark is pretty nice. Let's see what this baby. Okay. Me home. Can I keep it? So we're keeping clear of over here because that siege tank exists, and he hits hard. I don't think it's hard enough to like kill the Odin, but it is hard enough to force repairs, and it's just don't want to deal with it, you know. Get another factory. 
Let's see. There we go. They're attacking a tower. Strike team Bravo. So the reason this one is pretty easy is that the attack waves it sends are mostly Reapers and then landed Vikings. Yeah, and Hellions. Like, you're not going to do much to the Odin with that. I really like it. Oh, and a Seeker Missile. But that's, uh, that's par for the course. There's always a Seeker Missile in life. Try to hit the middle so we can take down as many as we can in one shot. Take those out. And done. One out of three. First transmission uploaded. Even Manx won't be able to wriggle out of this one. Now we have to go unlock the secret mission with the Marines as we bring these old friends on over to the Starport base. Just for once, Arcturus, this really is all about you. Let's uh, no, grab a couple of these to repair. And it. everybody's gonna go up here. Get your men down there. I want Rainer's head, you understand? Him and it is weird how fast you have to be on this mission, considering it generally him. feels to me like one of the big ones, but the speed achievement it followed me home. really kind of makes it different. It's not an epic macro mission anymore. It's a gotta hustle, gotta hustle. It followed me home. Let's see what this do we have SCVs coming? Got. We do have SCVs coming. So this one sends a moderate mix of ground units, which means that they're pretty weak they to the to the siege Can tanks. We're not going to have too many issues with them. Once we deal with the battle cruiser, he's like the tankiest guy of them all. And then we'll be able to go. Oh yeah, you coming to attack me? You coming to attack me? I'm right here. Thought you were going to my base, but you're just going to get destroyed. Alright, Odin, these guys. Uh, this is going to be a very depressing fight to watch with the terrible anti air across the board. Oh, wow. Valkruiser actually hits pretty hard. There we go. Now we can just set up these battle cruisers on the point. Security breach at one of the towers. This guy Strike over here Alpha, is over here, Stop. and hopefully the Odin is the one that's getting hit, for the most part. It's, it's Theoretically, if I was, like, doing really terribly on time and really stressed, what I would do Let's is send these guys got. over here, and then the Odin himself would just walk over here and solo it, but I'm being... I'm being safe. This part's easy. Right, let's get out of here. Me Go fight some basic infantry. We're almost done transmitting Meg's dirty little secret to the Dominion. It is let's this mission, I think the design on it is really, really cool. Right? Like the idea of the sneak attack and stuff is always fun. But sneak attacks when you can optimize them are so ridiculous. <laughs> You just, every single time a Blizzard campaign has one of these, what are you doing? Why are you building a barracks there? <laughs> Not your base? I mean, I guess it is. The sneak attacks are just so hyper-optimizable, though, that the opponent just becomes garbage. They don't do anything. I keep trying to get ship weapons for some reason. What's wrong with that thing? It's gone crazy. Yeah, it's gone crazy. I'm just gonna grab whatever mercenaries I can. It followed me home. Send the whole team on in. Let's see what this baby. Oh, I don't have uh, I don't have high ground vision. <laughs> Probably should have kept the scan. Now, please don't lose a Thor to vultures. That would be so embarrassing. There we go. We're fine. Nope, 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 nope. He's he's okay. He's okay. I refuse to let that happen. Let's, let's get into the fight. So Jenk blast through. Let's, and we still have six and a half minutes, which is insane, given that you start with like five minutes on the clock from the sneak attack. Not at all a problem with this route. Let's, 
we really need... Yeah, let's just try. This guy here. These guys defend. Charlie, get to that tower. Bring down those rebels. See what this baby's got. Oh, they killed him. I don't know how they did that. Oh, the Reapers. Of course. I didn't know a Viking lost to Reapers, but I'm not really surprised. Okay, so secret mission is going to be next. Gosh. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to let you die. I think that we get hit by, like, some battle cruisers, but well, I don't know, whatever. It's not like the battle cruisers can ever kill the Odin, so we're going to time it out no matter what. Even if we can't fight them. That's the last one. Let's see what the people will think of their beloved okay. emperor now. Sorry, I'm grabbing some blueberries. This is important. Uh, might not be that important. Why? Are, why is this clamshell packaging so powerful? Oh. Uh, I got it. I got it. Don't worry. Hmm. Blueberries was the hardest achievement so far. <laughs> Alrighty. Kastrinar, secret mission. Here we go. I'm so proud of what's going to happen after this. It's going to be great. Talk to me. Okay, Sounds we boom like this. I always like this mission because, like, there's always a couple people, whenever I play it, they're like, what? I didn't know this was a mission! I always find that kind of fun. Because it is a secret mission. It's honestly a pretty good mission, too. Ah! <laughs> there's a perdition turret there. <laughs> Alright, so you always use the guns on the right side because LOL fire bats are on the other side. Looks like we got a reception committee waiting for us. Adjutant, activate those gun turrets and okay. give them a surprise. How do you unlock this? In the bottom right of Media Blitz, there is a science facility. If you destroy the science facility and pick up the data disk, then you unlock the mission. Well, we got half the gun. That's why I sent those Marines to the bottom right hand side. So yeah, then we just mow our way through here. This mission has a lot of weird little quirk things that we're going to abuse in order to make life easier for us. So the first little quirk thing is there's going to be a cutscene here. And then after the cutscene, oh the Zergs start spawning from the pen. However, if you get the, the little explodey thing on before the cutscene starts, Sir, it's fine. Also, you're supposed to... I forgot that you can shoot boys. this. We While it's closing, it. for some reason you can shoot it Raiders instead of using roll. the detonation charge to open it up. To Saves What's a little bit of time. Doesn't really matter. I just got so Talk distracted in explaining that. So the objectives on this one is we have to find all the weapon pickups... And then we have to, uh, what's the other one? Don't lose anything to the Brutalisk? It might be not lose anything to the Brutalisk. I could look. I don't really want to. It's a long fight. Yeah, it is okay. Thank you. Yeah, so, uh, on my screen, I don't actually have the objectives in the bottom left like you guys do. Honestly, probably should have set it up so I did. That would, it would be helpful. Oh, the grenade is so satisfying. Like, who can watch that and not be like, oh, that's good. So, 20 zealots is always the correct answer here. The zealots very slightly win the fight. Like, I would say 95% of the time. So you can just put a little bit of poking damage on them. And then they will win with barely anything left. Oh, they might... No, this is good. We may have done a little bit too much damage to them this time. However, it's just keeping it balanced. And then the first bonus objective is right in here. We've got to blow this place sky high. No way we can just leave it standing. All right. Well, I'm picking up a strong. The links work well too. Yeah, anything except for the ultralisks is fine. However, zealots are slightly more consistent than the zerglings. Because the Zerglings, depending on how they path, can get a little bit snowbally, or they can get a little bit more wrecked. The Zealots are just really, really reliable. 
All right, the garage is not easy. There's like a lot of stuff in here and it all hits really hard. So I'm going to try my best. Sounds like a plan. I gotta pick up the plasma. Now, this is the Ares Warbot. Usually, you're supposed to use it to help through the garage, but because we want to kill the Brutalisk without losing a unit, we're going to save the Ares Warbot for that, and instead just punch through this area slow and steady. And hopefully without losing anything. Oh, careful. That siege tank over there was not looking at me with nice eyes. He definitely was looking for some trouble. So there is an HP restore thing over here that I left, just in case. Uh, it restores energy as well. Probably don't need it. Ooh, that wasn't good. Didn't mean to pull everything that I pulled there. Gotta use those plasma weapons. It's always worth it to just kind of spam out the weapons because you can't hold that many of them. And there's if you're doing the achievement to get all of them, pick them all up, then there's quite a few. As for blowing up these barrels, you absolutely don't have to do it, but I do like it. It makes me feel cool. Even if they don't really do that much damage. And the area is really small. But <laughs> that's okay. Now, there's a Thor up here, and what the plan is, is I'm going to save. You can count on me. Then, fire the plasma, run. Sounds like a plan. Fire the plasma. We got it. There's not really a reliable way to kill the, Like, that's probably the most reliable way to do it. You can count on me. But, I mean, if the Thor hits you, like, in a bad way, you just lose. I'm gonna grab three marines and three yes, medics. Sir. If I was uh, if I was messing around, I'd grab the fire bats right Sell here. You gonna give me orders? We will go look at those guys though. What's up? What's up? There's a murloc marine over here, just doing his own little thing. This better be good. What's the bye, Murky. Time to man up. Everyone say bye to Murky. Say me. thanks for him showing up at the 24-hour stream. Count He's a good me. guy. Sounds like a plan. I'm kind of running low on grenades, which is probably fine. We have a lot of stuff. Go sit hard, try not to let them blast my marines. They three shot them. And we're going to open up this area. Hit that. Then we're going to fire another grenade off at What's these up? guys because I don't like the way that they they hurt me. <laughs> Perfect. Now Larry is going to have to learn how to sprint. Oh, no. Larry. Larry. Ooh, that was scary for Larry. Things got hairy. Oh. <laughs> Saved by a fairy. Okay, guys, what are we going to grab for the Ares Warbot to beat this terrifying garage? We're going to grab anti-armor missiles. That bot won't last long. Let's move. So the reason that we're doing this with the bot is A, because the bot just wins by A moving, which is fantastic, but What's also the because the way that healing Can aggro works in this game means that as soon as the medics start healing someone that's taking damage, they uh, are going to pull the Brutalist to them. The Brutalist has the ability to push through any unit, which is really obnoxious, and it means that it will just charge forward. You can't tell who it's targeting, and there's really not much you can do. It's inconsistent and frustrating. So instead, we just have this guy do it. And then because I opened this door, we can just send him this way to tank for us, so we don't have to deal with anything else. Now, I'm going to save right now. Just to make sure that so I don't right that mess up the must be nearby. bonus. The, the not plan? the bonus, the the objective well, to get all the weapon course. pickups. If I mess that up, it would be really bad. We're going to heal up. Break it down. We're going to take down the reactor. Like and here we go. Sounds like a plan. Always a little bit of an awkward silence What's there. Up? The hybrid is free. 
and the hybrid is also really lame. Unfortunately. Really cool mission until you learn the magic of medics. Uh, I think I have a basic idea of where all the pickups are. I'm sure it'll work out. I think I remember the places that it's easy to miss them. And that's the most important part. I don't know, I didn't practice this mission much. It's really easy. Okay, blast them down. So, there's just Zerg at this point. We're not being chased just yet. There we go. Make sure to grab the grenade over here. And then there's going to be a bunch of Zerglings over here. Don't try and fight it. Just get out of there. Take them down, and now I have saved a bunch of my cooldowns, which means I can blast through the rocks really easily. Hybrid is going to fight the Ares Warbot for, like, ever. I didn't lose anything here. Yeah. This is why you go big medic energy. Oh, Lisa. Lisa. Lisa's fine. Oh. Alright. Gotta get this Protoss Relic. I have six Plasma Shots left, which is good. He just dealt with that Warbot, which means we are so far ahead of him, it's not even funny. I believe that there is a Chrono Rift device or something up here. Yeah. So we can just drop that on the way that he's coming. And then we can be a little bit slow right here, just make sure the Zealots don't surround us or something. Because he is... Oh, uh, he's right there. <laughs> uh, probably gotta move on. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Oh, no. If only he was... Combustible. Sir, I lost the hybrid signal. This should be the last one. No. Wait, is there a Chrono Rift device later? Oh, no. I think there's one more Chrono Rift device. Oh, gosh. I really hope I didn't flub this. Uh oh. We're like really close to the. E oh, hello. Oh, sir, I'm busy. Yeah, okay, Chrono Rift device. This should be the last one. There we go, we got it. If you've never seen this before. Well, he's taking a really long time. If you've never seen this before, though, uh, two medics can outheal him for basically ever. He just sits there attacking. <laughs> I don't know why I destined these two ladies to die, but I did. <laughs> that was an easy one. Now we have to hit up the lab. Now we're going to be doing something a little bit fancy. So, hit up the lab. We should get a bunch of money. Thank you, thank you. We're gonna head to the armory. Save. Money save. Now, there is an achievement to max out every single one of these bars. However, the all of these cost about $5 million, and you only get about $2.5 million. So what we're gonna do is we are going to buy that out, get the achievement, go to the cantina, buy out all the mercenaries, get the achievement for that, and then reload the save because it's not intended to be done in one run, and we only have one run. And we're gonna do this for the barrack. What? Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no. Yeah, we're good. Okay. <laughs> then we're going to get all of the infantry ones, as well as the Dominion Tech. We're good. Dominion Tech Master, please. Perfect. Then we're going back to the money save once again. That was spooky. <laughs> and then we grab all of the vehicle tech, and 
I think that sometimes when people are doing runs like this, it can be very difficult to understand exactly how much the person prepared and practiced for it, right? Like, it's, uh, you know, months of preparation and strategizing go into things like this. So I'm just going to show you exactly how perfect my planning was for this. Watch the credits. Literally perfect. Literally perfect. That is routing. And then we're going to go back to this save on Maw of the Void. And then we're going to head to Char. Reason that we are doing this is because... There is an achievement to beat the campaign in less than eight hours, and I am 99% sure that I would be fine. However, there is that 1% chance that things go wrong, so I'm just going to load a save and not do the quest lines that we just did. Now, what we do... Oh, we got to hit the lab. Make sure we have the money. Perfect. And then... So we have a lot less money to work with than we did before because we didn't go to Engine Destru Destruction, we didn't go to Media Blitz, we didn't go to the Secret Mission. But we can get Jackson's Revenge. We can head to the... Oop. Head to the Armory. Grab Bunker Range. Uh, I want the Medivac AI upgrade for All In. I want the Defensive Matrix upgrade. And then I want both of the Viking upgrades. Then we go to Char and set it to Brutal. Everything is Making use of every dollar we got. I'm really proud of the routing, okay? I'm like really proud of it. <laughs> I skimped every penny I could to make sure it all worked out. Right, this mission's easy. Not easy enough to uh, not do anything for the first ten seconds, though. You gonna give me Commander, make sure that all of these are loaded. Uh, we're gonna get some stuff. So originally, my planning on this mission was that I was going to use the drop pod strat in order to nuke the final objectives. However, I've gotten good enough at this game that uh, we have to wait for all the drop pods to land in order to get an achievement. And I can have the entire map cleared by the time the final drop pod lands. So I'm just going to do that. Feels kind of weird, but it is what it is. Eh, we'll get tech labs, though. Because Marauder Ghost Medic is actually insane here. It's really powerful. And we're going to make good use of it. So the first thing is all drop pods have to be rescued. That is the first achievement that we're doing. And then the other one is that all the bio launchers have to be destroyed, which are just these random buildings that are around the map. They're not, like, important or anything. They don't do anything. But they do drop 100 gas when they die, which actually is something. So they're always worth killing anyway. I'm assuming command here. You men fall in with us, and we'll see to find it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh oh. I saw that the way you killed him. That's fine. <laughs> Just splash it off of him. Bring them all to my house. I was a little bit afraid that I was going to lose that guy, but they're working together to keep him safe. All right, in this early stage, I'm just kind of running around grabbing all the money on the map. There's a lot of it. And it's very good to have. Okay. Mm, finishing off my coffee. I'm going to have to grab some more soon. Fortunately, there is a cutscene after this. And it's a pretty good one. So... You guys will be watching that for a minute or two while I Sir, I've detected a drop grab more. Your vicinity. Okay, the drop pod is coming down. We do have to grab the drop pods pretty quickly because the Zerg will overwhelm them, and if any of them die, then uh, we restart. The entire run from minute zero. Alright, we grab these guys. Then there's some cash over here. Easy. Now 
now we're gonna start loading up these bunkers. Actually, I don't like these bunkers. I'm gonna... Bunk here. Bunk there. Get a couple repair guys. Yeah, these seem like the type of bunkers we want. Okay, how we doing? How we doing? We're doing great. Can you get past? Oh, yeah. That's what we're looking for. We could put Marines in. Because they are gigabuffed. Come over here. We got a lot of repair guys. And let's just start heading to the next point. I'm actually going to keep the ghosts uncloaked here. Which sounds weird. However, the ghost is very bulky. Oh gosh, I'm going to be right on top of the banelings. Sending coordinates to a nearby drop pod. That was not good. <laughs> it wasn't the end of the world. Um, I wanted to be over here so I could like rescue them really quickly and look super slick. Instead, I just let drop pods drop banelings on top of me. Well, how slick, how cool, Grant. You're amazing. What a gamer. <laughs> I don't advise that strategy. Yeah, like, ghosts are super tanky. They have 100 HP. Which is the same as the Marauder without the Kinetic Foam upgrade. See, I know the name of the upgrade now. I don't just call it Kinetic Form all the time because I can't read. Enough people corrected me. Uh, this mission is really interesting because... When I was a new player, I thought it was, like, one of the hardest missions in StarCraft. Uh, particularly Wings of Liberty when it came out. And nowadays, I'm like... I, it's really, really simple. I think this is the biggest shift in difficulty, in my opinion. Because it used to be so spooky. Oh my goodness, look at all those Bane links. Never mind. Why am I building a depot? Oh, that is a... <laughs> that is a great question. Why am I building depots on the mission that gives you 200 supply for free? <laughs> I'll be honest, going a little bit on autopilot. And that's not a bad thing, right? Like, you gotta conserve your mental bandwidth. Sir, another drop pod is coming down near your location. Right, we're gonna head over here. Where are the defenses? Alright. Is that it? <laughs> so we hit the 100 supply, but we cannot win this mission for, like, uh, quite a while longer because we have to wait for all the drop pods to drop and then rescue them, unfortunately. But what we can do is put Maurice up there. Wait, did the... Did the bio launcher this achievement have a planetary fortress as its icon? Why? Sure a lot, what a weird thing. Maybe the fear you smell is your All right, Maurice. So Maurice the Marauder is a hero. <laughs> he can kill both of these Nidus's up here on his own, and no one will be able to see him do it. What a legend! Right, we're gonna put this tank over here. Tank over here. Nothing to it. Oh. Gotta take him out of the control group first. The AI, if you attack like certain things. Oh no, it doesn't send it because it doesn't register as being attacked by like an air unit or something, so it doesn't think it needs vision. Even though there's an overseer just like right here, it doesn't understand what is going on fundamentally. And I find that kind of charming. We just snipe stuff. Oh, you know what's free? First nice. They're not free. You know what's, uh, whatever. Not gonna try to justify my mistakes. Gonna own them. Alright, I guess we should go over and rescue Maurice now. <laughs> we got stuff to do. Because at this point, there's really no reason to be... Wait, do they send, like, a really big scary attack at some point? Yeah, let's go wait until a really big scary attack or something. And then we can go. I don't... 
I don't know if this attack exists. I might just be making it up. I feel like there's some point where a lot of brood lords come, though. I always feel- I don't know if it looks impressive when you spam snipe stuff like that, but I always feel like it looks impressive and it is the least skill intensive thing ever. You just hold the Q button and wave the mouse around. Is it this guy? These guys like always die, right? Keep them safe. Okay. Man, guys, we're getting close. Are you excited for it? Are you excited for the Lost Vikings? Because we're going to have to do it. Hi. And by we, I mean me. I'm sure that a lot of people are going to pick that time to tune out, and I would not blame you. <gasps> That's the big attack. Maybe. Huge. By the way, if uh, what just happened right there is not a good indicator, we absolutely are doing the air version of All In. We have a uh, we have a special tool that makes us very strong against the air units. All right, let's go. Time to blast our way through. It's funny because my original plan on this mission was dumb stuff like, oh, I'm gonna drop a bunch of ghosts over here and then nuke the spore crawlers and then drop ghosts up here and then and now I'm just like, I'm gonna aim with a bunch of bio units. I got lazy. I think that's fine. I always like how the gas palettes for some reason look different here. There's like two different types. I have no idea if that was intentional or I don't know what it could be because it was more it would be more work than just placing two gas pellets that are the same, right? Sir, I read multiple drop pods entering the atmosphere. I don't think you'll have enough time to rescue them all. Not with yeah. this much Zerg in the area. Damn it. We'll rescue as many as we can. We're fine. But I don't think everyone's going to live through this. Why does no one believe in me? Guys, we're going to get them both. It's fine. They're just not going to live very far. <laughs> They're instantly going to die, but we're going to rescue them. Perfect. We got him, and we got him. That's all I promised. So we do have to wait for that final drop pod wave before we can actually finish the mission, unfortunately, even though we literally are at the final objective. Maurice with his nine kills. Oh, whoa. Um... Uh, angels, save me. Not really equipped to deal with broodlords right now, but I did get all the viking upgrades. We're fine. Alright, now we just have to awkwardly sit here. Uh <laughs> Oh, I can eat food. This is really dry. It's been out for a bit. Oh, this was a bad decision. Oh, everything was a bad decision. I'm so thirsty. Another wave of drop pods coming in, sir. Thank you, Matt. It would be too dangerous to try and rescue them all. One. Two. Just wait for them to drop, so and then we can do this. Right. Oh. Commander, the last of the Dominion drop pods have reached the surface of Char. There we go. We got them all. Looks like we're on our own, boys. Sounds like I don't know if we're going to be able to do it, guys. Need to get some tea. With any luck, Coffee is too thick right now. Okay. I didn't just skip the cutscene, did I? Because I really need that cutscene. Okay, have fun, guys. Two minutes, 30 seconds. We're cut off. 
that order. Stand your ground. needed some help. We came as fast as we could. Ain't no time to be lying down on the job, General. You magnificent son of a bitch. <laughs> You're the last man I expected to see. Boys, I hate to interrupt, but uh, the natives are getting restless. for the rescue, but I hope it ain't just the two of you. General, you know I've always got a card to play. You might be a damn pirate, Rayner, but whatever happens, you've saved my boys today. And I won't forget that. All in a day's work, General. And we're back. All right. We are going to Belly of the Beast. We've secured our landing zone. We gotta sabotage the tunnels, Jimmy. Deep scan analysis. Okay, I got throw coat. Feeling better. Oh, no, I have to talk to Warfield. Oh, I got distracted. Um, We have to abort the mission and talk to him. Thank you. I just, I, I got overexcited about the fact that I had tea. Yeah, we did it. Good achievement. We've secured our... you know, I'm pretty sure you can do it after the next mission, but like, I don't want to learn. <laughs> it, it's not worth the risk there. Okay. Time to so this mission is the epitome like of slow is smooth, smooth Raiders. is fast, right? Let's these boys to if you just wait every single group of people for your shredder grenade General or your Raiders. penetrator so round, then it is completely fine. But if you try to go too fast, to then things fall apart. You can count on so the objectives here are to right make sure that we yeah. don't lose... None of our guys can get knocked ready. unconscious, Down. and... Oh, yeah, Raiders the... Roll. We have to get 50 kills with a single penetrator round, which is easy. Uh, it's probably going to take a couple tries, but it's not hard to do. It's just inconsistent. Okay, so right up here is the first place that you can get knocked out. So I'm going to just give it a save, pull people back. That was a good grenade. Yeah, we just kind of alternate between using Tychus's grenade and Jimmy's Jim Jim. And then I guess we we make Betty do a lot of the work too. You can count on me. You don't know if we'll be using ghosts today? Oh, we're gonna be using ghosts today. Swan, what say you get that turret of your We have uh three more missions after this for Wings of Liberty and Two of them, Raiders no, we have four more missions, and two of them involve a lot of ghosts. Sounds like a plan. If you're a ghost fan, this is your run. Like, it's yeah, just the best unit, it. and I'm not here to, to coin flip on whether something is good or not. Knock our way through here. What's up? Oh, Sounds don't like get hit by those. Like there we go. And try to fire a little grenade Any guy over there. What's the Give him some targets and take down what we can. Raiders, 
Stepman, you gotta heal Betty. Stepman, do you hate Betty? Stepman. He is a man full of malice for Betty. What a jerk. Who's worse, Stepman or the doctor? At least they did something funny with Stepman after they forgot he existed for a really long time. You know, they turned him into, like, the Terrazine guy on Belshir. They didn't do anything with the doctor. Alright, so those guys were actually just gonna leave there. <laughs> we're rescuing them because we need them later, but, uh... I don't want them to come with me. I don't want to babysit. Ah! Oh my gosh, an ambush. I can't believe it. We are so fortunate that Flaming Betty was there to save us. Otherwise, we would have been overwhelmed by their flank. Sounds like a plan. Time to man up. No time for What's the plan? Raiders roll. Okay, here's a secret, guys. I actually, like I may have known that attack was coming. I know. A little peek behind the veil, as they say. What's up? But What's the plan? I did. I had an inkling. All right, we're gonna sit here for like ten seconds. Just down. get these abilities back. Because this me. next part is uh, really easy Ray, or instant death, down. depending on how you want to play it. What's in it for me? What's the plan? Well. Oh, hi. Alright, so now we have to defend the charges. Break it down. Sounds like a plan. Oh, Raiders wait. <laughs> I thought I stepped on it. We're just waiting around. <laughs> Three hours later. Alright. So, the way that this part works is there's little attack waves of the little dudes, and then there's also attack waves from Nidus's. Both Tychus and Jim have the ability to one-shot the Nidus with their ability. So, the best way to do it is just hold one of their abilities up at all points in time. You don't really need the abilities for anything else. Just auto-attack the rest of the guys down. And it's just really quickly figuring out where the Nidus is. And taking it out before it does anything. What's the plan? Because then you get these epic attack waves of three roaches. Time to man up. I bet the next one's up. There. Roll. Now I have no idea. I don't know if there's a set pattern here or if it's random between the three points. Doesn't really matter, I guess. What's up? I think they spawn like a bunch of broodlings or something. I'm not entirely sure what the Nidus's do. Because, once again, it's the, like, if you don't have to know what they do, because you can kill them, then why bother filling your head with that info? Why do Nidus's have eyes? Because when they pop out, they can be like, Rawr! and then they get to see everything to make sure they're in the right place. Also, they might have little, like, flashlights while they're burrowing, so they can use, like, Google Maps. That makes sense to me. Oh, that's just I don't know why they would need a flashlight if they were using Google Maps, because phones have backlights. This isn't the days of the, the Game Boy Let's Color, where got. you needed a light attachment on top of it. I'm not sure why my head went there. Break it down. Sell me. All right. Oh, Lordy. This must be so this is the section where we have to get 50 kills with Jim's thing. Well, I guess we could do it anywhere. But this is the section where we can consistently have a, a setup to do it. So there is like a small 10% chance that we could just get it done right here. I have... Nah, didn't get it. It's fine. This isn't the place that I wanted to, but it's just like the, hey, if it happens, it happens place. Join. The area that is right here is where we're going to do it. Now, the way that I want to do this, first of all, we have to save. We're probably going to have to reload and give it a couple attempts. There's a million infested over... Yeah, this. And then there's this thin route. There's a couple infested infantry in the front. We're going to target them down. And then we're going to kind of just sit here. Yeah, first try! Not bad. It's all about killing those 
infested or the ranged infested Terran first, because then they can't gum things up, and all the melee guys will keep running towards you. Oh yeah, easy. Man, everything just feels like it's going great. We had no major mistakes throughout all of Wings of Liberty. You can count on me. All in is next. I shouldn't say this yet. <laughs> Once we get through all in, it can be the easy mode, right? Actually, all in's pretty simple. I don't think it's a very hard mission. Uh, there's like banelings here, right? Yeah. Why don't you go make out with Betty? Don't let him get close. I got it. I don't like how Stepman tells you to not let them splash you when you don't let them splash you. Yeah, I agree with Tychus here. Like, I, d I didn't get splashed. Betty did. Why does he care so much about Betty? Ow, <laughs> that hurt. Ooh, double kill. Alright, there's an aberration back there. We're going to have to take that out, and then we're going to take all these guys into the death tunnel pit that I really dislike. Get him, firebats. How do you have 12 kills already? What a legend. He's a sergeant. You're, like, better than Stepman. What's up? By the way, guys, uh, we don't really have polls going, unfortunately, because this is, like, the first time I've done YouTube instead of Twitch. However, there is always a little bit of a guessing game on this mission for whether Tychus or Jim gets more kills. And uh, you can make the bet for yourself. It's always very close between them. They're usually in the 400s each. So, uh... Who do you think? Is it going to be Jim? Is it going to be Tychus? Who is going to be the bigger Zerg blaster? I'm seeing a lot of Jims. I guess that makes sense. We did uh, get the 50 kills, and we didn't have to reset, so that is a pretty safe bet, I think. The people that are saying that, pretty smart. Because usually it is even, but Tychus doesn't have a 50 kills achievement. Um, we are being flanked, right? As ba Betty exploded. Okay, just move on forward a little bit. The best way to do this area is just slowly and steadily. Uh, there's gonna be like 500 tons of Zerg on us in a moment. Oh, just 100 tons, actually. We're fine. Oh, I just threw everything I had and that guy didn't die. Now we're fine. There's an aberration behind us that we need to deal with. Shouldn't be too bad. We have a little re reprieve from the infested. Now, one of the things that can go really wrong here that makes things tough is the medic sucks. <laughs> so Stepman cannot heal a target that the medic is healing. And Stepman's heal is something like four times as good. So sometimes the medic will, like, snap onto an injured target and then start healing it, and then that target will die because it takes too much damage because Stepman can't help. And I'm going to try my best to not let that happen. Just deactivate the auto-healing. I mean, you could, but it's. I think it's easier to just micro it properly. I'm not, like, super tired or anything. We're only five hours in. What's up? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing yeah, it. chill here. This part's easy. Oh, he says this is the auto saves. Betty hero roast them good. Damn straight. Yeah, Betty. I want you at my barbecues, Betty. What's the plan? Oh, a What's up? Okay. Sounds like a plan. I was like 80% sure there was going to be two of those there. I wasn't. In the long delay, I was just like, wait, am I stupid? Am I just not blowing this up for some reason? No. Okay. I remembered. This is my favorite part where we get to play beach volleyball with the investors. Right 
This is the same as last time, where as long as you destroy the, the little Nidusy dudes, there's no problems at all. Well, except the Ultra. Earthquake. That's no quake. It's Ultralisks. Sorry, the Ultras. Uh, they have been pluraled. But if you just sit behind Betty, it's fine. It's interesting because Betty is not a structure, which means What's that up? the Ultras don't get to use their Ram attack. They would do right way more damage. Roll. We good? Yeah, we good. Easy peasy. Talk to me. And once Talk again, we're going to move without these guys for now, but we, we do need them as backup me. later. No, I'm picking up something, so we're just going to have them Station. come on with us. This is the final boss fight. This is by far and away the easiest part to accidentally lose some. Not this part, but the boss fight itself has some stuns. And the stun is very easy to lose someone on because if she pops up, stuns, and then just attack, attack, then Tychus falls over and he's feeling a bit woozly for the day. I'm going to hope that it doesn't happen. Yeah, there's no lore for the big queen here, but I like to believe that it's Zagara. I know that it doesn't quite fit, like, established canon, but I think it would be more interesting if it were Zagara than, like, she didn't die. Because she can be reconstituted, right? She gets reconstituted when she fights against Kerrigan. So it'd be neat if it was her. Look the last one through. Okay. Why not knock tool? Zagara. Okay, we're gonna stim here, and then this is a trick that Jay Barino taught me. If you just put a flame turret right here, then even if he manages to break through the rocks, he'll go to this next set of rocks. And if he gets it, oh, he's not even gonna get it. Um, there we go. Uh, if he gets it, he'll just attack Flaming Betty instead of walking up and killing them. So we're going to set my hotkeys up. We have this force here, this force here. This is a pretty fun boss fight. So the heroes are going to engage the queen, while the other dudes are going to destroy a bunch of eggs on this side so that she can't hatch them. Betty's going to tank. What's the plan? The Break it down. Very careful. Oh, Break she is control. just done. Interesting. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm doing it. Oh, this is really bad. What's up? Why are you not hatching more eggs, my friend? There's there's so many more of them for you. There we go. Goodbye. Uh, the seismic charge is at half What's HP because things got really weird. Blast. Or could you attack Betty, please? Man, she is very disobedient today. I am not a fan of her. <laughs> I wish she would just do what I needed. Oh, no. Alright, go for the eggs. Fire blast, fire blast. I don't know what percentage the final phase starts at, but it should... There we go. Okay, it's going great. No problems. Except for the fact that she was being really weird. Talk to me. Oh, bad placement! No, 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 no! This is what I was talking about. We cannot let him get knocked unconscious. Break it down. What's up? Okay, we got it. Oh, yeah, that stun <laughs> with a bad spawn is so silly. That was almost awful. Sounds like a plan. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we lost one Marine, unfortunately. He doesn't matter, though. It's only the heroes for the achievement, thank goodness. Stepman. And then we have so much firepower getting out of here is going to be just free. There's a couple Zerg, but it's based around the idea that you only have your heroes left. Everybody else died inside of the queen fight. So when you have extra stuff, we're going to keep it alive. We have to. So, get your bets in. I know there's no official betting system for Tychus versus 
You missed. Raiders roll. I got it, Hotshot. Uh, what do we gotta be yeah, afraid of? It. Ultra? Break it down. That's fine. Who's Can we Daddy get in? No magic word. Thanks. He's on so the official kill count is Tychus, 336. Jim, 413. Wow, uh, Jim, yeah, that 50 kills achievement really put him over the edge because it also denied Tychus a bunch of kills. Because usually they divvy it up 50-50. That makes a lot of sense. All right, it is all in time. You guys excited? It seems like We're getting ever closer to the Lost Vikings. <laughs> I really don't want to do the Lost Vikings. Like, legitimately, I wish I could skip it. It's three achievements in 45 minutes. Job. You guys here, you guys here. Okay, boom, boom. Commander, the Zerg will try to overrun us soon. Everybody kind of cluster. You guys move over. You guys move over. If things get out of hand, use the energy Nova to clear out your base. The we'll recharge an orbital and an so orbital. These are going to become planetaries later, but for now they are mule bots. And we need to grab some hive mind emulators. Because we paid for this tech and we are going to use it. Alright, so what we have to do here is one of the achievements is that we have to get 150 kills with the artifact. And the other achievement is that we can only use the artifact once. So, uh, <laughs> better get 150 kills with one shot. Otherwise, no shot. Fortunately, I just uh, did some testing, and I found a good time, and I hope that that works. I mean, it seemed good before. Should be good now. Unless Kerrigan just stops making units. Imagine that. She just <laughs> counters the achievements. That'd be cool. No, it wouldn't. It'd be terrible. But it would be very funny. Because legitimately, the best way to beat an achievement runner is to not make any units. Let's get two repair guys over here. Two repair guys over here. We're going to be building a lot of ghosts on this mission as well. The ghost is insane. Reason being is a little bit of math. So, our friend the ghost has... Is it six range base? Plus three, which brings it up to nine. The broodlord has nine and a half range, which is, first of all, very weird but also very annoying because it's super long. However, the bunker gives the ghost another range, which brings it up to 10, which means that ghosts inside of bunkers can hit broodlords without having to do anything. So they are by far and away the best passive defense against broodlords. And that's kind of what we need right now, is just a good broodlord defense. Right, so you here, you here, you guys here. And then lots of these. Your forces are under attack. Base is under attack. What is it? Oh, really? And then we're gonna have like uh, angels patrolling around when we get them, because they also have really long range. If you recall, we got the upgrade for them to make them deal. They have extra range and they deal area damage, which means that they're very good against both the mutalist and the other guy. Let's get a Ghost Academy. You're going to be on patrol right around here for repairs. This is a lot of hive mind emulators. Uh, wait a moment. Oh, I just, like, missed, I guess. <laughs> now, knowing where to build the bunkers on this mission can be really annoying. Because there's some really bad choices. I'm going to try my best to not make any mistakes when it comes to bunker positioning because if you do you're gonna get busted and I don't have the artifact as backup also the actual scariest thing that could happen what happened where'd he go I'm detecting a large group of Zerg flyers heading straight for the artifact one of the scariest things that can happen is accidentally clicking the artifact so uh don't hit that button don't even mouse over it to show what button it could be bad. Transformation systems prime. These guys over here. 
And Hive Mind Emulator is fair and balanced. What an ability. So yeah, if uh, if you haven't seen this before, my composition is going to be Mutalisk Broodlord. And it's going to be very strong. <laughs> because why would we make Terran units? Some of those, and then I'm going to grab a reactor on my starport so that I can get some medevacs, because medevacs, for some reason, can heal biological flying units. Medics cannot. Which is odd. But... It works. Ooh, hello. Whoa, 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 Uh, okay, we need defenses over here. The other good thing about ghosts in bunkers is that they are cloaked, so when they pop out of the bunker, they're still cloaked. So they work really well. Okay, actually, this guy... Sir. Tracking a large number of Zerg flyers coming your way. These, I am really gas starved right now. There's too many things pulling at my attention to buy. What's going on? Go ahead. Uh, that and there. When the enemy comes over here, I hold rapid fire and mind control all the Zerg. I am up to 17 mutalisks, and we will not be stopping anytime soon. You guys can go in there. We want three, three, one, one. I think just two of those is fine for now. We definitely want to get siege breakers as well. There's so many things to buy. Here, why not? Up there. Oh no, I'm mismanaging. I'm like starting to get stressed because things have been going so well that I'm afraid that I'm gonna uh, botch this mission. And as a result of being stressed, things are <laughs> being really bad. You know how it is. Right, that's Kerrigan. We gotta pull this back and that back so that they don't get blasted. Put some war pigs in there. We don't want the medevacs getting annihilated. We have a lot of these. Should be fine. She does not have Razor Swarm until the third one. We're fine. Yeah, she's nice and confused. Easy. First Kerrigan's always easy. Another wave of Zerg flyer, sir. If it's not easy, then you're doing something terribly wrong. Regret that. Okay, let's get... We've driven her back. Couple turrets. Just safety turrets. And another nice orange wave is spawning. These guys. Switch up again. Not perfect. I let a couple of them die, but it really doesn't matter. It's the Broodlords that I'm mostly after. The Broodlords are very good. And I think that it's time... Nah, I'm gonna wait until... The Overlord drop. That's when I'm going to grab planetaries here and here. Until then, it's just going to be mules, so we make sure that we have a ton of money to repair with. Let's see. Three ghosts, ghost, ghost. So we need five ghosts over there. Four pigs can go this way, though. And we got to have patrolling Vikings on this side. You sure about that? I am sure about that. Now they're starting to come from both sides. They're coming in behind you. Watch out. I hope this is a good enough patrol route. So they always hit the back first because it's closer. So we just sit here, grab these guys, and first Broodlord of the day. Broodlords, of course, very fair and balanced against the AI. They have no idea how to deal with them. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Come get me. Come get me. Come on. You know you want to. Oh no, a Broodlord. I could never be... Could you come forward a little bit, sir? Oh, let's kill this turret. <laughs> Here, come on over. Oh no, you're so powerful. If only you came to monologue... There we go. Got him. 
bringing up a mass of overlords heading your way. Oh, yeah. Ready your air there defenses. we go. Uh, cancel, cancel, cancel. Lots of planetary. Oh, no, so many mules. Drop the mules because I'm greedy. Planetaries go. Or for the corruptor to the brood lord. Yeah, I will eventually. Uh, I still need ghosts, though, defensively. So I'm just working on that first. Why do I have three battle cruisers over here? One is supposed to be over here, and no wonder this area keeps getting busted. Oh. Um. I shouldn't have canceled that planetary. <laughs> it's fine. Hundred percent fine. Okay, Kerrigan is coming to the top side. Oh, that's the bottom side. Bring these over. Ghosts get in. Keep this guy really safe. And remember, this is the second one, which means that we are not yet going to ah, attack him over there. Here, why don't you come on down? Oh, my medevac! No! Get out of there! And <laughs> Kerrigan just doesn't know what to do. The broodlings. She just can't figure out what to do against them. Another wave of Zerg flyers, sir. It's it's dumb. Kerrigan's gone underground. Pour it on, troops. Okay, those are patrolling. These are patrolling. Base is under attack. Use the friendship gun. I gotta rebuild some workers. Uh, I have no idea how these died. But they were attacking me before and they're not now, so... Oh, no! I gotta send some defenses over here. Oh, yeah, this is what happens when you don't get those ghosts fast enough. Start boss... Oh, my goodness, there's just stuff everywhere. Yeah, you don't notice it when you're actually using the artifacts that there is just a lot of thing. That's down. Lots of Zerg flyers and it's from behind. Radio, sir. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. Perfect. Whoa, hi. There's a lot of creep. Oh. These guys got killed. Now let's see. I think I'm I think I'm okay. There's a lot going on, but we're fine. We have all the ghosts that we need. Just need to make sure that I have all the repairs that I need. Don't need the overseer. So right now we have about 150 supply worth of Zerg units. And that means that things are going to get easier and easier. Because mind controlled units don't cost supply in StarCraft. Rather, I actually believe that they cost supply for the person you stole them from. Which is really, really broken. It doesn't really change anything here. But it is, uh, it's very powerful. All right, we're going to start getting some medevacs for our flyer fleet. And that is that. Now we just have to chill. Now, what percent was it? Let me look at my 87.5% is the only time that I can activate the artifact. If I do it then, we're golden. Because I can only do it once. Comes Kerrigan. Class 12 psionic waveform detected. The Queen of Blades has returned. You oh, fool, she'll oh, never he's back. come here. Now she is going to have Razor Swarm. Which means I'm gonna try to spawn some broodlings right here. Oh, she did not care about that. A cute idea. Please razor swarm. Okay. Just die. I don't like you. Sir, we're tracking a large number of Zerg flyers coming your way. Perfect. 
She's again. Just as I intended it. These guys move on back. And siege tanks. Siege tanks and Vikings. Yes, indeed. Get that patrol going. Grab some siege breakers. Get one on each side. And I think we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to come up to this side now. I <laughs> got your overseer. And we can morph some of these. We cannot morph some of these. Okay. Theoretically, that means that the enemy is supply blocked. However, the enemy that is supply blocked is the enemy that... Uh, I am. The enemy that is supply blocked spawns units instead of building them, so it doesn't really matter. Alright. We're gonna do something a bit cheeky. We're not gonna kill the Leviathan. You know why? Because the Leviathan is our macro. So... We don't need ship weapons. Let's get ship plating for our medevacs. Oh no. The Leviathan is in position. And it's constantly... Spawning Zerg. What are we ever going to do? It's so powerful. What a destructive force that the enemy has. All in is truly the most difficult of missions in StarCraft. How will we ever deal with it? Oh my goodness, they've evolved from the Mutalisk to the Broodlord. It is such a menace. Oh, thank you. So this isn't actually infinite because it, I don't know exactly how it works, but it seems like there's some sort of limiter that's like, all right, we have this many things spawned. Let's not... Let's not kill him. You know? Your way. You don't want to pile it on too hard against the player, which unfortunately doesn't work here because they're my units. Ready for dust off. Base. More friends. More broods. I didn't really notice that kill the Leviathan is not actually an objective on this mission. <laughs> Theoretically, we could just not do it. I I should, because I'm a little bit afraid. I don't know if that'll mess something up. Oh, Scourge. We just gotta... Also, he keeps attacking my Broodlords. Those are mine, sir. Alright, Kerrigan is going south. You fools. Must be winter. You're playing with forces beyond your comprehension. Let's try this broodling thing again. Pull him back. We don't even care about the mutas that much. Like, I'm not gonna lose them by just charging them in or something, but if a couple die, they die. Okay, 87.5% is the magic number. You gotta be prepared for that. I'm gonna save it at like 85% just in case something goes wrong. And we have to remember that it puts like a lingering damage over time effect on the ground. So if it doesn't immediately give us the number, that doesn't mean that we are in terrible shape. It's just, it, I prefer it give us the number. Have the pop up. Oh, gotta bring these guys back. This is a lot of SCVs. How many do I have? Well, I'm gonna guess I have 82. 66. Not too bad. Alright. Here we go. 87.5. And then we'll kill the Leviathan during the during the blasty, so it counts. Oh, maybe we don't kill these. Yeah, I'm gonna not mind control them so that I can get a couple more guys in the shot just in case. Yeah, fire some broodlings. Idiot. What? Why didn't it work? Oh no. Come on. 
Oh, thank goodness. We got it. Sir, we're tracking a large number of Zerg flyers coming your way. Okay, we're fine. And then the rest of it is just survive. Not really a whole lot to it. Probably pull these BCs back a little bit. I don't know how many people I lost, but it really doesn't feel like many. Things just... This mission went incredibly well. Oh, uh, wait, actually... <laughs> There was that whole point where I got busted over here, huh? And that I had to scramble to survive. Let's let's ignore that that happened. <laughs> Things went great. Oh, is there a scourge in there? There's a scourge in here. I don't like the scourge because they blow up all those guys. Oh, um. I got distracted. I was thinking about other things. So we don't need money. Money is just a social construct. <laughs> Built to, I don't know, oppress people. Um, yeah, we're fine. <laughs> Can't even float one of these bases. <laughs> this is, this is all part of the plan. I mean, listen, we're, I'm going to be honest here. I have 19 broodlords. I have 117 combined medevacs, mutas, and broodlords. I am sitting at something like 500 supply right now. It does not matter. Like, it's okay. Unless we lose to Kerrigan right here. She just totally outplays us. Here, you're going south. Prepare the broodlings. Fire. Oh, she did it. She razor swarmed the free units. That means we can just broodlings uh, blast forever. I wonder if we can keep Kerrigan alive till the end. Probably. Not even sure we have the DPS to kill her right now. No, it's just broodlords. They don't do that much. Uh, I don't like her. She's mean. She's killing my best friend, the Broodling. Well, that was like the least epic okay, all-in I've ever done. Easy peasy. Wait, did I just figure out how to make this mission last significantly longer than it's supposed to because it's supposed to end at 3008? <laughs> well, that sucked. Okay, if you kill Kerrigan at exactly the wrong moment... <laughs> and it just lasts... 15 seconds longer as they talk to each other. Okay, we have three more missions to do in Wings Liberty. We have to do all the other sides of the split missions. So we're going to load. Oh, I am doing really well on time. Okay, uh, no, no, not load. Uh, continue. Continue opens up the thing. Now we're not, Wings is not done. Wings still has quite a bit to go, unfortunately. So we're going to zoom on down to Breakout. Is Breakout the next one? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, is that the next one in my list? Haven's Fall. We're doing Haven first because that's how the bot wants me to do it. Here we go. Okay. Is my game on an SSD? Yeah, I have a Samsung Evo NVMe SSD, so it's as fast as I can possibly make it. So for this mission, the object or the achievements are to stop places from being infested. However, there's a really nice uh, mechanic where if you just beat the mission before they try to infest it, then you still get credit for it, which is just lovely. So we're going to beat the mission before they try to infest five places so we don't have to defend five times. My composition is Ghost Medic. That is because this mission is ridiculous and gives you like 700 billion gas. And that is the only way I can figure out how to spend the gas. Because I just unfortunately don't have access to the Predator, so... <sighs> Alright. So there's another... Ooh, Broodlord. Hello. Thought I killed you. So there's a nice little trick on this mission where 
if you kill the Virophage, but you don't kill anything else, they will never try to reinfest that area again. But also, it won't spawn any infested. So it's just kind of stasis. And we're going to make use of that. But for now, we're just going to chill and attack these things, get some mercenaries, all that kind of stuff. Because this mission is definitely one of those ones that cascades out of control. It's either very, very easy because you completely can control all the infested spawning, or it is way too much. So now that we've dealt with this, we're going to go over to uh, the other silly thing on this mission, which is Gas Island. It exists, and it's, it's far too gassy. Swing it on down. Complete. And we land. Agreed. Let's see, how much gas is there? Like 600? Well. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, 600 gas just chilling out here for no reason. At a casual 1900 gas at the three minute mark. I don't know why. <laughs> But I understand why Haven was such an exciting planet for them, because it has the entire universe's supply of Vespine. Alright, we're gonna grab a decent number of medics, and then we're transitioning into big old ghost energy. We don't really need to go medic first, I just forgot to build the ghost academy. <laughs> so, that's what we're doing. I, I kind of thought that I had it under construction at the same time that I built the engineering bay, and it turns out, no. So this is a little build order optimization. And we're doing the... What did I? What mission did I do that on? Smash and grab, where you build eight medics before anything else? Yeah. Though we are going to save the colony in the most, like, reasonable way possible, and that's fun. Okay. Hmm. So we don't need any more workers. Actually, 27, 18. Yeah, we don't need any more workers. We just need ghosts. Unfortunately, because the mass, the archives doesn't work in Wings of Liberty like it does in the other versions of the game, we don't get all the tech unlocked. We have unlocked whatever we had at the time, which is to say that these missions are going to be not quite as fast as they could be. But it's fine. We still have the ghost upgrades. I made sure to do this mission fairly late so that this split part would be really easy. Alright guys, you ready to save the colony? <laughs> Thank you, ghost. Oh. Under We're heroes. Solo operative. I knew Raynard save us. Go. Saved him. All right, let's go. <laughs> Sir. Time to start clearing. Doctor Hansen has locked herself in the lab. <sighs> She's desperate to save her people. I'm worried about what she might do. This whole mission is just very silly, in a good way. We're going to land these guys because I want to attack move. This is just like Megaton. Wait, you don't save the place in Megaton, do you? By nuking it. You blow it up by nuking it. That makes a lot more sense. I might not remember Fallout very well. So now we're going to make uh, good use of the incredibly fair and balanced ghost once again. Bye. Just declaring things dead. Like, I think there's an Ultralisk over here. Uh, I'll ask you guys to spot it if at all possible. Where could he be? There might not be an Ultralisk here. Oh, there he is. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Why is Snipe like this? I don't know. I legitimately have no idea. It's insane. But it works. Oh no, eggs. They could be building ultralisks. Easy. Stim those marines. 
Yeah, unsurprisingly, that ability was removed from the game as soon as MVP discovered it. Though he did win World Championship with it. <laughs> so I guess it took a little bit for it to get removed. Venture forward. The way that the infested work on this mission is kind of annoying. So what they do is every single one of these structures has like an auto cast ability with a certain number of charges to spawn infested. And it will auto cast and spawn them for free with no build time if there is open supply, which means they respawn at a ridiculous rate and they respawn even faster the faster that you kill them. Which feels kind of weird from a design perspective, right? Like, you're almost getting punished for killing the infested faster. When it feels like... That's generally not how game design works, right? I'm gonna leave these guys here just in case we get attacked. Hey, we got attacked. Plus these. Okay, we're fine. down and Solo let's keep clearing good job sir thank you picking up two more concentrations of Zerg bio I like it when Matt Horner is nice to me makes me know that he loves me more than he loves his wife that's important oh hello brood lords another settlement is being infested by brood lords okay Ghost I can't get over <laughs> snipe Any more brood lords? Yeah, there's one over here. Get these out. And save the colony. There we go. Sorry, I just needed the audio cue to make sure that everything was working. We can take all this down. Now, don't run into the nuke. Just run beside it. We have long enough range, it's probably okay. That'll take down some of the infested buildings, making things easier. But we are basically done with this mission. The amount of gas that they give you just, if you have the ability to make it snowball, which generally means not making Vikings, then it's so powerful. Honestly, this just doesn't feel like a good Viking mission overall. Not nearly as good as the other version is, right? With the Protoss where you have to destroy their ships. Run your troops into the mushroom crowd, no biggie. Yeah, I mean, a mushroom... I've played Mario. A mushroom cloud should just make you big, right? And a lot more powerful. And then they can take an additional hit before they die. So why would you not run them into the mushroom cloud? Alright, one more base. Then there's two more missions before the Lost Vikings. I'm gonna cloak this guy so he doesn't get killed on his way over. Oh my gosh, look at that money. We could have some more ghosts. We only have 32 of them. We do have to be a bit careful here. This ramp is scary. I think I just stopped them from doing an infestation attempt. I'm not sure. Oh, no. That guy got away. You can stop them if you kill the overlords. It's not, like, super reliable. <laughs> eh, whatever. I sniped enough banelings, apparently. I just gave up eventually. I mean, if they take too long, what's happening? They're like trying to get overseers. There we go. Ah, oh, they started. I thought that maybe we were going to be able to get away with it and take this down before they started the sealing attempt. Not sealing. Okay. 
Keep it up, fellas. We can stop this. Easy mission. What's going on? Come again. Let's go. Give me the go. So we have to kill this. Give me the but to get there, we have to take down all these. I don't know how the ghost made it past playtest. <laughs> Everyone in house Sir, must have been Spectre done. fans, which I get. Not the Spectre is so much cooler. Zerg, but we have a problem in the but nobody tested this unit. <laughs> so. Easy. Okay. Next is Breakout, I think. Breakout. 20. Yeah. 25 minutes is the one. And then Tosh cannot go under 100 HP, which is the part that I don't like. Because this mission is really easy to just randomly take a bunch of damage. Out with it. Damn street. So. It's just... We're gonna have to be slow and steady, but fast and brutal and powerful and manly. Yes. At the same time. That's how it works. With my cloaking abilities, I'm not using Mind Blast here, it's a waste of energy. As much as the game really, really wants you to. I do what I, I can use a psionic up, explosion up, up, to take out up. So once we get to Heart of the Swarm, things are going to get significantly more difficult. Because that is when the mastery achievements start being part of what we're doing. And the mastery achievements are not nearly as easy. By the way, tanks are really easy to abuse. You go out of range and they siege up. You go in range and they unsiege. Repeat forever. My boys are moving in to back you up. You just have to get into range. Just keep sending in troops. And, uh, now, a lot of this is just going to be supporting Jim's forces so that we don't take very much damage. And one of the best ways that you can support Jim is by stunning the bunkers, because the bunkers, you don't have to hit a whole lot of stuff and it disables everybody inside, even if you just clip the edge. I'm not going below 100. Just want to get it burning. Jim is doing his thing. And if during this push we can get this turret, then this base is going to be ours. Yeah, they're going after the medics. Best way you can support Jim is via Patreon. <laughs> I mean, sure. He seems more like a Kickstarter kind of guy. Because he wants to kick this revolution into overdrive, right? You can't do that on Patreon. Alright, so we have one shield. The shield costs 30. We're just going to move up here, shield it, take down this turret, and then we can kill all the buildings. The faster that this area is claimed in the name of Jim, the faster he can actually start sending non-garbage attack waves. Because every little base that he gets makes him a lot better. Okay, now that Jim's working on that, I'm going to go get shot in the face. Oh, he missed, okay. I wasn't even trying to dodge it. It's just not a very good ghost. Okay. It don't hurt. Much. So now we are going to sneak on behind this and Jim is going to take this base. He's going to kill that ghost for me. I'm going to shield right here because sometimes that happens. <laughs> I've only gotten gotten by that like once, but I'm not going to let it happen again. After this is gone, we can then return to the front, where we will aid Jim in warfare. What's this attack wave? Dude, you need more stuff. Alright, buddy. We can stun the bunkers so that, like, nothing here is firing. Ooh, that's double tank. Yeah, we gotta take that down. Jim can and will die. <laughs> if you don't help him out on Brutal, the man is useless. I mean, look at him. He's rushing for plus one armor for his infantry. He's not good at his job. And unfortunately, it just means we have to go back and forth over and over. 
There we go. Jim can work on that. We're going to go grab Dash, these guys because the we have to do all the bonus objectives. Now. Releasing the prisoners might buy us some allies. What it's true. Wanted. Jim on casual can solo the mission. And Jim on normal can solo the mission. It just takes like six hours. I need to be really careful with HP here. This next area, I think, is the easiest place to accidentally get reduced, so I will give it a nice old save. Because, yeah, there's like a bunch of tanks and siege breakers, and there's some ravens patrolling around. It's really just set up for a bad day. Jim, can you seriously not bust this? Fun. Nice work, Tosh. Freeing those prisoners will really help us out. I honestly feel bad for him sometimes. Like, he's trying his best. His best is just so bad. At least he leaves a bunch of guys behind to defend, so when he messes up the attack, he doesn't die instantly. Takes him. How many SCVs does this guy have? Like we're playing against TY over here, going up to 150 SCVs. that guy and I think that he's good now he can finish all that off and we're gonna head up this little ramp like we're Anakin in the pod racing scene and we're gonna destroy this raven just like Anakin yeah I don't really remember the Phantom Menace I haven't watched it since I was a kid but I'm pretty sure it was just like that now uh, next we're gonna try spinning that's a good trick I don't really want to attack in here. <sighs> this part is rough. There's a turret here. Bunker, bunker, siege tank, turret. Oh, did I not kill that turret? I probably should. Uh, yeah, that'll make it easier to take this guy down. Oh my gosh, this man and his SCVs. Why does he make so many of them? He doesn't even have minerals. We gotta go work with our buddy, so. We gotta go all the way back. We have to eat our friends. Remember, cannibalism is the answer. Tosh is canon canonically a cannibal. Okay, stop all of that. And now we're going to do something a little bit risky and move in to soak some of the shots as we... Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, let's get out of there! Oh, that was a bad idea. Uh, we didn't, we didn't go below 100, did we? Was anyone watching? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we didn't. Really hope we didn't. Yeah, I think we had a lot of leeway. Let's do Oh my goodness. Whoa, 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 whoa. 77? Okay. I did save about a minute ago for this reason. Oh, it was 177 and someone typoed. Oh. Well, you know what? Let's just, let's just do this better. Let's just, uh, that was the showing you how, oh, it's so difficult if you do it that way, but now I'm going to show you the giant Crank Games way, where it works the first try, every time. Yeah, look, we got the bunker this time, it's fine. Ow. Okay, I'm going to go back to a medic. This is the part where you lose a lot of time, too. We have 25 minutes, which is a good bit of time, but it's not, like, insane. This mission does take quite a while. Take the turret down. There we go. See? Wasn't this, wasn't this just a better strategy? It's A and B comparison. You know, you gotta be able to prime someone with a bad strategy so that they understand the quality of your strategy. I'm just going to shoot a building for like half an hour. 
Oh, this is exciting. Riveting gameplay. Alright, we're gonna charge in. Tanks a lot. Got him. If you do a bad pun one-liner, you do become more powerful. Alright. And now Jim is going to take this area, and he's going to send actual not-garbage attacks. And I'm going to save. Most of the second military cell block, Tosh. Feel like making some new friends? Don't. Don't you worry about us, Tosh. We'll keep them busy while you free the prisoners. We're rolling now. Keep them busy while we establish our forward position. Got him. <laughs> I'm never entirely sure how the developers intended you to take that part. But I assume that just brute forcing it is a perfectly legitimate way to do it. It works. Tosh, we got a nuke ready for launch. Paint a target. Just don't call the strike in too close. So yeah, we're not nuking here. We're gonna hold it for a bit. Because it's better to nuke a little bit farther forward. Ooh, good tank, good tank. It's really annoying when those tanks end up, like, far in the back. But this one is really far forward. So, took it down. Now our tank is going to be able to set up and hopefully take down this bunker. And the turret, too, would be nice. I'll go for the turret. Come on, take it. I'll protect you. Oh! Yeah, we got him. Easy. Now this is the part that is the worst, is these darn ravens just flying all around the map. They're very, very annoying. So we're going to deny them. They're gonna deny me. I don't like them. <laughs> you just can't know. Uh, fight with our friends, get fully healed, blah, 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 blah. Hey, another good tank position. Shield it up. Take down these tanks. And blast here with one nuke. Raven down. Right, go. Oh, that is three siege tanks. Um... That is too many siege tanks to let attack Jim. He will die to that because he's dumb. Our allies are being attacked. And we come over here. These guys hit not hard because he's not light nor armored, Tosh. Our allies are being attacked. Now we're going to blow off the tech reactors and then try to take this down. Oh, okay. Slightly out of range. We're going to sit here until... Nah, actually, we're just going to keep going. It can't build ravens anyway because it lost the tech reactor. Well, that raven that just popped out doesn't count. <laughs> Please ignore it. And then we're going to go over to the other side and try to take down the starports here. And if we can do that, they won't have any raven production for the rest of the game. At which point, it's a lot easier to attack because the only thing that can detect us are guys that cannot move. And then it's my fault if I die. There we go. Fortunately, they don't seem to have their repair SCVs anymore. I never saw what happened to them, so... Who would have guessed that that would happen? And let's go finish them off. Oh, please do not siege here, sir. Okay. I mean, there was a, there was no sieging sign, but I guess you can do whatever you want. I think this is the last raven. It better be. If they have, like, hidden raven production facilities around here, I'm gonna cry. Because I just invested a lot into stopping these nerds. Oh yeah, they've just gone for mass battlecruiser banshee. Also a fine composition, I guess. 
Oh my goodness, they have a lot of guys. So the way that this works is that they no longer have production. However, the game, they want to send attack waves. The AI like really wants to attack. That's part of what it does. So he's going to just start grabbing all of his stuff around the base and sending it. Which makes peeling them apart significantly easier, right? Because we no longer have to breach into them to get stuff. They're going to send it to us. Free shipping. Stun it. Stun it. And if we can take down this little detecty man... I think we got it. That's basically everything. Uh, ooh, this burned down. That's great. So it's not even producing like a little trickle. And the Diamondback has decided to get himself killed. All he had to do was stand back there, bud. And see Chank will finish everything off. The time is 25 minutes. So we have five whole minutes remaining to beat uh, two bunkers and a planetary fortress, so it's going to be close. And then what mission do we have to do? Oh, Shatter the Sky. That one's pretty easy. We just build battle cruisers. It's not even that long, because you start out with two bases, effectively. I was not paying attention there. I was just face tanking a bunker when I'm not supposed to go under 100 HP. That was actually pretty spooky. That would have been a bad time to lose it. Mm. Voice is starting to get a little bit raspy. Been talking for six and a half hours straight. Uh, just have to do four times this <laughs> and we'll be done. Okay, this is the final Wings of Liberty mission. And then we will not start Heart of the Swarm. As much as I wish. Okay, grab that. Boom, boom. And then you forward, you guys this way. Everybody cloak, and let's get blasting. Positive fix on all the towers. I do apologize to everyone that doesn't want to watch The Lost Vikings. I don't want to watch The Lost Vikings. I understand it's kind of funny. I also understand that it takes way too long. Damn, Jimmy. It's uh, 45 minutes long. It's literally the single activity that we have to spend the most time on in this run is The Lost Vikings. And that is... That is silly. So we're just taking this base as fast as we can. Uh, we obviously want to take that down first so the creep starts receding because cre uh, creep recedes really slowly in Wings of Liberty compared to the other expansions. I guess it recedes really slowly in Heart of the Swarm too. It's just never to your disadvantage. Okay, creep go back. Ultralis go in the corner. Broodlord gets... Bopped over here, and we will start our battle cruisers. I don't know if there's a faster way to do this, but it really does feel like the most consistent is battle cruisers, particularly because we have to kill the Leviathan. So we don't have a whole lot of operating room for like gimmicky strategies to destroy the little pods. Because he is a bonus objective, even though he doesn't give anything, there's always that first. Uh, First achievement on every mission that's like, well, kill everything, bro. Or not kill everything, but do the objective. Do every objective, bro. Which usually means kill everything. Okay, get that guy over here. Take the auto gases and... Grab some armories. Get some 3-3 three, three battle cruisers. Well... What is it? Yes, go and eventually this base will be mine. It just it's gonna take a bit. Patching you through. Oh really? Oh, here we go. What is 
So this is the mission that we got the defensive matrix ability for. It's uh, very, very good here to keep the battle cruisers alive. In theory, I could have used... No, I couldn't have used it on Maw of the Void. In fact, yeah, yeah, I didn't have this on any other battle cruiser mission, did I? So we're fine here. This is uh, nice and safe. Because Yamato isn't necessarily as good as a shield. It's definitely not bad. But it's kind of inconsistent. A lot of the time you want to be fighting against a swarm of zerg, so taking down a single target is not nearly as important. But being able to reduce a bunch of damage can be really strong. And we have Jackson's Revenge, and he's going to help us out. Okay. We shouldn't need to take any more bases after this as well. I'm kind of just going to poke over here. You know what? We can bring everything. I just want to make sure that we take down this cool tower really quick. Oh, BC's first tower after six minute attack. Okay. I have a new strategy and it's called reading my own notes. <laughs> I don't know what the six minute attack entails, but I, I'm supposed to wait, so I will. I don't know if this waiting is important or not, but I'll do it. I trust in me. Listen, it's actually really easy to not trust in yourself and things like, do you know what I mean? Like, you write something down and you're in the heat of the moment, Wings of Liberty is going great, and you're just like, you know what? I'm not sure that I need to wait until the attack. And then it turns out that there was some amazing reason that I completely forgot about. And then I die. Oh, look at that attack. It's so powerful. It wasn't bad. I think I lost one medic there. Oh, I lost my banshees. Commander, you oh, whatever. Stay away from those tunnel entrances. According to the sensors, they're chock full of mutilisks. Oh, shields, go! Infantry, come support. Make sure we don't lose this guy. We're not gonna have the infantry for long, but if they can help out while they're here, I will not be upset. And maybe we will have the infantry all game. We can just put them in some bunkers or something over here. Yeah. So the Leviathan spawns after the second the tower dies. Move out. I think. So as long as Get we just there, are sir. patient when it comes to that, we should be good. What is it? Oh, really? Does anyone know how the Leviathan works if you destroy this place second? Does the tower... Oh no, because it would. I guess what you would have to do is destroy this one and then this one in like quick succession. Maybe like 15 seconds later. So that the place would blow up while the Leviathan is still on it. Does that work? That'd be kind of funny. I mean, the Leviathan's easy. It's really not bad. But having dumb ways to kill it is not what I'm looking for right now. <laughs> what is it? I shouldn't tempt myself with a good time. But, uh, yes, it's a cool idea. Alright, we're gonna just grab some guys. We're gonna build up a really good defense over here. Oh. Oh, this is a... Uh... Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, I don't know who's better to die. I guess I want the war pigs to die, because... Oh, it looks like everybody's gonna die. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, there's this big old thing! Well... You know what? A couple bunkers, just old-fashioned, I think is fine. We don't really need to go too over the top when it comes to defending. I don't think the mission is gonna last long enough for that to really be a big issue, right? So... Let's just <laughs> let's just pretend that this is all okay. I'm gonna go bust open this base and take some auto gases. That was a very unfortunate timing. I mean, we could do the a lot worse version of War Pigs and Siege Breakers, which is Hammer Securities and Hell's Angels. Uh, how do they compare? You might ask. Stop asking questions. I'm not your teacher. 
I'll put some guys in bunkers. It'll be fine. Alright. Two auto gases. One. Oh. One and two. And then the remainder goes right here and builds a couple bunkers. A couple, also known as three, is going to be more than enough. And these gas geysers are going to fund me forever. I'm actually going to, like, mine out this base. So this place is really easy. This is the anti-ground base. We're going here first. <gasps> oh, Broodlord. Oh, my goodness. Got to burrow this SCV to save him. This attack probably would have been easier to hold if I actually had guys positioned and sieged up in time. You know what? This seems like a good old defense. That's all I need. The Vikings Vike. That's about it. SP? Okay, let's go. I'm feeling a little bit stressed for time right now. Like, I want to just keep going because I don't know how the attack waves are and I'm afraid of being caught out of position. I always get very anxious when I'm going for like battle cruisers because of their speed. They just don't have the ability to quickly move where I need them to. Alright. That was easy. Get out of there. move out fast. Yep. Oh, whatever. I'm getting really lazy with my depots. Looking forward to playing Zerg, where I can just, where I can just hold the Overlord button. That'll be a good change of pace. Acknowledged. Whatever that means. We're good. What is it? All right, let's uh, repair up a little bit. This area is mining out, so I can take a couple of these guys, and I'm just hoping I don't have to move because moving. Moving kind of sucks. But before we do anything else, it is Leviathan time. Mineral field depleted. He's got 4,000 HP, 3 armor. Do I have 3-3 three, three yet? I do not. Mineral field eh, we're fine. I need to not stress too much about it. I have the Yamato cannon. Nothing beats that. Let's put these guys off this way, create a nice little firing line so that the... He's got an AoE. So we just drop all these here. Go big Yamato. Easy. Alright, let's go finish this mission and be done with the final mission in Wings of Liberty so we can head over to Heart of the Swarm. Those guys are going to go in a bunker. Because I am still a little bit scared. You come from. Field depleted. Yeah, all the boss fights in Wings of Liberty are just way too easy. Every single one of them needs a buff. That's what Nightmare Difficulty did. And it was cool. Yes, Commander. Alright, we're just gonna sneak our way around here. Oh, really? Jump on in, blast them, and then we're gonna go up and around. How did you possibly find me over here? Yes, Commander. Well, that's what the shield is for. Upgrade complete. Mm. Truly, an epic micro fight between the battle cruiser and the mutalisk. Hey, I need that. Transformation. Send that guy over there. I probably don't need it, but. These final bases are pretty heavy in anti-air, so I'm just making sure that I have the openness to not die if I lose my army. Ooh, oh. Tried to click. It died, and then I hit the hotkey and used it on everybody, so there goes a bunch of my energy. That was a good 1,300 energy out the drain. Get out of there, sir. And now I'm energy starved. That was a big mistake. I can feel my reaction speed is getting way worse. And we're not even that long into the stream. 
But I'm not like a, I'm not a duration streamer. I'm not the person that streams ten hours a day every day. So I'm not used to it. Okay, just taking a look. That's an attack wave. We can deal with that, and then we can go and win. Repair. Here we go. Field depleted. Oh, that shield is great. Yeah, run away. What you gonna do? Coward. Huh? Fighter I don't think anything can bust this. You hailed? Yeah, it's gonna be lost Viking time. Honestly. That's just the pep in my step that I need, huh? The greatest mission of them all. Can we just target it down? I mean, I shouldn't. I should be, like, kiting. Or not kiting, but stutter-stepping the battle cruisers. It looks very silly, but it is the correct thing to do. Even if I don't want to. We don't have the version that can fire while moving yet. Done. Wings of Liberty almost completed. Uh, let me let me just check. Uh, what time is it for Grant right now? All you have to do is look at how long I've been in the thing, and it uh, that is the time in PM. So Wings of Liberty, yep. Uh, 180, 180. All we have is these. Perfect. Where is a good save for this? Big money, wow, so cool. That is exactly the type of save that I'm looking for. Lost Viking, let's go. All right. Cantina. Arcade. Once again, I'm so sorry. I, uh, I don't find this very fun. I also put, like, no practice into it. Okay. It's a space bar. That's how we fire. We're gonna have to hit space bar about 63,000 times. So we have to get 500,000 points. And that's, uh, that's a lot of points. Wow. Those guys just threaded the needle. Did you see that? Maybe scouts are good after all. So, for what we gotta do right here is... First, I wanna grab the plasma... Actually, you probably wanna get the drone. Oh. Yeah, the drone would be good because it fires like a homing shot. I messed that up. I'll get both of the drones first and then I'll move into plasma missiles because the homing shot seems nice for dealing with these generic stage enemies. Oh, goodness. I like macro recorder to hit spacebar really hard. And how long that would take to set up. Oh, gonna Yeah, I'm just gonna hit the bomb here. I am doing terribly. Okay. Drone number two. Uh, I don't like this. Okay, give me one sec. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh my goodness. Oh no. We're just gonna, we're gonna quit. We're gonna restart. <laughs> It was horrible. Um, bad start. I think I have an answer. No, you can't. Uh, holding space doesn't fire as fast, so. Does this work? There we go. Alright, now I just have to focus on dodging. Yeah, this is much better. 
It's the physical act of pressing the space bar so many times that is truly the disorienting part. Yeah, thread the needle this time, guys. Okay. We still got to do all the dodging and stuff, though, so it's not free by any means. Particularly because, as I said, my practice in this was basically none. I looked at it yesterday, and I was like, yeah, I can play this game. I played Doho when I was younger. This is easier. Also boringer. So we have to get a lot of kills, because the kills give us points, and the points give us victory. Plasma missiles is the good weapon. We gotta get two plasma pistols and two drone. Plasma pistols. Not playing Halo. Two plasma missiles and two drones. However, our hitbox is really big. After we get those, we want to get bombs. Lots and lots of bombs. Okay. So we gotta wait for that to rotate. Uh, into the plasma, please. Is that plasma missiles? Yeah, I guess it is. It's got missiles. There we go. So these are upgraded. Now blue is the bomb, and we need to get those. And just spam them. Boss incoming. Come get me, big boy. The carrier is really easy, right? Like... I don't remember what he does, but he can't be hard. Just be wary of interceptor attacks. They'll probably start shooting. It's a lot of interceptors. There we go. Just make sure that we're damaging the boss throughout all of it. It's targeted on me. And carry it down. Okay, that is level one of nine that we have to do. Uh, one of nine. I appreciate everybody that sticks through this. However, dinner break for you guys, not a bad idea right now. If you gotta do it, you gotta do it. I completely and totally understand. Because uh, we gotta get 500,000 points and defeat Terratron which is much easier than getting 500,000 points. So what's going to happen is that after this, we're going to watch the cutscene for Heart of the Swarm, that really sick intro cutscene. I'm going to grab some more throat coat and then uh, probably shove some food in my mouth. And then we will start Heart of the Swarm, and Heart of the Swarm is very fast and very easy. Except for the hard parts. Those parts are not very easy. But most of it is okay. We got a lot of bombs. I hope that I get to the point where I can just chain bomb the bosses and don't have to use my brain. That's kinda... that's the goal. It's just invalidate all the enemies. Because these stages don't seem so bad. The Scourge are kind of annoying. In the way that they pop. But everything else is okay. How do you unlock this? All you have to do is go to the uh, cantina and click on the arcade machine. If you've ever been stuck at 99% Wings Liberty achievements, this is why. You and everybody else in the world. And honestly... It might be better to just stay there at 99%. So the most important thing here is to not pick up the missile, the red missile pickup. The purple missile isn't bad, it just gives us points accidentally, but the red one completely resets our attack progress and gives us a different attack that's really bad. It's basically a trap. So, this boss is the Leviathan. I think yeah, never grab a blinking bomb because it can turn into the missiles. That is a very good piece of... You know what? No. Not going to let that hit me. That is a good piece of information right there.
Is this just a mid-boss? Man, this stage goes on forever, doesn't it? That's the worst part, is just how slow it is. Okay, blink at me. Get a bomb. You know what? I'm gonna use a bomb to get a bomb. That is a... <laughs> it's 500 points. I need the points. We're 10% of the way there, score-wise. Obviously, the later stages give a lot more score, but... Is that safe? It doesn't feel safe to go up there. And now it's changed. So, uh... How's everybody doing? There's more? Okay, can we get a boss fight, please? That's a lot of Swarm Queens. How's everybody doing today? I've, uh... I've played StarCraft. I hope you're having a good day. People enjoying the stream? It's, uh... I feel like things have been going really well so far, and I'm very happy with the progress. We are about at the seven hour mark, which is a little bit ahead of where I would like to be at this point, so that's fantastic. It means lots and lots of room to be safe and do some cool strats instead of having to coin flip. I really need some bombs though, dude. Bomb? Oh, more? These guys? Okay. I should have just picked it up. Next life at 150k. It's fine. Fine, just give this to me. Ugh. Okay, I'll grab them. Did I figure eight hours per campaign, or is one longer than the other? So, Wings of Liberty and Legacy of the Void, I figured eight hours apiece. Heart of the Swarm is about five, and Nova Covert Ops is about three. How do you bomb? Yeah. Easy peasy. Just don't move so we can blast these. Every time... Oh, does he do a headbutt? Yeah. That's not that butt. Just keep hitting him. That's what the bombs are for, is to increase DPS on the bosses so that we don't have to actually learn their mechanics. Okay. That is stage two of nine. Viewer count is holding steady. This is the content people want to see. <laughs> Uh, so there's a chance I'll have to do... If I have to redo this, like, straight up, this is actually the part of the run that will kill me. If it doesn't... If I do not get this on my first try, it'll be 45 more minutes of it, and there's no way that I'll have that much free time. Like, it just won't happen. So if I do not get 500,000 points here, the run is dead. <laughs> and there's no safety mechanism, there's no comeback you cannot save... You just have to be able to do it in one sitting. <sighs> Which is why we're doing it now and not later. Even though I would like to put it off. In fact, I probably should have done it earlier. Science vessels? Oh, cloaky science vessels. Isn't that fancy? I feel like I hope that this isn't as long of a mission as the previous one. I mean, I guess they're just sending guys into the meat grinder, which gives me points. But I feel like the boss gives me a lot more points than anything else, so more bosses is better. More vessels. I know that, like, every single unit has its own point value or something, so... There is a method to the madness. There we go. We got the bomb. I really need to eat after this. I'm feeling it. I, uh... I've really only eaten blueberries at this point. But fortunately, Lab Rat is not the fastest mission. Like, we're going to have that whole tutorial thing, so... 
I'll be able to do that. Back in the saddle, though. Yeah, the missions after that are going to be pretty tense for a bit. Because there's a lot that we have to do in a very short amount of time with not very many tools. Because later Heart of the Swarm is significantly easier than early Heart of the Swarm. Just due to the power of upgraded Kerrigan. And like, the mastery achievements are weirdly not that hard. Alright, that is achievement one of four in The Lost Vikings. Let us get to achievement two of four. Is this going to be him? Terratron? No. I thought that everything was pulling away and then the boss was going to happen. It was going to be like... And then it starts, but... Oh, it's Battlecruiser. Whatever. Let's take one of them down to make it easy. Ah, oh, they do it in exactly the way to make it really hard to attack them. Bomb? I've been doing a very good job at not getting hit, which, I mean, is the entire thing that you're supposed to do right here. this way. So these target at you. We got our bonus life. Yay. We're doing it, guys. We're making it work. I'm so happy. I love this game. That's the, This is the nightmare difficulty of the 100% achievements run, is that you have to save this for the very end. <laughs> at the 23 hour mark, you have to jump on in and give it your best go. I want the- I want the bomb! Give me the bomb! No. I'm not gonna get it. I'm not that stupid, that's bait. I want it so bad. So how many bombs does it take to not fight Terratron? Because I have ten of them. Wow, when you're fully upgraded, you sure do a lot of damage. Can we just walk through this? Yeah, we can. Because you get that little uh, defensive matrix when you're bombed, so... So the bosses aren't even bosses here. That's achievement number two of four. Now we just have to do this two more times. That's not true. We might not have to fight Terratron. Here we go. Oh gosh, we have to watch this, don't we? Uh, yeah, I saved the princess and the world and... Yay. Uh. Okay, continue. Let's go. Level four, it's like level one, but slightly harder. Might look a little bit cooler, I'm not sure. I don't remember if this Protoss structure stuff existed last time. There's a princess? <laughs> Great question. I I don't know, I'm not really into the deep lore of Lost Vikings. I can't I can't tell you what their plot is. I can just tell you that it is four achievements worth of pain. Yeah, this one really puts a damper in a lot of the momentum, too. Like, you have to get, for this run, you have to get, on average, one achievement every three minutes. But you're getting one achievement every ten minutes here. And that is, uh, a decrease in speed. <laughs> the momentum is lost. Mission 4 has additional enemies. That's good. That's additional points. Kind of running out of things to say. I'm also getting deathly afraid that I'm going to lose this. Real antimatter missiles don't matter to me. That's why they're called that. Knock through them all. 
Yeah, so about that weather. Is it is it really hot where you are? Because it's really hot where I are. It's just, it's too much temperature. I'm not a big fan. Disgustingly hot, yeah. It's, uh, it's been a bit too much. I know there's supposed to be, like, a polar vortex eventually that'll make the entire universe really freezing cold. Can't wait. It's gonna be great. I know that's, like, one of those, oh, the universe is collapsing type things because it keeps happening, but at least we'll be chilly while the universe collapses. I think I could have got the kill there, but I, I was too scared. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do it. Zoom. Next mission. It's a time loss, it is. We're so ahead on time, though, that we can afford a time loss on the Lost Vikings. The Time Lost Vikings. grabbing my blueberries. They're right over here. I'm not going to eat them during, because I will die if I try, particularly with all these scourge around. We're good. Okay. I might try to eat some, just for my own sanity. Okay, our, our build order is kill the Corruptor, eat blueberries. That's good timing. That's strategy right there. I'm hydrated. Remember to hydrate yourself. I don't have any tea left, so I have to do this until the cutscene. Alright, that's going to turn into the blaster thing. Do I bomb in order to eat some blueberries? I think I wait for those blueberries to turn into bombs. There we go. Oh, that one's not morphing. Okay, we're clear. Oh, this is working. I'm getting so good at this game. Okay. Rotate. Bomb. Oh, oh, I'm scared. No, no, no. That almost tricked me. I almost got duped. I don't want to go up there. But it's so alluring. I keep having the desire to spend a bomb to get a bomb, but that's like the take a penny, leave a penny at the supermarket. It doesn't do anything. Pennies have no value in it. Oh, gosh. I have no pennies anyway. Pennies have no pennies in it. I'm losing it. Oh, it does get me 500 points. Yeah, pennies do. Or pennies are worth 500 points. How many points do these guys give me? Hopefully, it's like a thousand. Okay, he's down. Whatever. Just get points. The little things don't disappear. Kind of thought they would. If you're... The raids spawn indefinitely on the final Terran mission? I mean, the raids spawn only as fast as you can kill them, right? Like... Or do you mean, like, during the Terraton boss fight? We should be fine. There's no way that we're going to get a third Terratron. I'm not that bad. Honestly, I think I'm doing very well, all things considered. I haven't... I don't think I've been hit, even with a drone. And I have 16 missiles, or 16 bombs. I should be... it should be okay. Okay, do we dare? Blueberry. Oh no, I got hit. I was thinking about blueberries. 
It's okay, there was a drone over here. Oh, there's so many of them. Like, this is better than there not being very many enemies, but come on, give me a break. I need, <laughs> I need food. How was this not designed with a 24-hour stream in mind? Blasphemy. Why not grab a third drone? They only stacked to two, unfortunately. Whatever. Take the points. Okay. I like how it blows off his tentacle when you bomb. It's kind of cool. Oh, that's a very tight little grouping. Nope. I know a charge when I see it. There we go. Should be dead. Yeah, if the drones stacked more than two, that'd be amazing. Alright. We're more than halfway there. Mission six of nine. Nice. Oh, lasers. My favorite. Can I blow this up? At least it gives me something to do. I do have to kill the raids. Fortunately, the raids are being very nice and not really attacking. Must be their anti-ground attack. Because I'm not noticing it. Okay, one more achievement. One more achievement and we can be done with this. Forever. I would like to promise myself that I'm never playing this again after this, but, uh... I'm sure for... <gasps> okay, that was... That was freaky. I know I only would have lost a drone part, but I didn't think about that in the heat of the moment. I thought I was going to lose my entire life. I was going to steal my life savings. This mission seems to be the one that gives all the points. The raids are worth 100 apiece. I guess the Scourge were worth like 100 apiece. It'd be cool if there was like a point multiplier in this game, like a lot of other uh, shoot 'em ups have, so that you could play well and not have to spend as much time in it. Like, for just doing well, you get more and more points per action. So I'm hoping this brings us to 300-something. Thousand. These laser things are really getting in my way. Yeah, no. Oh, I'm gonna let that get me. Oh, goodness. No, 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 no. Okay, I am hemorrhaging bombs at this point because I don't exactly know how I want to approach this. But I cannot lose a life. Okay, I lost a drone. We're going to have to get another one. Uh, does that... Now, this does not morph into a drone. It morphs into the missiles. And then... Oh no, please don't. Okay. I was afraid they were going to start the boss fight right there. It seemed like a good moment for it, but I forgot that these just go on literally for all of human history. They're the longest stages there have ever been. Drone. I lost a drone. I got a drone. Oh! Hi! Um, okay, we can shoot them. Good. <laughs> it's like my mortal enemy, the Seeker missile, has come. 
we actually didn't get blasted by secret missiles too hard in this campaign, which was really good. That's uh, fantastic. Really love to see it, you know? Do killing the secret missiles give points? That's how you farm it. Oh, that's brilliant. They, like, turn out to give a thousand points each. You just farm that boss fight forever. Okay, 200,000 more points. We're going to get a bonus life soon. I have seven lives. I have ten bombs. That makes me feel good about myself, at least. Eleven bombs. All right, we are a convenience store. We got the 7-Eleven build order. I think I'm just going to hit the bomb tread. Do we... Wait, do you get points for bombing people? Like... Does it give the same as normally shooting them down? I hope so, because I've been doing that to try to get extra kills. But I realize that I have not confirmed or denied whether that works. No. Okay, I need to not use bombs then. That's, uh, wasting points. I really don't like that. Once again, I'd like to say thank you to everybody for the super chats. I really appreciate it. It's uh, impossible to thank everyone individually, even though I would like to. Doing good. We're doing great. Okay, we're doing the gamer strat. Easy peasy. Why would you dodge? All right. I have dropped the second blueberry. This is, uh, this is terrible. Three more missions, guys. There are three more. <laughs> three. We're, we're on the road to Viridian City. Let's do this. We're making it work. So people are saying that I did get points when I bought. Uh, let's wait for a bunch of guys to be on the stage, and then I will drop a bomb, and we'll do some science together. Why not? We have to do something to pass the time for these final three levels. Before we can go back to StarCraft. So let's collect this. Please morph twice. So we gotta wait for a lot of guys to be on the field so we can know very definitively that it works. Unfortunately, I don't want to let a lot of guys be on the field because that means I'll probably die to something. Oh, my little snoop is so short that I didn't manage to grab that. Blast through here, blast through there. Who thought this was a good idea at Blizzard? I mean, I don't mind it, right? Like, I think the part that I mind about it is that it has an achievement, right? So if you want to be 100% Wings Liberty, then you have to do it. But if it didn't have an achievement, it would just be a cool little thing in the game. You know, like a lot of other games add their own little mini games too. And I think that's very healthy for designers to do. But yeah, when it call, when it requires an achievement, or you have to do it to get the achievement, that kind of sucks. Make it a feat of strength. Oh, did we lose a drone? Thank you. I will be very careful against these guys then. Not that the drone actually helps against this boss fight, because it just shoots randomly and does nothing of value. Uh, 
that lasts longer than I thought it did. Uh, feats of strength aren't achievements. Uh, feats of strength do not count towards other meta achievements or anything like that. They don't. You don't have to do them to get 100%, for example. Because some of them are actually just, like, unattainable after your first go. For example, one of the feats of strength is to 5-0 your placement matches. And whenever you do your placement matches after the first time, you only do one match. So you literally wouldn't be able to get it. And if you got stuck at, like, 99% of something because of that, people would be furious, right? So the feats of strength very specifically and intentionally. I'm going to hit the button. Yeah, our points went up. They definitely, we definitely got a burst of points right there. We also lost a drone. Okay. There's only this mission and one more left, I'm pretty sure. So we are truly in the final stretch. I just need to not die seven times. So we gotta get the drone over here. Gonna hit it. Be safe. When we have two drones, we can be a lot more risky because they absorb shots. Oh, does anyone know how long we've been in Lost Vikings? I know that I'm harping on this a lot, but like, I'll be honest. Ever since the beginning of All In, I've been really needing to drink some warm liquid, and I haven't managed to get away and do that. And I w in my head I was like, no, it's fine. Heart of the Swarm is the next break, that opening cinematic. It's a great cinematic, everyone will have a good time, I'll be able to go grab it, grab some water. No. We've been here for 633 years. I've been here for 7 hours and 20 minutes in this mission. Yeah, you're right. I don't think anyone actually said that in chat, but I like to believe they did. 34 minutes, okay, 10 more. So, I would like to say that uh, a couple of years ago, the real Rhyme, who is uh, one of my mods right here, he's also just a big StarCraft community member, he decided to be a champ and actually time the difference on this mission from going plasma missiles and the side missiles. So he played this twice back to back, up to 500,000 points, just to see which one is faster. And this was years ago, and I still remember, and I still honor the fact that he did that, because that is a sacrifice that no human should ever have to make. But he did it for us so that we know the plasma missiles are like five minutes faster than the other ones. Probably the dumbest choice he's ever made in his life. But yeah, can we, uh, thank you for the salutes. He deserves it. Absolute hero. I'm really scared of the Scourge. Whenever the Scourge get really close, I am afraid, and that is you know, the design of Scourge, so it makes sense. Whatever. 100,000 more. I'm, I'm, I'm in a flow. Like, I'm actually... I genuinely think, like, I'm playing amazingly. <laughs> not like this is the hardest game ever. But it's also not a free win. And I still have not died. <laughs> Can you actually beat this? No. You can get 500,000 points for the final achievement, and I don't think that it ever actually ends. It just keeps going forever. I don't know if it just starts looping things. It might. We don't need more bombs. We have 14 of them. The difficulty caps at 20 repeats? <laughs> Why do you even know that? <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, that's so funny. All 
Alright, let's see if we can kill before the headbutt. I don't think so. Oh? Oh, yeah, we did it. Beautiful. No headbuttsies. What an epic boss fight that was. <laughs> Using the same ability three times in a row. Real scale lost Vikings win. <laughs> oh my goodness. Please no. That is a hilarious idea. The Leviathan just comes in and it is the screen. You can't dodge. So I think that all we need to do is this level. I'm pretty sure that it is designed that you get 500,000 points by beating this mission. I think. I hope. Because we have to keep going. And we have to learn about the princess one more time. I mean, we've already rescued... Th this is the third princess, right? And there's three lost Vikings. There's Eric, Balog, and Olaf, right? So that is a very good princess to Viking ratio. And I think we should just leave it at that. It's only fair. This isn't one of those weird harem animes, so, like... It's just reasonable. Sorry if you like those. I shouldn't have called it weird. That's insensitive of me. Yeah, look at how fast we're racketing up points now. We've gotten, like... I guess we started it. I'm just on copium, man. I'm on so much copium right now. <laughs> but it's fine. We're good. These guys are going to give me, like, a million points apiece. Look at that. Six billion points right there. It was like 500. Why is the viewer count going up? Why are people watching this? All right. <laughs> Europeans, go to bed. It is very late for you. Why are you here? <laughs> I under... I was... Previously, I was like, oh, it's very nice that it's staying stagnant during all of this. But the fact that you guys are sitting here watching me play Lost Vikings and more people are tuning in is making me very upset. I'm the only one who doesn't want to be here, apparently. What is happening? <laughs> uh, that's so funny. Just no one has ever seen a completed Lost Viking run before. It's, we're going to get the Guinness Book of World Records. First person willing to subject themselves to this on stream. Easy peasy. I think you got to pay them like $10,000 to have a world record, though. I sure as heck don't have that to uh, blow on nothing. I really hope that I made at least one person question their life decision when I said that. And they're like, oh yeah, okay, I'm European, I'm gonna go bed. Oh, come on, it's late in Europe. It's very late. Okay, one BC down. Second BC is gonna go down in a moment. Or not. There we go. 35,000 more. You know, guys, this was so good. Do you think I should just restart and do it again? Actually, I'm having a great time. I, uh... All the other missions are, like, so stressful and stuff because there's so much to do and I have to, like, think and months of planning, but I can kind of just turn my brain off and go... Go Vike. Alright, I'll promise you this. If someone subscribes to the $1 million tier on the Giant Grant Games Patreon... I will end this stream by playing Lost Vikings again. There. 
How's that for incentive that anybody can meet? All it takes is one month of a million dollars. <laughs> oh, my drone! Oh, no. Let's do this. Um... I sure as heck don't have 500,000 points, and this is the final boss fight. <sighs> what a great sacrifice for Grant to make a million dollars. You're, you're exactly correct. I'm taking one for the team here. My friend, could you spawn some, like, raids or something? I'm glad that we've min maxed this boss fight to Oblivion. Oh, well, there goes all my drones. Well, there goes my first life. I'd never taken an actual hit until then. I'm just gonna bomb. Whoa, wait, that cuts through your invulnerability shield. Uh, okay. I still have six lives, it's fine. <laughs> it's just, this is not the time that I wanted to be finding out about new mechanics in the game. Uh, this is where Terratron was made. I mean, it was a joke. It was uh, originally a April Fool's joke when StarCraft was coming out and then they added it here because they had made the model. So we have to start this again. We have to start it, we have to get uh, like a couple kills and then we're done. It's fine. Look, we're almost there. <laughs> Just hold the button down. Yeah, so for anyone who is skeptical about the spam or spamming space compared to holding it, this is the fire speed when you hold space down, and this is the fire speed when you're spamming space bar. It's like completely different. Your damage is effectively doubled, and all it takes is pressing the same button 15,000 times in a 45 minute span. So, you know, a new keyboard every time. Got it. Let's get out of here, Scoob. Part of the swarm, let's go. Who wants to go watch a Heart of the Swarm cinematic? Okay, uh... First, we have to check to make sure that it says 100% Wings of Liberty. Please, 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 please! 100%! Oh! <laughs> F5 is my button, and it's also to go to that menu. Alright, we did our first split of the day. 7.30.59. New campaign. Brutal. I'm gonna go AFK for three minutes. You guys are gonna, gonna watch one of the best cutscenes in Blizzard history, and I will see you in a second. <laughs>